What number? It's gonna be number one o. Oh okay, so eight. it's a little down the pipeline. Yeah. yeah. How's my hair? It's fine. It's good. It's good. What about me? By Tulane University. It's uh, pretty pretty awesome conditions so far as far as temperature goes, and it's uh, going to be some great racing here on Lake Pont on Lake Ponchard Train. Hi everybody, my name is Brooks Clark. Alongside me is Gloria Kelbacute, and we're going to be here with you for the next two days, bringing you all this hot, scintillating team racing action that's taking place just on the water here behind us. Gloria, you've been here for a couple days longer than I have. What, do, what have we been seeing so far here on the water? Yep, absolutely. So listen, it's really hot. It's very humid. Everybody's got to stay hydrated, right? So we've been seeing some pretty light air conditions, some chop. Today we're pretty lucky. We've got some flat, flat uh, water out there. So, you know, it's all about the boat handling right now. And so we're just trying to stay warm or stay cold rather, right? And uh, stay hydrated. And it's a matter of staying out of the heat when you're not on the water. Exactly, beating the heat. There's a m big mental edge as well as the actual things that occur out there on the race course. Let's take a look at the standings though to get a feel for where we're at here in the event. If you're not familiar with the format, we're gonna we're gonna have the, the 16 top teams in the country that have qualified to make it here. It's a massive round robin of the 16 teams. And then from there, it's gonna break down to a top eight. And then from there, a final four. And that will decide who will host the hoist the Walter C. Wood Trophy at the end of the day. Looking at it right now, Roger Williams is currently leading the pack at undefeated 9-0, and but Stanford, Yale, and Georgetown nipping at their heels, all with the loss of peace. And then looking down the line farther, you got Harvard, Boston College, Navy, and Dartmouth. And you'll see on your screen right here that red line. That's our that's the cut line. The top eight teams are the ones that will advance the gold round robin. So Tulane and Penn knocking at the door. So we've got some pretty exciting races coming up. We've got some of our leaders. We've got race 108, Roger Williams versus Georgetown. So stay tuned because we've got some really good races coming up. And hopefully the, the breeze sticks around with us. Yesterday we saw that they had an onshore postponement due to the wind, wind dying. And so, you know, we can just hope that it sticks around for today and that we can get the races going. Yeah, it, it seems to be that early mornings and the uh, later in the afternoons when the breeze really starts to cooperate. And as the sun's coming out, when we first got to the when we first got to the venue this morning, it was a little more overcast and uh, somehow more humid. Don't know how that worked out, but it was and it is right now. It felt like and uh, breeze is, is starting to lighten up a little bit. The race committee has been shifting the race course throughout the afternoon or excuse me the morning here as we're just past the noon hour, um, approaching into the afternoon. Yeah, I've got to say that the PRO and the race committee has been doing a great job getting these races going. This is no easy task, especially with the wind that's been shifting and, you know, it's constantly up and down. So they've been doing a good job cranking out the races with the conditions that they've got. So, yeah, looking, so trying to see what we got going on on the race course right now. It looks like, it looks like we have Harvard and Yale uh, coming upwind right now. I think they are around Mark 4 headed up to the finish line. Harvard in red boats, one, two, three, Yale in the black boats, 10, 11, 12. 
Yale certainly one of the uh, the favorites, I would say, Gloria, coming into this event. They were kind of running, kind of ran the table for a little bit this season. Yeah, absolutely. They got they got first. Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I mean, if you look at their women's team alone, um, for team race, the first ever women's collegiate team race national championship, they took the win. They didn't even have to sail that last race. They had already locked in the win there. So, you know, they've got a very strong team, and we see for the, you know. They've they've been doing great in fleet racing, team racing, and so on, and they're still defending the. They've they've got to defend the championship they got in 2019. You know, there's a little bit of space in between there with COVID. They weren't able to sail, so as as, as were a lot of schools. So they're they're back and they're ready for more. Yeah, the Yale Yale Bulldogs certainly been running the table the last decade or so, winning the team racing national championship between every year from 2013 to 2016, and then again in 2019. And as you just said, they weren't out. They were unable to sail the last two years due to the pandemic but uh looking at their season results they you know they won the graham hall a huge team racing event at navy the freeze the marciando and they um excuse me they got second at the marciando and they won the nisa qualifier which some may maintain is one of the one of the hardest regattas in the country when it's not the national championship based off of the teams uh, participating in that yeah absolutely so they they're they're going in strong and so they've still got some time to make up and uh, today, so you know, let's keep these races going and see how they do. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, you. You're touching on this earlier, Gloria. Like the mental edge. Obviously, team racing in itself is its own challenging game. And um, I don't know. You, <laughs> you, you, you're a more recent college sailor than I was. What, what's the mentality? Like, what, what are the, what are your pit crews doing? Your, your heavier crews that might not see too much action this week, at, at least today, with, if, with the current forecast. What's how, how do you stay focused in this heat? How do you beat the heat? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it's all about being a good teammate on shore, right? Whether you're an alternate or a heavy or so on, it's it's all about making sure, especially in this heat, making sure that they're staying hydrated, right? Making sure that you're having food accessible for your teammates and pumping them up and everything, right? Give them a rag to wipe the sweat off with for Pete's sake, you know? Like anything that you can do, you want to do that as an onshore teammate, right? And you want to be ready to hop in at any point in time, right? So it's like with the heat, I mean, this is going to be 11 days worth of sailing in this huge humidity and heat. You know, we're very lucky we haven't seen anybody with any heat exhaustion yet, but, you know, that could be a very real factor here. So, you know, making sure that you're wearing sunscreen because the UV here is about an 11 s on some days, Jeez. if not higher. So, you know, that's going to be brutal. It's so we've got we're there's I'm sure that there's teams with crews that are going to be sailing all 11 days possibly even skippers so you know it's all about beating that heat making sure you're reapplying sunscreen staying hydrated staying well rested when 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 you're off the water and so on so it's all about being a good supportive teammate on shore and I think those are the teams that are going to be succeeding the best definitely that's that's great insight yeah. thank you for sharing that uh so if we can't take a look over at the leeward mark we got a pretty interesting one between dartmouth and the u.s naval academy dartmouth in the orange boats four five six u.s navy in 13 14 15 navy the defending champions as they won last year uh the nationals at navy at home uh, currently sitting at five and four in seventh place dartmouth the reason i want to focus on this one it's great then dartmouth is four and four just inside that cut line this is getting in the point of the round robin where every single race well every single race always matters but yeah you know you start to feel the pressure as you as you wind down and and you your margin of qualifying and the ability to break into that top eight actually um actually you know <laughs> becomes real or, or or you have to read the writing on the wall yeah absolutely so taking a look at this race right now you can see that six is playing back hard on 14 here but it looks like there's two mi teammates right next to one another getting pinned here. 13's tacking out. Six is going with them, hopefully. And there they go. So. Yeah, it looks like Dartmouth is in a 1-5-6 at the moment. Yep. As they're just starting to sail off our screen there. Bears be a boat number six. Yep. Kind of an interesting position. Uh, Gloria, what's like the 1-5-6? That's a losing combination. Yep. And and when you're in the one there with you got, what, maybe 200 yards to the finish line, How do, what, what do you – you're panicking, you're reacting. What's your play? Who do you hit to try to get your try to get your homies out of the 5-6? Honestly, I go for the closest boat to me, right? I mean, what what can you do then? It's like a, a Hail Mary there, right? You just do which, whatever you can when you're in the in the one and you've got your teammates in the 5-6. You you know, I, I've done some umpiring at NISA this this past spring, uh, quite a bit of it, and you know, at 
that's kind of when the most action happens, quite mm-hmm. honestly. It's right there by the finish. We've got people raising their hands, hailing for umpires left and right, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, right? definitely a little last-ditch effort you'll see sometimes, but it looks like uh, right now Navy's doing a very good job in the 2-3-4. Yep. It's a very disciplined, uh, stable combination. It looks like they're doing an okay job keeping it through as we get boat 15, lead, uh, getting a just across boat number 4. Oof. That's a big cross there. If boat 4 had gotten a piece of 15, that might have flip this race upside down but oh yeah and you can see that i mean even looking at the footage it looks just slightly choppier out there so it's all about maintaining that speed in the light air and in the chop right mm-hmm. which is no easy task mm-hmm. so boat handling is going to be a big one out here for sure but you just mentioned that looks like boat number four might be creeping back up on boat 15 and getting a pin there so all Absolutely. of a sudden dartmouth hard to quite tell from this depth perception but i think boat number four might have a pin on boat number 15 now Luckily, 14 just got across here, so hopefully they can actually make a play here. But it's tough. I mean, it's tough with these lanes. Looks like 13 might be losing their lane on five here. Yeah, and it looks like these are the uh, these are the Z420s, so they don't. I feel like the FJs are a little more conducive to this uh, to this breeze. But coming into the finish line right here, it looks like a. Is that a one-two for that Dartmouth? That might oh, be hold a one-two here. Boat number four. I thought they were on the inside of the finish boat, but they're not. So yep. it's a one for Dartmouth. We've got a two for Navy here. And it looks three like three for Navy. 13 might have just snuck through to get boat number five there. So it might be a one for five uh, it looks like for a one Dartmouth. Wow, huge yep. win there late, but we're seeing some wow. umpire flags thrown maybe. But can't quite make it out. I don't think anyone's spinning yet. But wow, like you were saying, <laughs> just right there at the end, the last finish line, those last 200 yards can really uh, become a do or die moment. Yeah, you'd see how you'd be surprised how much action happens right there and then. That's definitely a tough one for the umpires as well. It's you got to make sure that you're placing yourself in the right spot. That way you you can see it, see all the action happening, right? There's, I feel like oftentimes there will be quite a few calls right there at the finish. So you just got to stay on your toes. And the umpires are doing great. You know they've been out there all day long. You know they don't get to come to shore very much for some rotation. Mm-hmm. So you know big big ups to the umpires out there. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. We are uh, refreshing tech scores to confirm what our eyeballs may have just seen. Oh but yeah. Just to make sure that we're not we're not giving you bad information, but that would just uh, that was a huge win there for the Big Green, uh, getting over the Naval Academy. So now, as Big it seems, yeah, confirming Dartmouth did indeed get a one four five that race, coming back late over Navy, and uh, all of a sudden Navy is just staring on the on that chop line. They got their in district rivals Penn right below them, right, sitting at four and six. So you start to see a little bit more of a margin, I think as the regatta goes on but those seven through ten positions can can get pretty can get pretty tight yeah absolutely i mean so and even yesterday you know it, the the leaders were quite tight they still are but you know as the day goes on we're starting to see leaders emerge more and more so well it'll be interesting to see who's able to battle their way up to the top eight without mm-hmm. a doubt i mean just off off of those teams right here upwind we have tufts university the jumbos in the I guess you call it gray boats, six, seven, eight, excuse me, seven, eight, nine, and um, the, oh, the, the Badgers. Wisconsin Badgers in the blue boat, 16, 17, 18. Badgers, Ofer on the event so far. So always, always though, very sneaky, the Badgers. You know, yep. you never want to, you can't count out any team, especially here at the, uh, at the College Sailing National Championship. But uh, Tufts right now sitting at two and seven on their record in 11th place. They have a bit of a, they have a bit of a climb ahead of them, and a win here against the Badgers would definitely – you know, help help try to get some momentum going because, yeah. in my experience, Gloria, it, team racing is so momentum heavy. Oh, one hundred percent. You need to. It's all about getting hot at the right time. You know, they had sailed forty-seven races yesterday. Definitely fewer than the PRO intended, but they did the best navigating the tough conditions that they had. And only through through only forty-seven races, and you got one hundred twenty in the round. That's what what's we were talking. <laughs> Not, neither of us seem to be very good at math, but nope. that seems to be about <laughs> a third of the event. So entering today, they had a whole. Two more thirds of two thirds of the round robin to complete. So yeah, yeah. Y- you know, teams that were on the outside looking in going into today, teams that were on the inside looking out. Like you, you can't you can't take any race off and just you know if you didn't if yesterday didn't go the way you were hoping it would, you just got to shake it off and uh, get get back to it. Without a doubt, like like we were talking about the mental aspect of all this, right? Every single race in team racing matters, right? Mm-hmm. And it's all about the reset in between the races. Mm-hmm. So you got to keep your head in the game. If you have a bad one, a tough loss, it's all about shaking it off and moving on to the next one. Because mm-hmm. it doesn't matter if you're going against the, you know, the leaders in the regatta or you know the 
whoever else it is on the on on the scoreboard. You just have to reset in between all those races. Yeah, it, that's a huge part. And the same thing, it's it's a team effort, mm -hmm. right? So if your teammate isn't in the right headspace, right, you got to get them to shake it off too, right? Because it's it's a team effort to win these races. Absolutely. Absolutely, it's a full team effort. That, that's why they call it team racing. Yeah, I guess why they so. Call right? Team racing, maybe. <laughs> There's no I and team. <laughs> yes, coming up right now on our screens, we have uh, race 79, the St. Mary Seahawks versus mm -hmm. the home team, uh, the Tulane Green Wave Seahawks and boats one, two, three, Tulane and 10, 11, 12. Again, two teams that uh, it's certainly farther down the score sheet than they'd like to be. St. Mary's sitting at two and seven, tied for 13th. Excuse me, sitting in 13th place, 13th place right now. Tulane at three and six. Tulane a little bit closer to that to making that goal than I think the home team would certainly appreciate that St. Mary's a perennial power certainly a little lower than they would hope to be on the, on the score sheet yeah that's for sure that's my alma mater right there you know so it's uh, St. Mary's is having a little bit of a rough go at it right now uh, you know it's a very new team this is definitely a big rebuilding year without a doubt and you know uh, I'm they're they're struggling a little bit at this event. They're missing their top Seahawk right now, Leo Boucher. So you know it's tough that he's not going to be here, and uh, so they're str they're struggling a little bit. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. But but no doubt every race is a win. So you know we're hoping for the best. It's like I said, it's a young team. We've got two freshman skippers there. So yeah, looking at the RP form and the uh, on on tech score, two of your starters, two St. Mary's starters are freshmen, and you have Catherine Bennett, the senior. Um, yeah. Where, where's you mentioned that they were down their top player? Where's he? Yes, yeah, so you know he's he's back home. He's getting ready for an international regatta. So, you know it's it's unfortunate they're 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 most likely going to be missing him for uh, both co that they are missing him for team race here, and they're going to probably miss him for COVID fleet race. So, wow. you know that's that's a big upset for the team. You know, and he's he's had a very strong season. He's got his third, I believe. Uh, um, single-handed national title under the, under his belt now. So, but the good news about that is that he's got one more year. So, it's 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 not over for the St. Mary's Seahawks. So, you know, and uh, yeah. So, we're, we'll see how they finish out the day without a doubt. Yeah, checking back in on the actual race itself. It looks like we got a two-lane boat. Boat number ten spinning. Did not see if it was an umpire flag or if it was a self-initiated one penalty. If you're not up to up to speed on the rules, if you if you foul or if an opponent feels you violated the rules, uh, you may either institute, you can just say, you know, hand up, my bad, I fouled, and just whip off a 360 penalty turn. However, if you say, no, I did not foul, um, and the umpires get involved, if they red flag you, they can make you do a 720 or more or more penalty turn as we're looking to see boat 10 absolutely brutal. You do not want to be parked doing a 720, particularly in these light conditions. It's just not good right now. It's Tulane. His teammates were in a good position in this race, but all of a sudden it's a three-on-two team race now when, you know, your your one your one yep. boat is, I believe, I uh, heard BC coach Greg Wilkinson saying, we got a one-two, we got a one-two-nine right now. That's how deep, that's how deep their third boat is and just makes it a little bit more uh, tough to get back in, but trying to see who is out in front that is indeed a two lane boats in the two three and one seahawk in boat number 12 they seem to be out in front in the one yep excuse me i had those numbers backwards i might uh seahawks are one two three boats two lane are 10 11 12 so two lane that boat that we saw spinning they're just deep right now they're parked inching towards mark two trying to get back in the fight but in these light conditions that's going to be very very difficult yeah 100 percent. yeah like like you were saying the doing the 360 doing the 720 that is a big no for today you know especially in this lighter stuff that's that is just a brutal way mm -hmm. to lose that race oftentimes you hear you'll hear teams or competitors say hey leave the coaches leave the umpires out of it let's just just you know don't let's not risk it 100 percent. because it's like you know sure you're right and then you hope you know you don't know what the umpire saw you don't know their angle you don't know yeah. how they saw a situation so yep. if there's any oftentimes if you're like 51 for even like 49 percent sure you were you are in the right it's like i'm just gonna spin anyway just to particularly if your team is in a situation where you think that um a 720 would absolutely just kill you 100 percent. yeah no you can't take any kind of gambles here you just gotta do it so sp especially in this light air stuff i mean when I was out there on on the photo boat earlier, uh, you know, 
I, I watched it happen right there, and mm. then your boat comes to a complete stop. Right, and as we're seeing now around Mark 3, there is indeed two two-lane boats in the 1-2, but uh, three St. Mary's boats coming in hot behind them, and that fourth or third, uh, the third two-lane boat is just maybe about a halfway down the down the run right now. So yeah. curious to see how the two two-lane boats that do have an okay gap, but they have to cover three boats, and that's right. you know it's two on three at that point. Right, it's all about the balance there. So you see, look at that boat two bailing hard, right? So with these roll tacks, it's you got to make sure you've got a dry boat, especially in the in the lighter stuff. So. We'll be seeing a lot of crews out there tra probably bailing on the at any chance that they have. Yeah. Just keep that boat dry. We're seeing 11 and 12 split. Uh, those are the boats of the striped 11 and 12 that are on the farther away from us. We're seeing 12 tack right as two boat boat number two rounds the mark and they do. And uh, as of right now, Tulane, I think despite their teammate being so far back, I think they do have enough of a of a cushion right now to Absolutely. to uh, you know hang on here. Right. We'll see if we get any big shifts that might change the game. But if they do a good job balancing here and uh, keeping everybody in their coverage zone, they should be all set for the 1-2 here. Yeah, Tulane have some big races coming up. Again, they're on the outside looking in at the moment, sitting at 3-6. and six, But a win here would get them to 4-6. and six, And just one win back of making that gold round, looking down there uh, who they have left on their uh, for the rest of the round. Tulane's got Hobart. Uh, they have UCSB. The Gauchos, um, Dartmouth. So there's there's gonna be some great racing here. I mean, yeah. every, I, it sounds a little redundant and cheesy and cliche. There's gonna be some great racing here, Gloria. But yeah, yeah there, there there really is. There's truly not an easy out. There's no easy race at this event. One hundred percent. And you know, I I've got to say one of my favorite parts is watching these people roll tack their boats. I mean, you can see how if you get a good roll tack out here, you've got that flying momentum that just puts you forward. And that's going to be key. I mean, I, I think you can't afford to have a bad tack out here, you know, a bad roll tack. And I think that 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 could be the difference between being ahead of your opponent. Totally. Let's see if we can't take a look around uh, the weather marks right now. Uh, boats 4, 5, and 6, UCSB versus the Regatta leaders, Roger Williams in the green, 13, 14, 15. We do have one UCSB boat kind of spinning deep there in the five in uh, boat number five looks like two lane secured that one two yeah. here against the Seahawks yeah a little sigh of relief there from uh, Charles Higgins looking down the dock I can see him uh, gets the win maybe not the cleanest win but a win is a win at this point yeah roll wave am I right <laughs> Is that what they say, roll wave? Roll wave, yeah. yeah. That sounds a little <laughs> sounds a little close to a certain other school down here in the yeah, south. Roll yeah. tide. Oh yeah. There's a pattern there, that's for sure. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's take a look. What's this next race we're looking for? So we got another here we go. We got Santa Barbara boat number four. And it was <laughs> it's just painful watching this. Look at this, look at this 720. Could be a 360. Don't even know. But That's all of a sudden, tough. Santa Barbara mixing it up at Mark One, getting spicy around Mark Two. But a umpire flag or a just self-initiated. Uh, I'm gonna spin on this one. All of a sudden, Roger Williams looks very comfortable right now with a very stable uh, one, three, four. It seems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll make all the difference right there. Yeah, you hate to start throwing around the word elimination yeah. or, you know, cl uh, clinching. I mean, clinching is always the more positive word. Elimination is is not. But this is this might be one of those must-win races for UCSB. Right. Uh, sitting at 2-7 and seven right now. If they fall to 2-8, and eight, that might make it a little bit hard just looking who and where that cut line is going to be. I, I'd say the eighth team is probably going to finish around with nine or eight wins. Yep. But, uh yeah, and you, I mean, looking at this downwind boats four and five. I mean, you can you can tell how light it is out there. These are these are not easy conditions to be sailing in, right? So it's a matter of keeping those sails filled, keeping the momentum going, and at the end of the day, the the teams that are going to be the fastest with the best boat handling that's gonna that's gonna make all the difference today. Yeah, UCSB, you know, not not one of the more historically strong programs that you see at the team race nationals but they clearly did enough this season in the eyes of the committee to to earn the berth here and and, and if you're kind of checking back in in college sailing as you may have tuned out the last couple of years um they have fully revamped the qualification system how it used to be back in back in my day i'm gonna say that a couple <laughs> times this weekend so not to sound super old but uh it used to be you know it was all automatic qualifying 
a certain num number of teams in their respective districts. Like if you win, if you win the Southeast District, you're in. If you win Sesa, the top two in Sesa, you're in. Top what maybe five or something in Nisa were in, yep. and that was it. And you'd see over the course of historically, you'd see teams that just have one bad event or their top player is just unavailable or he is they have finals or something like that. You never know what could arise or an injury. Right. So in order to I guess try to remedy that they, they overhauled the whole qualification system and right. now um, it's mostly based off of so it's it's based off of a, a resume based yep. uh, selection criteria so yep. that's why you see a couple more teams you know from NISA I think there's seven six or seven teams from NISA in this field of 16 and NISA is you know known as historically as probably the stronger team race district of of, of all of them nationally and uh, that just things like that make this event hard but Back to the whole tying this back into UCSB, you know, they, they, they did make a couple trips out to the East Coast, which yep. is where most of the team racing occurs. And, uh, you know, it's just nice to see them. I, I, I'm, I'm from Southern California, so I'm always partial to, to a school like that making its way through here and uh, getting to the big dance. But yep. I think, um, you know, there, there's certainly talented Southern California sailors that are actually probably pretty used to this light stuff, particularly in FJs. So yeah. don't be surprised if, you know, they, they, they might rip off one or two more here towards the end of the event. Just they can they can kind of play spoiler at that point. Absolutely. And I if you look back at last year's nationals, they had a pretty good showing. So, you know, and, and they're, they're definitely making that extra effort to prove themselves. So, you know, it seems that the West Coast sometimes is so disconnected from the East Coast college sailing. But, you know, They've definitely been making that extra, extra effort to be shown and, you know, establish themselves without a doubt. And I think that they've been doing a brilliant job at it without a doubt. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, we're seeing Roger Williams here in a very, very comfortable 2-3-4 around mark four, making their way up to the finish line. Yep. And I think they're doing a great job of balancing here. You've been, uh, we were talking earlier, Gloria, just some races we definitely want to have our, have our eyes on. And I think the biggest one, obviously, that's yet to happen is between Yale and Roger Williams. 100%. And that was race number – I can't find it right here in front of me. I'm just frantically scrolling. Yeah, I believe they I believe they sailed yesterday. They, oh, uh, they did sail yesterday. Yeah, so they sailed yesterday. Oh, that oh, was wow. actually – that was uh, an upset for Yale. I believe that might be the one race that they have lost thus oh, wow. far. So that was a, a little bit of an upset for them. Okay. You know, I think – let's go ahead and take a look at how they finished for it. But um, it was definitely a very close race. It was a close one. Uh, I think what ended up happening was Yale might have been one five six. Mm -hmm. It was just the uh, last. It was the downwind was pretty steamy, you know. So there was a lot of action on mm -hmm. that downwind, and unfortunately, I think the Raj team just got sent away around marks three and four. So, you know, it's uh, that that's what it is in the end is just. Whichever team is able to get around, you know, and keep the speed going and so on. I'm not sure if there are flags thrown or not. I can't recall, but it was definitely a tight one. Yeah, we got some uh, race 94. We are just finishing up the Santa Barbara Roger Williams race with race number 80. Race number 94 is going to be Yale versus Stanford, both of them sitting at nine. Both of them sitting with one loss at the moment, and I think that could be a race that could help uh, shape out the top of the leaderboard. Absolutely. And then uh, we, who else we have that have yet to race? We have Stanford and Raj. That's two back-to-back -back tough races for the Stanford Cardinal in back-to-back uh, -back flights. So I think we, they might get a late day, late yep. round test for sure. To we can test the metal, see what the metal is of the card. One hundred percent. So looking at uh, Roger Williams, they've got a pretty young sailor on their team right now. They've got two seniors, Spencer Cartwright and Cameron Wood, and and then uh, a sophomore, I believe, uh, Aiden Hoogland. So, you know, they, they have been notoriously quite good at team racing, you know. So they usually have a very strong presence for team racing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, in the fleet racing, they're, they're up there as well. And so it's, it's one of those teams, you know, they're based in Bristol, Rhode Island, and they've got great water to practice on and so on. And, you know, they're, they're team racing. They're, they're always up there. I would say they're usually on the podium. Yeah, definitely. And then look, just looking at their, like, season resume, I was trying to compile and do some – know deep real analytical stuff going into this into this weekend uh i think uh, it, it looked as though they sailed the most team racing events this season as far as top to bottom you know you, the, the deeper teams on on weekends when there's multiple events they can send maybe their b team out to another more local event but i, I think that only only obviously benefits 
the team because that strengthens your B team and your B team spars against your A team. Right. That just makes everyone that much better. 100%. I think having a, you know, a deep team always helps, you know. It's tough for those teams that, you know, only have like a strong A team mm -hmm. and so on and, you know, it's th then you're counting on alumni and other people and coaches to hop in and give them a good fight at practices. Yeah, when when, uh, when Charleston, back when I was there in 2012 and we won the school's uh, first team race championship, our B team was, I think we could have put them up against any of the best teams and I think they would have been. I think at that same nationals, our B team would have finished top top half. And, th and that makes all the difference, without a doubt, without a doubt. So coming upwind right now in race number 81, we have Georgetown and UPenn, the Quakers. Georgetown in the blue boats, 16, 17, 18. Penn in the, I think we should call that, should we call that silver or yellow? Let's go with silver. In the silver boats, seven, eight, nine, just off the starting line, about halfway up to the weather mark at the moment. And uh, Georgetown looking okay. They look actually might be chasing at the moment with boats 12 and 13. Can't quite see. Why don't we? I'm seeing a, there we go. Big duck there from boat number nine. Oh yeah. I'm seeing a two, three, five possibly here. Alrighty, so getting back on it, it looks like that's UPenn got a two three. They might have a two three four here. Th they might have a strong play too, if so long as that their further boat nine can keep ahead of eighteen. If not, seven and eight is going to have to play back hard here on eighteen and yeah, get their teammate ahead. Boat number seventeen, almost maybe two punched, I would say at the moment. Oh yeah, a little too far ahead. They need to get themselves back in the fight. Absolutely, uh, this would be a massive win for Penn again. One of those teams currently sitting at four and six on the outside looking in, but a win here against the Hoyas, who are currently in fourth, sitting at nine and one with a tremendous record themselves. Um, this would be a massive win. You know, Mesa rivalries. I, th I think you reach the point where these teams become so familiar with each other over the course of the year. They're racing against each other, even in, in smaller in district stuff. Some teams, you know, spar together during spring breaks. And uh, Georgetown and Penn over the course of the season, they definitely did not uh, shy away from each other. Yeah, absolutely. There's no doubt about that. The, and the Mesa district, you know, it's, it seems a little bit smaller than Mesa and so on. And so you definitely get familiar with one another. There is no doubt about that. So I'm curious to see which Mesa team is going to come to the top here. So we're seeing a slight tacking battle here between 17 and 7. 7 tacked off. It's going to be hard for 17 to match that one. But looking even at the roll tax, you can tell it's, it's brutally light out there. I mean, skippers have to dive back in immediately. You don't want some of that windward heel. So, Yeah, boat handling is, is definitely a premium on a day like today as we see boats 7, 8, and 9 just trying to keep that play 2 together if they are still indeed 2, 3, 4. They're so f uh, there's one <laughs> there is one Georgetown boat that's so far left. They're out of our camera frame. At oh. the moment, but uh, just ooh, come sloppy tacking up wind right now from the Hoyas, and all of a sudden, Penn might be looking a little bit prettier than they did around the lured mark. Yeah, one hundred percent. Boat seventeen gonna have to start doing some uh, do some hero mode. Here and he comes. He's coming see, down. Yeah, cracking down. Might be a little bit too late though. Here it's we're we're looking rapidly closer to the finish here. So you know. It's all about who can make that play qu sooner than the other team, and right? And I feel like it's so light that like a pass back might even like not do anything. Yeah. It looks like 8 might even have a cross yeah, here on 17 now. See how now. boat 8 does here. I think they're going to tack right back. Oh, big duck Oof. here from boat, you know. I guess that's the safe play. Yeah, yeah. Just to avoid any sort of potential, you But know, even a duck like that, I mean, that's that can be yeah, brutal. Yeah, that's big and that's we're seeing boat 17 tacking to get through the finish line. And he's trying to do everything that they can. We're seeing an umpire throw a, pl uh, a protest, I guess, from boat 17, or he was hailing for room to tack, possibly. But it looks like UPenn getting a 2-3-4 across the finish line. So a huge win for the Quakers. Absolutely. You know, when I was a kid, I used to, I used to see the word Quakers for UPenn as, as mascots because that's what I 
That's how I had fun as a kid. I just liked college football and like their mascots and everything. You think they were the Quackers? <laughs> so like Quackers. some sort of duck affiliation, but uh, <laughs> they are indeed the Quakers. Oh, that'll do it. That'll do it. All righty. So, so that's the end of that race. Yeah, massive win for U Penn. Let's go ahead and see how that changes the standings. I think we can uh, queue it up and take one more look at the finish here. We're going to see boat number 17 for Georgetown kind of just shooting the line, seeing what they can do. Boat number 9 tacking behind them. And you'll see a hand throw from boat 17. I think that's a, a hail for room to tack, which, uh, you know, procedurally, yep. I, <laughs> I guess depending on what was said out there, there's the you tack or uh, room to tack or right. they just tack away. Right. But uh, you know that's uh, that's a great shot right there from our camera guys as we as we get through to watch the finish. That was that was close and that yeah. was close for sure. Absolutely. All right. Let's take a look at this next race. Let's see who we've got up. See, 13, 14, 15. Let's go ahead and take a look at what team this is. This looks like it's uh, BC Hobart. Oh yeah. I believe. Actually, looks like this might be Dartmouth versus Charleston. Ooh. All righty. So we see that five has a good pin here on 15. Now keep in mind, as this windward boat, it's going to be a lot harder to hold your lane. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of, and they're tacking out. See, it's it's very hard to manage that lane there, but 15 went right with them. Yeah, we were uh, talking momentum earlier. Dartmouth, we just saw right when we, pretty much right when we hopped on one of our first races was a Dartmouth Navy race. Dartmouth uh, got the win late over U.S. Naval Academy. And right now the Cougars sitting at two and eight, a little farther down the score sheet, sitting in 12th overall. Uh, this is this is a uh, this is a big race for the Cougars, my alma mater, to see if they can uh, stay alive, to see if they can try to make a shot at that top eight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the Cougars are definitely having a they're they're having a big rebuild year. You know, they lost some big players last year, like Paris Henkin. So, you know, and um, you're looking at the roster for their team, and they're all relatively young. We've got two skippers from class of 24. One one senior Pierce Ornstein, Ornstein <laughs> and then we've got a, a junior Brandon Geller. Um, so you know it's it's, but they have some very strong crews, and I'm seeing that they still have some crews from from last year on their roster. So Lucy Klempen and uh, Noel Owen still from last year. So you know it, we'll see. I mean, having a good crew for team racing makes all the difference, yes. without a doubt. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we have like the Cougars, like we we're saying, like they finished third last year, 13 and six record. And, and it's just, you know, it, uh, like you said, sometimes programs, they rebuild. They have to drop down. And, I mean, s selfishly, as a Cougar alum, there's only been three schools since 2011. Sorry, 2012, there's only been three schools that have actually won the Team Racing National Championship. Charleston, we won it in 2012. Yale went on their hot streak. Charleston won it back-to-back -back again. And mm -hmm. then Navy won last year. Yep. So those are the three schools that have won the Team Race National Championship in this last decade. And, you know, there's always something good cooking down there in Chucktown. Yeah, well, the, the Nads uh, helped lose the streak for Charleston and uh, Yale. So, all right. Parity, I think, is the word you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at this race. See, they're going around the marks. I see that the uh, the Cougars have a 5-6 possible, or actually, that's rather perhaps a 2-3. Let me just get a better shot here. Looks like Dartmouth actually has a 1-2 here. Yeah, that just looks painfully wide out there. Yeah. It's definitely, it's, I'm, o I'm not seeing many wing on wings. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing a lot of reaching here, and that's all you can do to keep that speed up. So I, lo I love talking about the female skippers that we've got out here at the Team Race Nationals, you know, so... Obviously, we had our Women's Team Race National Championship for the first time in, uh, right. in college sailing history this year. But, you know, it's, it's great seeing that some of those females from that national championship have carried on over here to the Open Team Race National Championship. You yeah, know? As, as far as women's team racing specifically went, you know, I think there was just one, maybe two events. Uh, the Duplin Women's Team Race, that was the up there at Tufts, I believe. And right. that was pretty much the only event. But then as it went on, you know, you started seeing more female skippers chipping into that top three rotation because they were just wicked fast and great team racers. You know, the Erica Ryan Keys, the Mary Halls, yep. looking down the, the list of the who's who's of women sailors of recent memory and uh, yep. certainly phenomenal team racers in their own right. And it, it's great having its own, women's having its own team racing event now. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and we're seeing here on the, on the, on the uh, Dartmouth team, we've got uh, Maddie Hawkins. So and she's young. 
Let's talk about that. She's class of 24, and she's been making her big college debut. So without a doubt, you know, and she had a pretty good, a strong women's team race national championship. And I believe that the NISA qualifiers or the NISA championship most recently in actually fleet racing, she was she was up there in A division. So, you know, she's she's been kicking some butt. And, you know, she's the, the Dartmouth team looks like they've got a pretty strong pretty young team as well so it doesn't look like any of these people are going to be leaving next year so we'll see how they do for next year and how they finish up this year but you know they're young it's it's great seeing these strong young teams and you know I'm sure the coaches are happy that you know they get to keep them around for a little bit longer and, and we were talking earlier about how they how they revamped the format you know now it's more resume based or I guess entirely resume based and how, how you go about sailing your season I think that will only benefit teams like Dartmouth that are younger yep. you know I don't think how they finish at the NISA qualifiers this year Dartmouth finished they finished third at the NISA qualifiers so that wouldn't have applied this year but the point I was trying to come back to make was that you know a team a younger team that might not have qualified through their district normally through that format like oh maybe they got fifth instead of top four or something like that right this allows this team to get that experience and all of a sudden you know coming in next year this team that has two two sophomore skippers starting for them is uh all of a sudden going to be you know certainly one of the teams that are competing right now for the national championship is they're seemingly pretty comfortable ahead of the Cougars right now, and that's going to put a win for here, would put them to 6-4, and four, and uh, this right back in the mix. Two big wins potentially back-to-back -back for, for Dartmouth. Yeah, absolutely. So let's take a look at this race. Looks like this is the finish line here, is it not? No, no, they're rounding Mark IV. That's Mark IV, yeah. There we go. So it looks like Dartmouth has one a strong lead, 1-2 here. That is a big gap from what I can see from even on shore here. Trying to find that third, that third boat. Yeah, but I, I think as we saw a little bit ago, you know, I think it was that two-lane race. They were 1-2, and their six was so deep. If, if you have a sizable lead... It, it's never safe when it's this light out right. at all, but I, I'm I'm thinking right now Dartmouth is is feeling a little more comfortable. They got about a hundred yards or so to get to the finish line, and and I just don't know if any of these Cougar boats have the uh, have the wherewithal or <laughs> or boat speed to to pass them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all all you can uh, hope for at that point in time, if you're if you're in Charleston's position, is somehow you find a massive puff <laughs> that can just shoot you to the finish. Yeah. But Look just it, it's pretty consistent all the way out there across yep. the board. I, it's it's hard to hard to hope for that for that mystery. Oh yeah, I have I've yet to see one of those mystery all hail Mary puffs just yet. So looks like uh, Dartmouth might have this one two locked in at this point in time. I'd love to pan on that downwind race right there. I'm seeing a seven eight nine Tufts versus Navy. It's like that would be a close one, and that would could actually affect the leadership board here. Yeah, Navy sitting at five and five. They just dropped that heartbreaker to Dartmouth, and this is their yep. so th talk momentum, talking about staying hot. How yep. will they rebound? How will they, you know, tough loss there? They were just on the inside looking out, but now they're sitting at five and five. If they lose this race, they would drop to five and six, tied with Penn for tied with Penn for eighth. Yeah, absolutely. Whereas Tufts is now they're clawing. They they need every race at this point. They're sitting at three and seven. And they're just trying to um, – they, they, need, they need to win every race at this point to have a shot at making that top eight. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go ahead and pan in on this Tufts and Naval Academy race, 7, 8, 9, 16, 17, 18. We've got Navy in 16, 17, 18. They should be blue. Sun's definitely starting to poke through. It's here we go. We've got uh, some action-packed mark roundings here between Tufts and Navy. But looking at it, Navy looks like they might have a 1-2-3 here. Yeah, Navy very strong here against the Jumbos. I always love this combination, obviously, because it's very stable. But when you're boat 18, all you have to do is just start raising a little bit of hell and have yep. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> let, let your teammates in front of you just kind of sail away and don't let anybody get close exactly and as you can see i think that is jc hermes in boat 18 last year's college sailor of the year so you know he's got a little bit more to prove out here you know so he's gotta he's gonna want to be defending that title and 
defending two national championship wins from last year as well. So we saw him having a little bit of fun there. He was pulling in his main, his boom, essentially, so trying to slow down boat nine. But it looks like there's a – I'm, I'm not even seeing the other two jumbos in the picture here yeah. right now. So here he comes on to starboard. It's always a fun one. Yeah, I, I was told that uh, J.C. Hermes, after upon graduation, he will be uh, his his naval assignment is the he's a surface warfare officer. So I think that might be a kind of guy you want uh, in the back, causing a little bit of warfare. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> right you for your teammates. Yeah, good on him. There he goes, tacking out with nine. He looks like he put in a solid gap here for his teammates. So you know. Oh wow! Yeah. There's looking up wind right now, even from the. Southern Yacht Club Boathouse. It looks like they've got a good gap here. His two teammates are kind of booked out ahead now. So, cheers to him having fun. <laughs> it's all about. It's all about. It's all about. Oh yeah, fun out here. absolutely. If you're not having fun, what are you doing, right? So, at the end of the day, no matter what happens, you just want to look back and be like, hey, at least I had some fun. Yeah. <laughs> Winning's pretty cool, though. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, there's no <laughs> doubt about that, you know? Winning's always Winning pretty cool. Winning is sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, having some bragging rights is pretty cool, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, so Dartmouth just... Uh, How are they looking on the leadership board? Let's see if we can't renew, refresh this page. Sitting at six and four now is Dartmouth in seventh, and uh, Navy at five and five. But it looks like they're gonna hang on here to uh, extend their lead on the jumbos. That would make them move up to six and five. Let's see if I don't think Navy and Penn have raced yet. That could be a very exciting race with the potential for who makes that top uh, that top eight. Let me make sure. Well, let's talk about this. I'm looking at the Navy roster now, and we've got uh, Gray Benson, Olivia de Olazara, and JC, all seniors. So th they're graduating their whole eight-team race team at the moment, and including some of their two of their crews. So and and, and looking at it, you know, o Olivia's new kind of new to the roster for the team racing. They lost Connor Bayless last year, um, and you know, looks like Kimmy and Fiona were on that. Uh, winning team last year but you know it looks like they're losing a good chunk of their team mm -hmm. so you know wh what, what do you think about that i mean rebuilding as we're as we're seeing some more traditional powers the charlestons the saint mary's uh needing to reload their rosters so you know it's always hard to say where they're going to go next year i'm, I'm not super familiar with how deep they are what potential they have coming in for new recruits um but you know it, it's I, I think no matter what i think at the end of the day However, this class finishes up here at this event. You know, they won last year. They yep. swept. They won. They won co-ed nationals as well. So they just they right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah making yeah, sure yeah, I had yeah. that right. No, no, you got it uh, right. Uh, and uh, you know, it's it just they they'll always have that. And I think when you are a senior, you do want to go out on you know the hardest championship to win is the second one. Some some people like to say just to you know prove it wasn't a fluke, and he's like, oh, what well, was it? Their home? It was in it was at the <laughs> it was in Annapolis. Like that's what they're used to. Right. That's their that's their day to day. But uh, you know, certainly they they you want to be able to show that that you know you are a good team, and certainly you know just because they're sitting at five and five right now, if they so long as they make that gold, that's when that's all that's 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 where the action it, happens. It's like you know, yep. Mar it's like. I always love to say it's like a March Madness tournament. Just survive in advance. All you need to do is make it to that next round. Exactly. And make it to that next round. And yeah. Then, and then you never know what's going to happen. Sure, if scores carry over, and, and, and I believe that they will, uh, there might be some, you know, maximum. There's a ceiling to how far they can climb. But, but right. you never know. So long as right now they're in that top eight, I think that's something that they can all hang their hat on at the end of the day. Absolutely. Absolutely. I could not agree more. Once again, that's where that uh, mental headspace comes in, right? Got to keep it. Got to keep yourself in check. Mm -hmm. All the races. We're seeing 11 and 10 on our screens here. This looks like it might be the Yale Bulldogs. So I'm not sure if. Let's go ahead and take a look. Actually, they, those guys are sailing in right now. So that is after their race. So we're gonna go ahead and pan over to uh, 
race if there is one right now I see that we've got a team that just finished but it looks like we've got 13 14 15 they're racing over there so why don't we go ahead and pan in on those guys that's Harvard University, the Crimsons, versus Roger Williams. Harvard and the Raj, that's a great race. It's a great one. Harvard sitting at 7-3 right now, comfortably in that top eight bubble. Raj still undefeated 10-0 and on the event. This might be one of their bigger tests. Absolutely. Uh, you know, they did race. They did give Yale their only loss yesterday. But, but yep. certainly, as we were saying, no love lost between these two teams. You know, Harvard-Yale, that's – or excuse me, Harvard, Harvard, Roger Williams, and Nisa rivalry that uh, certainly these, these teams are absolutely familiar with each other. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's go ahead and get panned in. It looks like they're just now rounding Mark 2. Mark 1, there we are. All righty. Let's go ahead and take a look at this Raj Harvard race here. Oh, we're seeing a spin. A spin right when we got on them. Boat number five, Roger Williams and 456, a.k.a. the bright yellow pennies out there racing against Harvard. I got to say, though, it looks like there's a little bit more breeze for this one. Yeah, You're seeing people maneuvering and able to. Right. They're that, moving faster that, here. That 720 from boat number five, while detrimental, isn't exactly lethal. Yep. So they're, uh, you know, they'll they'll have a little bit of a gap and some room to catch up, but uh, you know they're not completely out of this race by any means. Assuming how their teammates do a little bit of uh, maneuvering. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, we see a protest hail right there from boat four from Roger Williams. We'll see what the umpire's call is. Oh, don't even need to make a call. Thirteen is going ahead and going for that spin. So it looks like Raj here is in a two three. Two, three, six, six, it may seem. So one, four, five, four, Harvard, which is a winning combination. Yep. But very, uh, can either be super stable or very unstable, depending on how you, depending on how it's all gapped and spaced out. Absolutely. So we're going to want to see 13 and 14 keeping their place here. And they're going to have to, they're going to have to make sure that they put a gap here. Yeah, we're seeing boat four jive on a starboard. 13 just trying to stay away, just trying to push. They, they just need to keep this race moving forward. When you're, if you're winning the race, folks listening at home, the general rule of thumb, the, the team that's winning, you want that race to just go fast as it possibly can. Just push, push, push. If you're losing, you want that race to throw on the parking brake and just try to make that race last as long as humanly possible to give yourself a chance, an opportunity to get back into it. Put it in slow-mo. Put, Put it in, in slow-mo. We're seeing boat, th boat 13 doing a great job just pushing those two boats, four and six, down the line, whereas boat number, I can't quite see the sail number, 14 is uh, doing a, their job here in this play is to try to put the gap. They need to put the... Uh, put the hammer down on boat number five, but is boat number five just going to boat speed their way through? That's what I'm seeing. I mean, 14, 14 keep in mind, they're on starboard here. It looks like they <laughs> they have pushed forward. I'm not even sure that they'll be able to cross 13 here. And we're seeing boat fifth, boat number five might have just a little bit of contact Fouled there. Let's see if it's a 720 or a 360. Hope it's a 360 if you're a Roger Williams fan. Yeah. I mean, y you look at 14 there. Oh, there when was it is a 720, <sighs> that's brutal. Yeah. That's going to be a deep six, right? So 14's not going to want to run away just yet. They're now, if they still have that one and they have that play four, they're going to want to make sure that that Roger boat stays in six. Yeah, 14 needs to do all the work in the world, still keeping that boat behind him. We're seeing boat 13 mixing it up beautifully with boat number four and six, just throwing their boat back and forth, getting very close, very low to boat number four. You know, team racing can get pretty close. It's a game of inches, but <laughs> and it's hard to totally tell from our perspective. And it looks like there might have been a little bit of contact there Is from boat 13. I think that might be a self-inflicted spin. So all of a sudden, boat 14, you need to put that hammer down hard on boat number five. Right. And that's why you wanted to do it as early as possible, right? You don't even want to wait for that. Yep. You never want it to get to this point. No. Now boat number four trying to shut the door on boat number 13 so they can convert Roger Williams into a 2-3-4. This is a big mix-up here. Where's the, where's the boat one for Harvard, right? Boat number one for Harvard's a little bit farther down the yeah, track. They need yeah. to start getting back in the fight. Yeah, absolutely. You definitely, as the one, you you, you want to advance forward, but you don't want to run away from the race, mm -hmm. right? So it's moments like these where, you know, they they might need to be there as soon as possible. And there we are in that nice, yeah, there they are. There's just boat, boat number 15, 15 kind of lurking there. We could see something outrageous like a jibe on the starboard just to really wreck things, but. 
Absolutely. And we see 13 s slowing on boat 5 here. You know, it looks like Harvard might have a 1-3 here, which I if that's the case, they're going to want to do that. <laughs> they're going to want to convert to that play 1-2 play one, one, as soon as possible. Yeah, I, I can't quite see. I don't think 13 has mark room. I think they're still Harvard. I think they're still trying to stick with that 1-4-5 play 4 combination as we're seeing. Are we seeing that jive on starboard from 4? Yep. And there's definitely contact there. Oh, boy. Oh, no. So All right, this is going to be a tough call for the umpires. Yeah, boat number 14 shut out at the leeward mark there. They're going to have to get down low. I'm not even seeing the mark right now. It's behind boat 14. We're going to see it, it here in a second. Are they spinning? Boat number 14 is spinning. A late spin around a mark. I'm sure we're going to get an umpire call, though, at we some must. point. Unless 14 just uh, completely fouled and was wrong. Yeah. Because once someone spins, the situation's over. Yeah, it's closed. absolutely. So we're seeing... So 2-3-4 or 2-3-5 right now for Roger, which is winning. They want to make that pass back happen. They need to get their teammate in boat 5 tacking now, and they do. And uh, 4 and 6 are going to put the hammer down on boat 13. And, and there's the hammer. And boat 15 is going to try to get their... <laughs> that <laughs> hammer came down. Yes. 13 got shot out in the back there. All right, so now we're looking at a play 2 from Roger Williams here, 2-3-4, and... Let's see how good of a job they're doing balancing here. And and here comes into play the, the boat 15, right? They Had they just stuck a little bit closer, they mm -hmm. maybe could have put an end Absolutely. to all that action going Absolutely. on there, you know? So as that one, you definitely don't want to be going too far forward here. I mean, especially the breeze looks like it's filling in quite nicely yeah, here. So I'll use the word up, but uh, it's all relative at this point. Yeah, <laughs> it's certainly true. up to what it was about 15 minutes ago. Yeah, but yeah. Right now it looks like Roger holding on. It's a bit of a drag race out there. Uh, between the two Roger Williams boat, we have one Harvard boat, 14, peeling out. Let's see how 15 is able to hold here. Once again, they're in the windward position. That's <laughs> yeah, 15 has that clamp down on them hard, yeah. but... It's hard to hold it. It's hard to hold it. I've been there, and it's that's no easy task. But look at that. I mean, they are staying with them. I, I mean, I'm, I'm impressed. That's not... Uh, and the... Big tack, big duck. A little bit of a dial down. Ice I, I, looks I like some contact. I hate that move. It's <laughs> terrifying. It's it's terrifying <laughs> ten times out of ten. Uh, we were holding on to our seats, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Taylor Canfield almost took my head off with a boom doing that once in college. You don't want that. No. So no. Taylor, if you're listening, I forgive you. <laughs> so that's a one for Harvard, a two for the Raj, and it looks like they might squeak through here. With a five six, we're seeing a big duck from boat number four on fourteen. Hold the, f hold the door. That's is uh, that a one three four for Harvard or maybe boat number fifteen spinning? They're now? spinning, they're spinning. You know what? It, the, if if we if we have the chance, I would say that we'd replace the scenario. It might be that fifteen adjusted course a little yeah, bit too we, late if, there. If we can queue up that replay on that finish there, that would be that would be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. That that might be the case. That might be why the Raj boat had contact. It, he might have adjusted his course. Mm -hmm. So. We'll, uh, we'll see what happened there at the finish. We'll keep refreshing the old ye old tech score. Yeah, but from the looks of it, it looks like Harvard came back to do a spin, and and that's the end of the race right there because he, he was the one. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. So the Raj might have held on for that. Down here at the start line, we got Stanford versus Penn. Stanford in the 1, 2, 3 red boats. Penn in the 10, 11, 12 boats. Penn, uh, one of those momentum teams right now, they're, they're knocking on the door. To try to get through, Stanford sitting at 10-1 and one right now, um, very, very comfortably making that top eight. But, you know, every race carries over. Every race matters, so they need to keep that momentum going. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm quite flabbergasted at that finish. <laughs> All right, let's take a look here. Looks like we might have somebody over early here. Let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, again, Stanford in 1, 2, 3, Penn yep. in 10, 11, 12. Looks like one of the Penn boats might have been over there. So two is kind of getting shot out here. Let's see which one of the Penn guys is going to be tacking off with her. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one. I mean, that's 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 the moment you're over in team racing. That's you're you're putting yourself or your teammate in deep six here. So we'll see. 
Yeah, a lot of a lot of teams like to play by the rule. It's just fleet race to mark one, and we can reassess from there. And then there yeah. are those teams that do get pretty aggressive, like pre-start, and yeah. uh, you know, because certainly if, if if you can have your opponent pinned or kind of tool them off the line, that certainly puts you in a position to succeed. But oftentimes you'll see teams get kind of spread out because the start shockingly did not go the way they wanted it to or Absolutely. designed just like the play and uh you know everything kind of converges on mark one and combinations might be up or down and um excuse me te uh velocities might be up or down on certain sides of the course as, yep. they, as they separate yep and you know i wouldn't I, it's okay to be over in certain conditions but in the light stuff it can you yeah, know to it's totally it can be it can be brutal and brutal. so oh yeah and so you definitely want to be communicating with your teammates you know if, if this is your if this is your pin guy that's over you're gonna want your boat your boat boat of your team, you're going to want them communicating that to them just in case they can't hear you. Yeah, right. Or you can't hear it. Right. So. And uh, just confirming, we just received word that Roger Williams did indeed beat Harvard in race 86. There were the one, two, five. So um, certainly you, you said it earlier in our show, Gloria, like it's, it's very, you know, that, that last, those last 20 yards before the finish line could be the most nightmarish or uh, heroic moments of your life. Yeah, but I love to watch it. I got to tell you oh, what. Oh, no, it's great from up here. I, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's low. <laughs> my blood pressure maintains low. My <laughs> voice doesn't get blown out. It's great. We have shade. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I must tell you guys, we've got a pretty pretty decent setup up here. We're, we've got our coach, all the coaches to the left, and, you know, we're here in the shade. We've got a great view of what's going on. I got to say, like, in terms of spectating a national championship, Tulane has done a great job setting up a good spectating area for coaches and parents. Absolutely. So – and for teammates as well. So, you know, and the sun is out. So uh, I'm actually, uh, I'm not envious of the the people that are over on the on the brick wall out there. You know, I'd, luckily some of them have some tents set up, but I definitely wouldn't want to be out there in the sun right now. It, you might as well bring a change of clothes because you're going to sweat through the pair yeah, that right. you're wearing right now. Right. So around Mark One, see, just like that, it looks like. Boat number eleven, who was over, they're you know they certainly have caught themselves back up into this race. Again, that's Stanford in one, two, three. U Penn in ten, eleven, twelve. Yep. Stanford sitting second overall right now at ten and one. U Penn at five and six and ninth. So this could be a, this could be a pretty big race here, consequentially for for Penn. I'm seeing a spin from Penn in twelve. You know, and 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 we saw that that boat that was over from Penn. Are they not the boat one right now? They might. It was, they boat, it was boat eleven. For it was Penn. boat eleven. All right. So they've made a round, but looks like twelve might have gone flagged here from Penn. They're doing two spins, so you know that's, that's a little that, killer. That, that's a that's one five six. That's right what'll now. kill you in a team race. You yeah. can be over, you can get back into it, but a, but exactly. a penalty. We've seen. I feel like almost every single race at this point, we've seen a penalty on this top leg from uh, if one, one, if not two competitors. Right. So, yeah, here it looks like Penn is in a 1-5-6, Stanford in a solid 2-3-4. Let's see how their team balances on this downwind because that's going to be crucial. I'm curious how much of a gap there is between the 4-5-6 here. Um, and let's see if uh, Stanford puts in a little bit of a, more of a gap here. And, uh, you know, the, the boat in first place for Penn, they're just – they're hoping that their teammates sit on these boats and sit on the Stanford team and try and make up distance one way or another. I see a Stanford boat attempted to go wing on wing here. It might still be too light to try a wing here. I'm, so a, little, I'm a little surprised that this breeze velocity is, is holding, though. I, I, I was told by, by some with some local knowledge that it was a little cloudier this morning, and that was going to help, help keep the breeze breeze alive. And uh, as the sun came out, it, it might shut down a little bit, but I, but I think – the breeze clocked a little bit yeah. to the right, which I was, again, told wasn't the happiest direction for it. But uh, it seems to be okay, and this is turning into just a beautiful day. It is light out there, but that's welcome to college sailing. Yeah, absolutely. You never know what you're going to get, right? I mean, I feel like your average college sailing race has sailed in, like, probably five knots. Easily, easily. So we're seeing the pen boat here get closer to Stanford 3-2. Let's see if Stanford can – looks like boat 2 might be getting around this mark. Stanford might be clinching on to the one here in this race. We'll see what happens. Possibly they might get into a 1-3 here, and if they get that 1-3, then they can just go ahead and convert to a play one here. But it looks like Penn is still has the one. Yeah, Stanford's got the 2-3-4, and this, is, I think, for them at this point, is going to be pretty bread and butter. Yeah, yeah, you know, I would love to see Stanford's fourth-place boat putting in a big gap here on uh, on the Penn Quakers. 
Yeah, I think I think boat number eleven, the, the that boat that was over to begin with, in in six right now. But they're uh, at such a hard position to hang on in this light stuff. You're in yeah. getting everyone's bad air. If I'm seeing this right, Stanford might be rounding in the one here. And my depth perception was correct. Excellent. I'm seeing a one two here. That's gonna uh, be a tough one between three and three I, and eleven I, or ten. I think ten might have a little bit of mark room yet, so they're gonna be a one a one three. One three five for the Cardinal right now, which is still a winning combination. I think they're gonna try to see if they can't make that pass pack happen. Boat number two getting their teammate in boat number three out of that third place and I think this might be one of those things where boat number three can rely on their boat speed and just kind of put the hammer down as we're seeing them now boat number three just poking out to lured and then boat number two providing just the ever so subtle accent of a of a wind shadow and just like that we're seeing boat number three just accelerate and step away from boat number ten yeah absolutely. and uh, I think this one's gonna be shutting case closed for the Cardinal and that is correct in the uh, coming around the weather marks right now, we have Tulane in orange, and we have Hobart in green. Uh, a couple teams that are on the uh, that are on the uh, edge. I think Hobart right now at two and nine, they might be out of it. But Tulane sitting at four and six, uh, a loss by Penn here in the race prior to Stanford, which I think is is a sure thing. And then we have Tulane could be tied with them if they can get a big win here over Hobart, putting them both at five and six, and within within striking distance of that top eight. Yeah, absolutely. So like Stanford might still be holding on to the win here. Yeah, Stanford just uh, boat number 10. Don't think they're gonna get a piece of boat number two coming back here. I've been wrong before on depth perception, but I think this one looks pretty happy, with, especially with boat number two having starboard advantage. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, maybe, yeah. And I got to say, boat three parked it in a pretty good spot here to be slowing boat 10. It uh, looks like that's going to be a yeah. play one for Stanford. Yeah. So let's see if we can't stay with these orange and green boats that just went across our screen. That's the uh, that's that two-lane hobart William smith race that just rounded mark two. So looking at where the camera's at right now, we have 7, 8, 9, and 16, 17, 18. That's Navy Georgetown. We'll definitely be checking on that one. Oh, absolutely. So we've got D.C. versus Annapolis area. Both, you know, both, both neighbors, they're both pretty close to one another. Yeah, strong Mesa rivalry for sure. Georgetown sitting at 9 and 2 at the moment. Navy needs a... They need to start stringing together a couple wins, or, or that door. They're gonna start hearing some footsteps behind them and the uh, on the score sheet. Yeah, absolutely. And looking at it now, I'm I'm not seeing those other Georgetown boats, but if if they're if I'm seeing this right, and they're behind, then that might mean that uh, Navy might have a one, three, four here. As soon as we find those other Georgetown boats, we'll get a better look at it. Yeah, 17 tacking. They're definitely not going to get across boat number eight. We actually see a nice little lee bow here from boat number eight, and we do. It's coming a little close here from the looks of it. Oh. The other two Georgetown boats are, are just outside of our screen. They're they're hitting it hard left right now. So I think one of those Got Georgetown it. boats might be ahead of the third Navy boat. Yep, that's that's what it looks like. 16 looks ahead of seven, if I'm seeing it right. Yeah, but nine just did a great job making 17 tack off. Some double tacks right now from 17 and nine. This is so, because it's so light, one bad tack could just be... <laughs> brutal. 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 I wouldn't want it. That would keep me up at night. <laughs> one bad tack. Alrighty, so it looks like, you know, we'll, I mean, we'll see where, if Navy is able to keep that Boat 17 Georgetown behind them, they, Navy might have a 1-2 here. I could see it playing out that way. Yeah, 16 coming back across. I think they will be ahead of Boat 7. So two Hoya boats definitely within striking distance of those two Navy boats. But, uh, you know, there is a pretty comfortable gap. But 
once you turn around Mark II and it comes downwind, you know, the downwind, the boats that are behind have the advantage because they can cover you and they get the breeze first. So it, it, it's, it's never over. Yeah, that's for sure. Looking at that race that's on the final leg, I believe you were saying that's Tulane and Hobart. Tulane in the orange 456. It's far out in the distance. I'm just trying to get a good look here, but it looks like I see Tulane with a 236. I think you're right on that one. Yeah, so um, it's a good race for Hobart. Let's see where Hobart's standing, sitting think, in the stand. I think, I think Ho Hobart, Hobart might be uh, playing spoiler at this point if they can. Yeah, wow. I mean, Hobart right now has a 2-9, so... You know they're two and nine, and you know that would that would be a bit of an upset for Tulane here if they if they can't clinch the win for that race. That yeah. would that would bring them down. Yeah, that bring Tulane's record down to four and seven, and they just need every win they can at this point as a sh for a shot to make that top eight. Absolutely. Looking at this Navy race, nope, that's Tulane we're looking at right now. But you can see, I mean, they're working for it right now. They're absolutely putting in the work to try and make this pass back happen here. Let's see, Tulane's doing a good job trying to slow here. If I see it right, though, it looks like their 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 teammate is deep in that six. Though I'm seeing a big gap here from Shore. You can't see him on the screen here, but but from the looks of it, it looks like they're pretty far back. Yeah, definitely. And, and the one boat, the boat that's in the one four uh, pen. Yeah, but excuse me, Hobart. But absolutely, you're watching these two two lane sailors. They are putting in their full grit and effort right now to try and slow down the Hobart. Yeah, boat number 14, not even on our screen. They're going just straight downwind, getting back in the mix. They were, they were maybe three boat lengths from that finish line. And here we go, feeling a little bit. You can start to hear the breeze on our microphones, yeah, actually. Yeah, we like that. So a little bit of breeze up here towards the, uh, at this point in the day, which is great to see. Oh, yeah. And absolutely, it looks like Tulane might have done a great job slowing here, but... I think Hobart oof. gets through the 1-3 one, one, at that point. There. Boat number 15 just sneaking in. You don't know, you know, I'm sure there might be some conversations between boat 4 and 15 about luffing rights. If 15 maybe took some room that they didn't. And we're seeing boat 15 jiving around. So hold on wow. to 15 actually foul there. And Tulane might hang on for a 2-3-4. But then we're seeing another boat 5. Going, others talking to their teammate. That might have been, Ew. once again, guys, Oof. the finish lines. I'm telling you, that is where the action is at, right? Yeah, well, so I, I, th I, th I think Tulane might have, you know, as a result of that late spin they might have uh Got held a two, three, on. Four. We, will be, we will be monitoring to see if we can't get an official score report on that one but i think Tulane might have got that one yeah it's crazy what can happen right there at the very finish mm -hmm. right hold on to your seats guys we are refreshing trying to see what who had won that race yeah, this breeze feels great oh yeah Might be the most humid breeze I've felt in a bit, <laughs> but uh, I'll take it. I'll take it, folks. It certainly doesn't get this humid in Los Angeles. No, I bet not. And definitely not in Newport, Rhode Island. It's, yeah. <laughs> As they say in L.A., it's a dry heat. Yeah. In Newport, you know, the breeze that comes through is quite cold. So if we were getting this same kind of uh, puff come through on... I'm, I, I would maybe be wearing a hoodie right now. <laughs> I don't even know. So Tulane did indeed win that with a 2-3-4, so that wow. late spin for Hobart <laughs> proved costly. But a massive win for the Green Wave, the home team, moving up to 5-6 and six and knocking on the door of the Naval Academy, who's just in front of them at 6-5. and five. I feel like almost every race that we've seen, we've seen more races than not today that we've been following has have, have come down and had a... Had a uh, <laughs> a lead change in the last, you know, 30 yards. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about that. It's definitely worth keeping your eyes on that finish right there. That last upwind leg, right? You're thinking you're sailing. You're thinking it's over. Right. It's never over. Right. And then real quick, these other boats coming up went to the finish line that just went through. That's the uh, That was the Navy-Georgetown race. Didn't quite see who uh, went through on that one, but I did see a Navy boat in the six. So conventionally speaking unless 
unless Navy had a 1-2 or a 1-3. I don't know if they if they won that, but I, I missed who was out in front on that one. So we will update you on who won that race as soon as it is available to us. i got to say, I think my favorite part about team racing is watching these teams come in as a nice little squad, right? And they're all mm -hmm. talking with one another. I think that is crucial, is that after every single race, you, you sail all the way back in to do your rotations with your teammates, and you're constantly talking mm -hmm. to one another. And it, it, it's fun from up here to really check in the body language, you know, like oh, yeah. are their heads up, are their heads down, or is there some maybe some mild tension between teammates or oh. competitors that could have had a incident on the in that previous race? And oh. it's uh, cooler heads prevail typically. Oh yeah. But <laughs> oh yeah. But no, you're, you're spot on. It's it's very good to see, and it's it's you kind of get a feel for the temperature of the teams when they come by right in front of us. Absolutely. I mean, th there's so much that you can tell just from that. I couldn't agree more. Oh, so egg on my face, Navy did win that race with a 1-2-6. So <laughs> unless I, as I said, unless they had a 1-2, but I guess that they did. So that's a huge win for Navy. Absolutely. They were uh, getting a little close there to uh, falling out of that top eight, but that pumps them up to 7-5. and five. Georgetown falls to 9-3, and three, sitting in fourth overall. And... Uh, Rogers still undefeated at 11 and 0. Stanford at 11 and 1. Yale at 10 and 1. Georgetown 9 and 3. Boston College 7 and 4. Harvard 7 and 4. Absolutely. Yeah. No. That's uh. That's definitely a big Mesa rivalry right there. So you know, it's 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 interesting seeing them piggyback off one another one another there. So, and it looks like looking on that final upbeat that we've got right now, if I'm seeing it correctly, it is Dartmouth. It's not Dartmouth and Raj, no, is it? No, that's uh, I believe that's Tufts and Boston College. Tufts Boston College Boston. in the 10, 11, 12 boats. Got it. And uh, Tufts in one, two, three, coming up into the finish. And right now, Boston College looks Has pretty one comfy two? in a one, two. Yeah, absolutely. It's a one, two. Well, it's a one, two, six from the looks of it. So, can never get too comfortable. But it does look like they have a good gap to go in there. So. Yeah, there's a great look at them right there. Tufts in the one, two, three, but uh, grasping for straws at this point in the regatta for the Jumbos, currently sitting at three and eight. Um, this ninth loss here might just be unfortunate and, and might be might be the nail in the coffin on them making the, the final eight. Yeah, you know, and I just got a few words about that. You hate to see it. You just, you hate to see it. Alrighty, we're gonna we're working on getting you guys an updated on the standings. That way you guys can see what we're seeing. Awesome. Yeah, and looking at it right now, it looks like BC got that one two there, putting them eight and four. That's putting them a little bit above Harvard in the meantime. Eight and four. So right now, looking at it, top eight. It's looking pretty good. I think the race committee might have just been moving the race course a tiny bit because there seems to be a bit of a gap in the race behind them. Roger Williams and Dartmouth, I don't think they've started yet. So they might be tinkering with the race course. It is feeling like it's clocking a little bit farther right than it was earlier. But that could be the reason behind this uptick in breeze velocity, which yeah. is just phenomenal. I know they were... Not not stressing out about getting enough races in today based off of how the forecast was yesterday, but right now this just looks this current breeze velocity just uh, this looks like awesome sailing out here. Yeah. Warm, warm weather, warm breeze, warm water. Oh yeah, and you know what? I bet you everybody here on shore is much happier now mm -hmm. that there's some breeze coming in. Yes. So, and we're seeing that there's we've got even some people getting coached here over by the wall, which is great. We like keeping them as close to shore as possible. Is this going to make the rotations go much faster as I well? Mean, that's the, I think that's a big part of it, too. Yeah. So we love to see that here at the 2022 and, Nationals. Yeah. And then se selfishly, it keeps the bugs away, too, I think. Oh, yeah. That's for <laughs> sure. Let me tell you, I've seen some pretty wild bugs here in New Orleans. Yeah. I, just, I, I saw a bug before we went on air. That was like, I oh, that's new. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised. We were laughing about it. We were saying the cockroaches are so big down here. Pretty sure you can ride one yeah, as a they're horse. Like, they're like dogs. Yeah. Ugh. That's something I don't miss about about <laughs> about the South, the magnitude of bugs. Yeah. No, you don't want that. It seems like bugs are getting more and more dangerous nowadays, too. Like yeah. 
with the the ticks that give you alpha gal syndrome and stuff like that you know I don't want to be allergic to meat. <laughs> it makes you ad- allergic to mammals, believe it or not. Awful. That is a real thing. Jeez. It's a real thing. So you don't want that, you know, and those are apparently are on the rise. So looks like we uh, all might end up being vegetarian very time soon. Uh, that got, <laughs> this got dark really quick, Luria. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it looks like we're still waiting a little bit here for some races to get going. Race committee seems to be very quick about switching up the marks. You know, we've got a lot of the two-lane team volunteering here. Mm-hmm. We, we've got plenty of marks at boats, plenty of umpire boats, and I think that this is a very efficient race committee. I think they're doing a great job. Yeah, I think that's all you can really ask for. Given given the conditions, it's like, you know, the conditions are the conditions, and, and this, this race committee is certainly trying their hardest to make sure these races get off. Yeah, 100%. So they are in sequence. Yeah, I do hear some horns down there. That would be Roger Williams and Dartmouth. Roger in going to be in the silver slash gray four five six boats. Dartmouth in thirteen fourteen fifteen. How great is that? Dartmouth is in the green boats. Yeah, that could be a little uh, is that prophetic. Some, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You never know. We'll see. Sound like that was the one minute horn right there. And it looks like Roger Williams is still going undefeated here. Yeah. Yeah. Eleven to zero. Eleven to zero. So the big green i think they've won their last three races or so so they've been like going said, strong momentum momentum yep this race could be anybody's coming on 30 seconds 30, here exactly yep <laughs> Based off how far away we are, I'm sure there's a delay, like like four or five seconds, though. So <laughs> <laughs> you never really that's know true. where they're at. Again, that's going to be Roger in four, five, six, and Dartmouth in thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. The green boats. What's you, we were talking earlier a little bit uh, about like starting strategy in certain breweries, velocities, Gloria. What what are we trying to do? And it's a little bit lighter, but not as light as it was. Are we still pushing? Are we still pulling? Where, where do we want to be? You know, I would say, like, I, personally, I, I like to usually lead to the line. So I would say that in, the, in these weather conditions, I would probably still be leading. You know, just because, you know, you can't, you can't count on the breeze on filling in forever. I still don't think, unless the crew is on the rail, I don't feel that comfortable pushing. Yeah, right. So, you know, with the breeze coming up and down, right now it seems pretty stable, but... You know, looking at it, let's see. Do we have some crews on the rails? Uh, maybe, I'm a, maybe a little bit sliding up. We did have one Roger Williams boat either over or spinning. Boat number six. All righty. So let's see if we can take a look at the standings here. We'll come back to this Roger Williams Dartmouth race, but just to update you folks at home with where we're at in the race. Uh, yeah, so we got Roger Williams at 11 0. 11 0. Stanford at 11 to 1, Yale right there. A little bit of a gap with Hoyas with three losses, then a bunch of teams with four losses. Uh, Dartmouth being one of them, so a big win here, a, a win here against the current number one overall, Roger Williams for for Dartmouth would uh, would be would be massive. And that red line indicating the the top eight separation, the top eight teams advance to the a gold round robin, and those eight teams will all sail against each other, and then from there. After that round is completed, they will fall into a top four uh, round robin. They're, it's not a knockout format. It's not a tournament. It's not March Madness. Survive and advance at that point. It's it's uh, it's designed to you know reward these teams that have been sailing well all regatta and and uh, you know just just try to keep consistency and uh, reward the teams that have been most consistent. So back in with this Roger Williams Dartmouth race. Roger Williams in those four, five, six silver boats with the yellow pennies. Dartmouth in 13, 14, 15, the green boats. And I think right now we did have one Roger Williams boat deep, and they still are. Boat number six were spinning or they were over. I couldn't quite see why, but they are not even remotely close to our screens at the moment. And uh, Dartmouth looks pretty comfortable right now as boat number 13 tacks over onto port, try to get a pin. And those three Dartmouth boats, boat number four is doing a heck of a job as we just saw their hand go up. Little bit of a breeze shot there. There is some breeze coming in here from the flagpole. And we're seeing boat number four mixing it up, trying to put their hand up, trying to get the umpires involved or same protest. I'm 
Don't know if there's any contact. We are seeing one Dartmouth boat, boat number 15, spinning. And just like that, boat number 6, who was half a mile behind, is right back in the mix of it all. But Dartmouth right now, another Dartmouth boat spinning. Excuse me, boat number 13. Uh, lots of carnage, <laughs> not carnage, but uh, certainly a lot of mixing it up and spins here. It's a 720 from boat number 13. Absolutely brutal as Dartmouth with the 1 and a 4 six it seems so what's what's boat number 15 going to do to get themselves back in this race get their teammate in boat 13 who is spinning and deep but 15 soaking it low trying to get inside don't let anybody get mark room on them doing a great job with that but you can see on our screens boat number 13 is uh needs to get down below that that uh, wall of hawks and 13 jibes on a starboard 14 follows and 15 starting to put the gap on boat number six. So all of a sudden, Dartmouth now looking a little hairy as their teammate was spinning now seems to be in a marginally comfortable 1-4-5 combination. I do think the teammate in boat number one, or excuse me, boat number 14 out in the one is, is a little maybe too far ahead. Maybe just try to condense it a tiny bit just to keep themselves in the mix if anything happens. And you can kind of see them doing that now, slowing, not exactly putting a premium on boat speed at the moment. Yep, yep. Looks like the four and five are working hard back there. Yeah, boats four and five are uh, just trying to make a little wall, trying to, again, as we said earlier, if you're losing the race, you want this race to go slowly. If you're winning, you want this race to go fast. And boats number five and six for Roger Williams are certainly doing a good enough job right now to just throwing their, <laughs> throwing their, throwing the wood around on uh, just their jiving back and forth and uh, just making sure everything condensing. Here we are. You can see them coming in more into the camera screen here. Looks like Raj has a 2-3 here. 2-3, and we're seeing that one Harvard boat, excuse me, Dartmouth boat. I think they are in the six, so a 2-3-5 um, for Roger at the moment. It might be a 2-3-4 here. might be a 2-3-4. I think you're right. 14 is on the inside here. You know, and I think boat six is doing a good job of pushing 14 around the marks. Yeah, we well, just like that, you're rounding in a 2-3-4 for Roger Williams. If you're Amanda Callahan, you have to be very happy at your team right there. Absolutely. And how they just executed that. They were deep. They were not looking happy. And just like that, a 2-3-4, which, which many maintain is the most stable combination you can have in a team race. Yeah, absolutely. And there's another one of those scenarios where, you know, you wish the, the first place boat would have just stuck a little bit closer closer to the teammates Ooh, there. And we just saw boat number 14 try to jibe on a starboard. I don't know if their sail really fully filled onto that board, so... Potentially a fouling situation there, but 14 is just putting the handbrake on, not letting anyone through, just trying to slow the race down. And uh, let's see, boat number 13 kind of pinwheeled off to the outside. Boat number 15, are they going to be able to sneak their bow inside? Maybe a tiny bit. They're peeling out, but boat number yep. 5 is covering them diligently. And let's see the Raj set up their weave here on the, on this final beat. And this, you know, if I was a betting person, I would say that this is definitely more of a shut case right now for Roger. I think Dartmouth has a lot of work to do to break up this two, three, four. Yeah, absolutely. But you know what? I I wouldn't I wouldn't give up on Dartmouth just yet because you know I I will say if you look at the fleet racing that Dartmouth has had this season and they've gone pretty strong. Like they're they're a fast team. There's no doubt about that. They are fast. So you know, let's see where their boat speed takes them. And I think that they they might have a chance here. And that's exciting because you were saying earlier off earlier just looking at you know some of these teams are older some of them are younger Dartmouth probably might might be the youngest team here yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely so boat number 14 for Dartmouth a little bit of work to do yeah absolutely Let's see, I see four kind of dialing down here. Let's see. L and am I seeing this right? But it looks like that Raj boat might be yeah, in boat the six. Boat number five might have gotten back in the six. Didn't see how that I quite happened. Could have been a fouling situation, but we'll see how 15 crosses boat five. A little bit of a tricky tack there for yep. 15, and they get across. So, yep. wow, I might have been, sp <laughs> been speaking too soon about Roger having a uh, comfortable 
lead here. Yeah, you know, you you, you got to make sure when you're in that two, three, four, it's it, it can be a tricky one boat number on that final boat leg. Boat number 15 is being a thorn in the side, making boat number six duck, making boat number five duck. But it's all about what that gauge is between 15 and six. If 15 gets across here, I think they might, but that was a As very, very sloppy tack. I'm and I seeing, see a hand up. I am seeing, <laughs> yeah, a little bit of dialogue there between the two competitors as they're approaching the finish line. Dartmouth in boat number 14. Is boat 15 in the finish box? I don't think so. That's and a spin. That's a spin for boat oh. number 15. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. There you go. Play two. Play two. Three, four, five. Two, three, four. Four, Roger Williams. That's yeah. a tough one. I mean, they fought all that way. They fought so hard to get back in that race. Yeah. And, and then, what do you know? It's 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 a penalty turn. Yeah, the penalty turns are killer. Yeah, a little bit of animation from the uh, from the Dartmouth coach staff who is just a little bit down the uh, balcony from us. So certainly a heartbreaker as we've been going through. Every race matters at this point. We just had a look at the results, and Dartmouth will now fall to 6-5. and five. It's still in that top 8, but that's it makes that gap that much closer, especially with... Tulane and UPenn just knocking on the door. Yeah, absolutely. And let's see what other races are left for Dartmouth. Um, they still have a race against UPenn, Tulane, the Badgers, and Yale. So not, not the easiest road. No, 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 definitely not. So, you know, there's still a lot more races to go. So. You know, that, that, that was definitely an upset for them, without yep. a doubt. But you know what, Raj? Here we go. One Once again, undefeated. Yeah, 12-0. Right? and 0, And it's, I don't know if they're extending their lead because Stanford and Yale are still knocking on their door with only one, one loss apiece. Yep. But Stanford and Yale actually are going head-to-head. -head and uh, momentarily, they'll be on the water. Uh, let's see if we can't get, a, get some eyeballs on them. I think they're, they're not even in sequence yet. I think there's a couple races ahead of them. And you you know you gotta commend the teams that go undefeated for this long. Yeah, right. Right, uh, right here is uh, Charleston in seven, eight, nine boats. Harvard in sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Cougars are currently on the outside looking in, and there might not be enough enough regatta left for them to cra crack that top eight. Uh, but Harvard, they're in right now, sitting at seven and four. But they they need they need wins here. Yeah, to just absolutely. to solidify themselves. I, I think as there's a, only a couple races left, I think we can, uh, as it starts to wind down, a couple flights left, excuse me, we can start to say who maybe has clinched or who hasn't clinched. 100%. And I think Harvard right now is tiptoeing that line, so I, I think a win here would certainly uh, certainly make them a little bit happier. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you just can't get comfortable. It looks like 17. I'm seeing 7 and 17 with their hands up hailing for protests. I'm curious to see if this is going to be a green flag or red flag from the umpires. Right now, I'm not seeing any spins yet, so it they, this might have been green flagged. But Harvard looks like they have a pretty strong play four here. Yeah, one four five for the Harvard team in blue boats, two three six for the Cougs. Yep. So you know what you're going to be looking for in this in this final upwind beat is 16's going to want to be playing hard on eight, put in that gap. You know, and, and and if you're uh, Charleston in the seven nine, you're going to want to be playing back on 17 and 16 trying to get boat eight up ahead of you so but I, i'm not seeing too much action from seven and nine here and the earlier you make that pass back happen the earlier you play back and go back on 17 and 16 the quicker the pass back happens and the more time you have for s something else to change but boat eight looked like they were putting on a fight there yeah, so we can see now around the lure mark. This is that race that I was looking for. Yale, Stanford, Yale in one, two, three. Stanford one. in 10, 11, 12. Uh, not a lot on the line here as far as, well, I guess head-to-head -head will matter down the line if, if tiebreakers become an issue. Uh, but these are, the, these are the two teams that are chasing Rods right now. Stanford at 11 and 1, Yale at 10 and 1. Yale certainly one of the favorites entering this event, and uh, their sole loss given to them by the Rods yesterday. And uh, right now it looks like Stanford in the one two three excuse me yale and the one two three boats are Look at that that's a one yeah, two, a one for, two yale. for yale yeah and let's talk about yale i mean so they've got sean harvey he's uh he's this is his last year you know he he took a year off with covid and he's back this is his final year of college sailing so he's he wants to go out you know the right way so he's got a lot to prove here and he's one of the only skippers mm -hmm. that also actually won the championship in 2019 so he's right. one of those returning players so is you know uh, Sonia and uh, and I believe one more 
possibly Catherine or uh, one of the other players. But and then you have, of course, you have Jack Egan. He's he's young. He's class mm -hmm. twenty five. Mm -hmm. So he's one of those first years, first national championship for him. And then you've got Teddy Nicolosi. So, and and let's talk about the Nicolosi family at Yale. They're they're a powerhouse family, right? So they had the oldest, Grace San Nicolosi, which won multiple championships and multiple All-American. Now they've got Teddy Nicolosi, who's right there in the middle of that family. He's been destroying it, right? So he, this is his, what, his second year. I think he's a sophomore, and he's still got plenty of championships left to try and win under his belt. And, and lastly, they have the youngest, Mia Nicolosi, who I believe is just a freshman, and she went and won the Women's Team Race National Championship, you know, and she's going to be coming in for Women's Fleet Race, and she's going to want to win this thing. So, you know, that, that talk about a powerhouse sailing family. So what you're saying is uh, mom and dad are pretty happy. Yeah, that, <laughs> there's no doubt about that. I think there's something in the water of the Virgin Islands of St. Thomas because you will see so many players from there that are very, very strong. Yeah, that, I mean, back from my generation, the Barrows brothers, obviously from, from that area too. So there's a little bit of a pipeline between the USVI to, uh, to New Haven, Connecticut. I don't yeah. know if there's any direct flights <laughs> yet, but I'm sure if anyone's working on it, it's Zach Leonard. Yeah, there you go. And, y and you've, you see you've got Thomas Barrows coaching the Yale University team as well. So, man, there's something in that water. Maybe I should go swim in there more often. You know? <laughs> Maybe I'll become like a powerhouse sailor as uh, well. Fine, you know? fine. Send me to the Virgin Islands. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll make do. <laughs> So let's go ahead and take a look. Ooh, hold on. So the Cougars actually came back to beat Harvard that race. Oh, I wow. I think I might have seen a Harvard boat spinning. Not quite sure. We did pull it off that race to watch Stanford-Yale as the uh, two of the regatta leaders going head-to-head. -head. And right now it does look like uh, Yale was, was pulling away if that from that one. That's going to be a big one for them. And then for Harvard, I mean, that's that's going to be a little bit of an upset for them. Now they're going to be Absolutely. battling even harder to stay up in that top eight without a doubt. Absolutely. Right now, Harvard, Navy, and Dartmouth all 6th, 7th, and 8th with five losses. And then Tulane knocking on the door with their sixth loss. Yeah. Penn right behind them with seven. And, and the Cougars, you know, I think they might be mathematically eliminated from that top eight, but certainly playing for pride. Uh, Old Howie Cromwell's got got his players. Uh, you know they can play spoiler. They can certainly ruin <laughs> ruin another team's chances. It's just a, that's true as a way to go <laughs> go down swinging. You know, absolutely. Yeah, you know that's the thing is you know you might not be in that top eight, but you as one of those teams that's not in the top eight can mm -hmm. definitely screw around with the stand with the standings. Totally. So, but in the best way possible, of course. <laughs> All righty, let's see. So it looks like we we're waiting on Tulane to finish up a race here against uh, University of California, Santa Barbara. Tulane and Santa Barbara uh, coming around the lured market, looks like. Tulane is in 4, 5, 6. UCSB in 13, 14, 15. Uh, UCSB kind of in that same situation, sitting at 4 and 8, might not have enough left in the tank or a, enough regatta left. But a big win here from Tulane would put them to 6 and 6 at 500, and that just gets – not quite through into that round yet, but, man, that can make it very, very interesting. Absolutely. I think that this is one that they definitely need to be winning mm -hmm. because, like you said, if they win this one, that brings their chances up. But if they lose it, it we're talking this might be officially they're out of the top eight. Yeah, and Tulane does have a 1-2 right now, and you're probably asking yourself, where is that other boat? And there they are. They were <laughs> deep, deep six. So three Santa Barbara boats behind a 1-2 for the home team, Tulane, the green wave. And uh, we've seen this one, two, six get broken up a couple times already today, but uh, I think there might be enough of a gap right now to really keep that comfy right now for, for Absolutely. Tulane. Yeah, we're going to be looking for some strong balancing here between the teammates, you know. This is, this is the kind of stuff you want to be practicing at practice. And looking at it, they're looking pretty decent right now. They just want to keep the UC Santa Barbara team in their coverage zone, and they should be able to get up to that top, to that finish line. T talking about, you know, just programs and, you know, we'd say the historicals, the, you know, the St. Mary's, the Charleston's, and then, and then in the last, you know, five or so years, Tulane has quite literally come from, from not, not really being one of the more prominent programs to hosting a nationals Absolutely. and really revamping. And now not only are they just hosting and are they qualifying, they're, they're, they're competing, they're being competitors. And, and you know, you can, you can point to the athletic department, you can point to 
uh, head coach Charles Higgins, who came from Old Dominion, certainly a, a stable, strong program up there in Norfolk. And, and I think that's, that's all credit to this school and this administration. And it just sounds like, you know, talking to some folks down here, it, it sounds like there's just so much momentum and enthusiasm, which is super important uh, to get a sailing team off the ground, particularly, you know, there's the footballs and the basketballs, the quote unquote money generating sports right. for, for schools. But certainly having a program down here in New Orleans that can not only have the infrastructure to host, but uh, to really look great, you know, make make their home make their hometown proud makes makes everything great. And it looks like Tulane will get across here in a one, one two, two, if not a one three, but yep. that's gonna be enough uh, to get that win here, moving them to six and six on on the day, on yep. the on the round. So uh you know, I mean, it, it's it's going to be close, and, and Santa Barbara that that's going to move them to three and nine might be the nail in their coffin. But yep. uh, you know, if you're Tulane, you're 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 still onwards and upwards. Yeah, I mean, I have a you know huge respect for how far they've gotten this team. I mean, you look at last year's national championships, the women's team finished second place. They got mm -hmm. second at women's team or women's fleet race nationals, and I think they were just one point out of first place. So you know, and they're generating all Americans now. So you know, th they've got a strong, strong team. And this happened within all the matter of, like, four years. Right. Right. So y it's it's hard to see. It, it's not every day that you see a program being developed like that. I mean, I think another another equivalent, I would say, is uh, is Jacksonville University. Another Absolutely. team that really came out of nowhere. You got John Faudre down there uh, leading leading that program. And, and, again, talking to those folks, it, it sounds like all, you know, quote, unquote, all it takes, like it's so easy, but just enthusiasm from the athletic department. And, and, and some momentum and the Absolutely. ability to attract good sailors. And, you know, New Orleans is notoriously a very unfun town. Oh, not yeah, whole, Not no. a whole lot of attractions there's, to come here. There's nothing to do here. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, certainly. So, uh, you, you know, when you have that infrastructure, when you have that awesome town, you have that, you know, desirability that not only is the sailing program great, yep. but the school is great, you know, right. academics and, and, and just lifestyle. Everything can that's what it takes to really get a get something going yeah absolutely let's go ahead and take a look what race this is um is this the cougars i'm seeing the badgers no, the cougars just pushed off the dock of the seawall here in front of us i think this is a hobart. The badgers. hobart and wisco wisco still over on the round oh sitting at oh and 11 right now hoping they can get one just to take back up to madison with them that they'll, right. they'll be here i think for the duration they qualified for both the co-ed and women's um women's events and I guess the the pride of the Midwest collegiate sailing scene, I would yeah, say, for the absolutely. Badgers. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That that's another program. You know, we we we're just you know, gushing over the two lanes and the Jacksonville's, but Wisconsin, they the same deal. Back in Wisconsin was always a program, but they hosted the nationals in 2010. They got a new fleet of boats back then. The Kuchin brothers, uh, George Kuch is. Uh, if you're tuning in, shout out you guys. And uh, you know, it's it's great seeing competitors and really not. It's always nice to see the, the not traditional powerhouses, you know, dancing right. and, and showing up and having momentum and enthusiasm and, and showing up and participating in these national championships. Right. And, you know, you're seeing right now that they're over, but I got to say, like, you you watch some of their races out there. They're putting up quite the fight without a doubt. So they're they're up there and, you know, it's 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 team racing. So it's it's not easy without a doubt. And, you know, it's sometimes just a simple little mistake that puts you behind and, you know. They're definitely putting up a fight. They're not making it easy for this other these other teams. So you know, massive respect for them to them for that one. Okay, so let's see if where we're at with the standings after that Tulane race. Okay, so Tulane is now six and six. Dartmouth six and five. Dartmouth uh, had that last. Let's see. Where are they? Their next race is against UPenn. So that could be a huge race. That could put nails in. If UPenn can beat Dartmouth, that could kind of flip everything over too. And uh, but if I think a, a Dartmouth win over Penn would be massive for for the Big Green. Are you saying we might be seeing some sail-offs here? Or? Well, I don't think it would ever come down to a sail-off because I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, and we could always get some some uh, ICSA rep uh, input, but I believe it's just the head-to-head -head tiebreaker is the first uh, the first break. It could be not the case at national championships, but I believe that that is the first tie-break. You got it. W were you quizzing me or asking me? You'll never know, I guess. <laughs> You'll never know. It's a surprise. I, mean, I, I know. Do you know? <laughs> You'll never know now. All right, let's look at this race. We've got BC versus St. Mary Seahawks off the line. It looks like BC has two pairings here. St. Mary's has one pair. 
Let's go ahead and see. Actually, we'll see how 10 ends up here if they're able to cross one. <laughs> if that's the case, Seahawks have two pairings. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. Let's see if 10 goes back with one here. You don't want to let that your pairing get off too far out to one side. So, yeah, we've got BC in 1, 2, 3, and St. Mary's Seahawks in 10, 11, 12. So, once again, St. Mary's team has quite a young team. This is – we've got two freshman skippers, and we've got Catherine Bennett. I see hands raised here waiting for an umpire call. I don't see anybody spinning here between 10 and 1. No spins yet. Probably a green flag here. Let's see if 10 is going to be able to hold her windward lane of 1. If so, St. Mary's will probably have two pairs here coming up. But I do see that somebody left a BC boat out to the right. We've got two crossing. So let's see if they can hold. It looks like 10 still has a little piece of one. But they're coming up to mark one soon. They're about halfway up this beat at the moment. Looks like one is kind of punching out here on 10. If that's the case and one is able to punch out, she's going to be coming back on starboard. She's going to have a big advantage here. I'm curious to see if this BC boat punched out. Boat two is going to come back soon. And this isn't necessarily a great spot here. 12 is going to have a hard time coming back here to the to the right side of the course. They're, they're coming back on port here. They might be doing a big duck. Let's take a look here. There comes that big duck from 12. They're just trying to get out back to the right, bring back some starboard advantage, and hope they can make something happen there because right now it looks like BC might have this 1-2 with the Seahawks. And looking back, the back two boats, two was at 3 and 11. Looks like St. Mary's has starboard advantage on them. Let's see if St. Mary's can make something happen here. And we've got BC rounding in a 1-2. BC is going to want to be keep pushing this race forward. They're just going to want to be sailing as fast as they can. And St. Mary's, what we're going to want to be seeing out of 12 and 10 is that they're just want, going to want to have to build a wall here on the downwind and try to cover the closest most boat right now, boat one. Where they're going to want to cover their air as much as possible on this downwind, try and slow this race down somehow. Be able to just pick up on one of those BC boats. That's that's all they got right now. Let's see what Let's see what they're going to do. We've got boat two going straight low, but one going high from BC. And let's see what the Seahawks are able to do here. Looks like boat two and one put in a little bit of a gap here. I'm looking downwind, and it looks like there's a bit of a gap. All St. Mary's can do right now is just cover those BC boats and hope that they can, you know, steal some of their breeze right now and hope for the best, try and ke catch up to one of those boats. You just want to get as close as possible definitely be sitting on them and it looks like yep it's a one two six for bc with a with a three four five for the seahawks that's not terrible you know and 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 we've seen it in all these past races we see that th there are one two sixes that have been broken up on this final up one beat so we'll see what happens around when they round mark three this this is not the end of the race not yet We are. We've got boat one on a reach, boat two winging downwind. We're still not seeing the St. Mary's boats in the picture just yet, but that does not mean this race is over. Looks like there. Uh, here you go. You can see boat ten and twelve St. Mary's Seahawks. They've. They, looks like the BC Eagles put in quite a bit of a gap here, so they do have a bit of a lead, but. If if the Seahawks are able to somehow get them to unbalance on this final upwind beat, then th they might still have a chance at this. There's definitely no easy regatta for the Seahawks. Like I said, they're missing one of their top players, and it's a young team. It's a young team indeed. So, 10 struggling a little bit to stay up. But there looks to be not that big of a gap looking between marks three and four. So let's see if they can make something happen. Looks like one of those BC boats fell back a little bit. There we go. Th that's that's This is going to be a tough one to come back from, but we've seen it before. 
this might not be over. Seahawks are kind of struggling to stay in the picture here. Literally and figuratively. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this might be this might be the nail in the coffin. Yeah, unfortunately. Right. Yeah, but you know we were saying earlier, just it, you can play that spoiler role. It's certainly no love lost between Boston College and St. Mary's, two teams that are, I think, always <laughs> seeming seemingly always qualifying to the for uh, team racing nationals. St. Mary's won won the nationals back in uh, 2007, I believe. Yep. That was the last time they won team racing, but Boston College has qualified for every single team race national since 2007. Uh, so that was a little, I was chatting with Greg Wilkinson earlier in the week, and uh, they qualified for the first one in 1998. Wow. That was their first time qualifying, and then they didn't qualify again until 2008. Yeah, that'll that'll do it. And they've done it every year since, and certainly uh, no stranger to the top of the leaderboard. Yeah, i got to say, they have a really strong team this year, um, but... Here's another, you know, unfortunate thing is it's all seniors, except for the O'Briens. So we're seeing Jack Natali, Class 2022. Same with Robert Hunter, Sophia Reineke, right? So this is this is their final team race national championship for those three. So they're definitely putting their all out there. And I think they've, they've been doing a very strong job thus far. And I think their qualifier might have been a little bit rough for them. But, you know, the... They're proving themselves this round, this time around, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, th going back to how we've kind of revamped the format, the their BC results over the season, that the John Jackson, they won. Sneeder, they got fifth. They won the Zambecki. They, their women's team won. And they fumbled a little bit at the Marciano. They got they got 10th. And then their qualifier, they got ninth. So Boston College is one of those teams that always a perennial contender. You know they're going to be good at the end of the day. Had they not revamped this format and had a different for Boston College would be watching would be watching this the stream at home right now. Yep, absolutely. But uh, because of that, because of their you know good sailing over the course of the season, they're they're here in in New Orleans at the, at the big dance. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see what's going on. We've got a start here. Maybe that's just me. This might be Charleston and Tufts. That's exactly who it is. That's Tufts in the 16, 17, 18 boats with the little. That's if you're watching at home, the uh, the boats that have the colors that have the little more stripy things at the at the heads of the sails. Those are the, those are the FJs, and then the ones that are the just the solid colors. Those are the uh, the Z420s. I never actually sailed the Z420. Those those got introduced right as I was. Uh, uh, what's the word? Graduating. Right. Right. That awful, awful G word that no college student wants to no, hear. No, and you know, even after you graduate, you don't want to hear it. <laughs> so yeah, this looks like St. Mary's, but they have three more races left. But let's take a look at the standings here. That 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 race might have been it for them. They're two and nine. Two and ten. Two and ten. So you know that that's unfortunately, I think that kind of ends their mm -hmm. their nationals for now. But you know. As my alma mater, I definitely have to give them the biggest shout-out, right? They've got a great coaching staff. You've got <laughs> Coach Adam Warblow, Bill Ward. You've got Brady Stagg at the moment. and got a you beautiful know, boathouse. Beautiful boathouse, great sailing facilities. You know, it, we, we've got quite the setup, quite the coaching staff, and great team members, you know. And so I'm, I'm not worried about that team. I know that, you know, they're still pretty young, and – they're they're on the come up. You bet. You better watch out for the Seahawks for the next few <laughs> years. These are some young folks on the team right now, and I know that they've got something good cooking up. So, oh, the Seahawks always do. You know what, what? What's it called? Super senior, superstar, super stud week or something. Yeah. Everyone comes yeah, back. We, All the alumni that happen to crawl back to the county and uh, you know find their way back there and help help the team tune up before before uh, nationals every year. Yep, that's correct. Yeah, we call it the superstar team race and so we yeah we're we're very lucky let me tell you our alumni were all very very close you said you sail with some of them over at a uh, newport beach yeah. so we've got a huge population of alumni out there we've got a big population of alumni in newport rhode island let me tell you something the saint mary sailors they continuously they keep they keep up with the sailing after college like you see michael menninger is now i believe on the sail gp uh, the america's cup team yes. now so you know We've got some big names from the program, without a doubt. So, you know, no doubt about it. This is definitely a bit of a rebuild year. So, and uh, they've got they've got some youngins, and uh, I I see a good future for them. Let's take a look at this Charleston Tufts race. Got Cougars in the seven eight nine, as a. Uh, 
on on tech score they it's like a it's like a grayish color but up close it's actually it's it's like a very nice pink color for 789 it's like yeah. more like a hot pink i don't yeah yep and then tufts in 16 17 18 tufts still on the outside looking in tied right now with the cougars for at three and nine i think both of these teams might be on the outside looking in uh in perpetuity for the rest of this event but um certainly playing for bragging rights right now that's for sure as it stands right now tufts uh, of the six NISA teams, one, two, three, four, five, six NISA teams that qualified for this event. Tufts is the only, right now, the only NISA team that's not going to advance into the top eight, which I, I think is just a testament to the strength of the conference and how much good team racing goes on up there. Yeah, absolutely. And looking at the Tufts team, they've got Samuel Merson, Alex Fasolo, and Ansgar Jordan. So looks like they also have an all-senior team. So, you know, looking at it, they're they're, they're putting up a fight out there and you know, hopefully they go out with a bang and, you know, they can look back and be like, wow, I was in New Orleans. I was sweating. It was hot, <laughs> but we sure did put up a fight. So. Looks like. Cougs in the single digit boat, seven, eight, nine. I think they're, looks like they're chasing at the moment. I don't know. It looks like the Cougs might be in a one, three here. With Tufts in a 2.56. We're looking at our forward most boats here. There you go. You've got like a, if not a, this might be a play out to be a play two. We might have a 2.34 here from the Cougars. Okay, boat nine. I couldn't quite tell how boat nine was on 16, but sure enough, you're absolutely right, Gloria. 2.34 three, for the Cougs around mark three. With those two tough, those two jumbos nipping right on their heels, though not a whole lot yeah. of comfortable gap, but uh, certainly enough to, uh, you know, hopefully set up their weave. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Let's take a look here. Looks like one of these Tufts boats. Can't tell if that's the one there. They got ahead of one of the Cougars. Yeah, that's 18. That's, that's the boat that same was one. in one. That was so the one. Cougs are going to hold on. Boat number eight might be pinwheel on the outside, so all of a sudden boats number seven and nine have to clamp down to a lot more work than they originally had thought. That is for sure. 16 looks like they might have a little bit of bow out on nine, meaning they could punch out. Tufts could go one, three, play convert to a play yeah, one here. Boat 17 springing free out there on the left as we've seen this uptick in breeze velocity. It's not so much of a, uh, you know, a little bit of a drifter. There's actually some potential to, <laughs> to get your yeah. boat ripping out there. And uh, boat number 17 is now being covered. But see how much uh, when they come back. It's a little hard to tell gauge from where we're sitting and how far how far apart the boats are. You so know what? I'm curious to see how when boat 17 tacks back, how they're going to look. 16's punching out here. You know what makes me excited to see is I'm seeing crews on the rails. There you go. Crews on the rails. That means the breeze is up. Boat number nine now trying to hold on just to try to just be the thorn in the side of these two Tufts boats. Boat number nine tacking back. I mean, that was great. We ju we just watched Tufts. You know, if they keep this up, we just watched them go from a, what was it, a 1.56? Chasing a 1.56. All the way to a 1.2. Let's go ahead and see. I'm curious to see. We've got the one Tufts boat out all the way to the left battling the three Cougars. But it looks like this Tufts boat 18 has, they look like they're keeping everybody in their coverage zone. Yeah, so 16, huge crossing situation with 16 just tacking back. Let's see if any of these Cougar boats, 7, 8, or 9, are going to get across. 9, probably not. 8 might have a piece, but if not, that's all of a sudden a 1, 2, but Four Tufts as they're all converging right here. Let's see what happens. So the jam-packed action we're looking boat for here. Boat number eight hailing for room to tack. So he's going to make boat 18 tack. <laughs> Seven so here. N I don't think. Do they have the cross here? Ah, they really stuffed it. I'm that's a stuff. That's a. That's going to be a really close finish there for boat number seven. He was bow out, but right. assuming he got out of that one chalk free from penalties, hard to tell from this angle. But Let's I go ahead and see if he goes back. And I think. Uh, that's important because if, if he did indeed hang on to that, then the Cougars would have had a 146, 145, excuse me, yep. and a 236 for, for the Jumbos because boat 17 was unequivocally in sixth place. But curious to see how the rest of that shook up. You know, and I'm not seeing anybody go back to spin.
kind of like hanging out up here by the coaches. You get to hear a little bit of the peanut gallery, hear him talking. Yeah, yeah. Well, Howie Cromwell was getting a little, <laughs> little vocal during that one. Yeah. I love it. You know, these coaches care so much about their team. They, they, are, they do travel so many miles with them over the course of a season. And, and that's uh, and it culminates here. Yep, and looks like that was a one four five wow. for the Charleston Cougars. Cougs get the one four five, so they did indeed shoot that line. Nicely done by, by uh, I believe boat seventeen. That was excuse me, boat seven. Yep. So a uh, late win for the Cougs, moving them to four and nine. I mean, anything can happen. I I, I might have you know positive <laughs> positivity. Brooks is you know thinking that maybe there's a shot that they could still qualify, make that top eight if they uh, rip off a couple more wins here, but. Uh, you know, it's sometimes you're just playing for pride, and and that's certainly a certainly a nice race that they can come back. You you know, you break it down. We were you know, how did we <laughs> we were comfortably two, three, four around that lured mark, and then you know until they weren't, and you just got to break down. And so long as you can diagnose where things went wrong for you in a team race, I think that's okay. It's because that means it's a problem that you can remedy, that you can fix. When you lose races and you just have no idea why you're losing these races, that's when it gets a little more scary and nerve-wracking particularly as a coach yeah absolutely let's uh go ahead and take a look this is going to be a great race it, harvard and navy are currently tied in the standings both seven and five they're tied for sixth place we're seeing them race right now we've got navy in 13 14 15 harvard in four five six this is going to be a big race for them I think we've got uh, the Harvard and Navy tied for six, and then Dartmouth and Tulane tied for eighth. Six and six. This is coming down the wire. This is exactly what we were kind of hoping for as oh, far as uh, exciting television for all you folks at home that are tuning in, and this is exactly what this regatta usually comes down to, That those, those seven, seventh through tenth are just tightly contested. Absolutely. It's that little bit of spice we're looking for. Spice. Some of that Cajun spice. Ooh. How about that? Whoa. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> now I'm hungry. Yeah, right. What's a, what's what's a good cuisine that uh, you haven't tried out yet? Good uh, New Orleans cuisine. I mean, I I just got here yesterday, so I haven't really been able to explore too much. But I'm I'm certainly hoping to get some gumbo or or something yummy down there. Oh yeah, we gotta get you some crawfish. Oh yeah. You ever eat crawfish? I have. Yeah, I it's mean, a it's a little tough to eat though. Yeah, you know, you we we would do seafood boils from time to time down there uh, when I was still in Charleston. Right. Yeah, in Maryland, we always had the crabs. Yeah, St. Yeah. Mary's, we always had the crab fest. Yeah, Old Old Bay, not a fan. I think Old Bay is, is tremendously overrated. But that's a... Co I'm, I'm hearing here from Charles, the Tulane coach. He's telling me that the crabs would get delivered from, from New Orleans to uh, Maryland. And that is heartbreaking. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, that, that, that's... At, at 5.15 a.m. with Southwest. Wow. What, what happened? I thought they're called Maryland blue crabs. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thunk it? The Instagram filter has been revealed. Oh, no. <laughs> All righty. Let's take a look back at this race. No more talking about seafood. We're getting pretty hungry here. So looks like Navy might have a 1-3 here. Yeah, like we yeah, Navy, Harvard, certainly a race that we're tracking. But that just a race that just finished that we were, we were focusing on some other races is Stanford Raj, two teams that are – uh, f currently sitting first and third. We just saw Stanford y lose a tight one to Yale. And I can't quite tell who won, but I think the Raj might have hung on for that one to uh, keep their undefeated record intact. Obviously, those teams are well clinched into this top eight round, so we're focusing more on these schools that are just might be missing the cut, hence the Harvard, uh, Harvard Navy uh, concentration as those two are scoring off right now. Again, Harvard in 4-5-6, the Orange Boats, Navy 13-14-15 in the green yep looks like that navy boat was able to punch forward boat 13. we see 15 and 4 battling it out here but i still see some overlap from this footage you know so this is going to be a tough one if unless 13 can punch through and get that mark room there at this this might be uh he he might be for, in the in second for, here. For, for all we know, though, those boats could be two boat lengths away. Oh yeah, so absolutely. It's, it's, it's pretty <laughs> tough to tell gauge from this angle and how far away, how far apart they are. As we're seeing, boat number sixty actually jibe to maybe try to reestablish that overlap or just or just spread things out a little bit. Yeah, depth perception's a tough one. Uh, there is no doubt about that. Looks like some overlap trying to be broken here. So 13's going down to a wing as they're coming in to round that mark. Six looks like they're rounding in first here. Harvard in the one. Navy possibly here in the 2-3, but I'm not, there's their last boat. 
Looks but, like it's going to be a 2-3-5 if boat number 14 can get around, but ooh, yeah, they but can't quite. Unless they have something possibly on four here. Yeah, boat four ooh. looks like they might be outside of the two-boat length zone from here. 15. It looks like 15 tried to make a big power move there, driving on starboard, but in the end, he ended up putting himself outside of everybody else. And yeah, now 14 is... Isn't even around the mark. I, don't, I think they're spinning not because they fouled, but just because they, that's, the, that's the most efficient way for them to round the next mark. Yeah, that's a tough As one. We're seeing boat number four on the start. What's boat number four doing? I'm not too sure unless that was uh, a spin. I think spin. it was just a penalty spin. You're right. Got it. So that, that, ooh, that's a, ooh, it's a that's 720. A that's, that's a twofer. That's twofer. <laughs> Putting themselves in the six there. That's, it's always a tough one to see. Yeah, tracking up that race though. See what we can see up around mark four. Boat number five's on There's starboard. Everyone's Is spinning. it just I'm me? <laughs> yeah. I'm seeing too many spins. Possibly Navy might have a two three four here, if not a two three two, five. Two three four as we see boat number five yep, had looks to like give mark room to thirteen there. So two three four four navy around mark four over Harvard. Uh, but we did just see the Cougars two three four get broken up Absolutely. moments ago against Tufts. It's all about that balance on that upwind. Mm -hmm. What is balance? What is balance? Yeah. So, you know, uh, let's, it's all about making sure that the, it, when you're in a 2-3-4, you want to make sure that you have all the boats behind you within your coverage zone. So it's a matter of covering all the sides, but also making sure that n you don't want to bang it out left and be like, I had to cover the left side, right? Because mm -hmm. any shift can come in at any point in time. If you're in the 2-3-4, you want to make sure that that 5-6 is behind you at all times. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that they're within your coverage zone. So if I had a little whiteboard, I'd draw it out to you <laughs> right now. But essentially, where wherever your bad air is, you want to make sure that they're in all three of your bad air. So Right, and it looks like they've set up a good job of that right now. Navy has with all the other uh, the two Harvard boats behind them are both on port, uh, definitely being covered by them right now. As we see, boat number four for Harvard and boat number five, which is... But boat number six for Harvard certainly getting themselves in the mix. That's what they need to do. But yep. at what cost? Boat 15 might be all the way across. So that is true. 15 is going to hang on probably in the one here. But let's see what happens. Obviously, they're now looking very strong with a 1-3-4, particularly a very well-coached, disciplined team that we've been seeing mixing it up with even the, even the regatta leaders at this point. So there's really just no, there's no easy race. And then two lane left they have. We were just saying they got Georgetown left and they have Tufts left. Dartmouth has Wisconsin in the next flight, and then they close it out against Yale. That'll be a tough one, obviously. And then Harvard. Harvard's still right there on the inside looking out. They got one more. They got against BC this flight. Then they have UPenn, and then they have – that's their last race against UPenn in flight 19. So two <laughs> – probably the toughest road of the teams that are on the bubble right now, having to race two teams that are for sure in. Like Penn's going to be scraping at the – chomping at the bit to try to get in and uh you know boston college they they just need to try to get hot try to seal that gap don't let do not let those top four teams uh start to run away with this thing early we'll leave that uh we'll leave that full screen graphic up for you for a moment here taking a quick break while the race committee is uh seemingly fine-tuning the race course it looked like it went breeze went Maybe a tiny bit farther right than it was earlier. Can't yeah, we're gonna step away here for just a for just a couple seconds here to let Glory and I and our production crew have a, have some water, chill out for a minute, and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as this race committee finishes setting the race course, and we'll be back underway here at the 2022 College Sailing Team Racing National Championship.
Clark alongside me is Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. You, I always remember your last. Your first name is Gloria, <laughs> but but your last name is admittedly a little tricky for me. Kavlicu. Kavlicu. <laughs> as you were speaking Lithuanian earlier, uh, very impressed by that. But uh, took a little break there to get some water and uh, you know rehydrate. We had to eat, eat eat a little sandwich ourselves so we can check back in on what we've been missing. But first of all, I think we want wanted to thank some of our sponsors that make all of this possible for us. The first being uh, Zim Sailing. This year marks the first year, the start of Zim Sailing's five-year sponsorship with ICSA in coordination with West Coast Sailing and Dwyer Master and Rigging. As official suppliers of college sailing, they are dedicated to supporting and giving back to collegiate sailing. Zim Sailing was established in 2008 by Steve Perry in Bristol, Rhode Island, and the Zim team quickly established itself as the leading supplier of collegiate and institutional boats, focusing on moving dinghy sailing forward. Today, Zim Sailing is the largest manufacturer and distributor of small boats in North America and is the exclusive manufacturer of the 420E sailboat. Furthermore, they charter small sailboats at most major regattas around the country and support events with their trailers full of gear and parts. Their sponsorship of college sailing is a natural next step in helping move dinghy sailing forward and grow the sport. For all gear, boats, or parts-related questions, their team can be reached via their web store at zimsailing.com. And next up, we have West Coast Sailing, which was founded in 2005 by former college sailor George Ulis. His team of passionate sailors has made it a priority to lead North America and support the dinghy racing and small keelboat market. Based in Portland, Oregon, they stock the best dinghy sailing necessities. With a focus on boats, parts, apparel, line, and accessories, they really lean into their exper expertise and knowledge of serving the industry for the last 17 years. Since many of their staff came up through youth and collegiate sailing, supporting ICSA is an honor and remains true to their roots. For all gear, boats, or parts-related questions, their team can be reached via their web store at westcoastsailing.net. Thank you to both of our sponsors for making all this possible for us. It's great. So checking in, we haven't missed too much since our break. Uh, we had that Tulane Dartmouth barn burner. Uh, we just caught the end of the Yale Roger Williams race, excuse me, Hobart race, and just finishing now, actually, the College of Charleston Cougars and Santa Barbara. I believe Santa Barbara actually might have taken that one with a 1-2 over the Cougs. That's what it looks like. We see that Roger, most of the leaderboard has not changed significantly. We still see Roger Williams going in undefeated with Yale trailing them in second place. Yeah, let's see if we can't tune in on those boats going downwind. Boats number one, two, and three, the red boats against St. Mary's in 10, 11, 12. That's Penn in 1, 2, 3, excuse me. And uh, these are one of those teams, uh, the Red Boats with, uh, with the solid tips on top going downwind. There they are. Just making their way to mark number three. Penn is certainly one of those teams that we've had our eyeball on, sitting at 6 and 7 sitting at six and seven right now in ninth place on the outside looking in. This is these boats right here. This is Harvard and Boston College, Harvard in four, five, six, and Boston College in 13, 14, 15. Two teams, Boston College I think is on the inside, but Harvard is certainly sitting right there at seven and six as well, currently in seventh overall. Here, one, two, and three, perfect. Right here around Leward Mark, number three. One, two, looks like a one, two right now for Penn over St. Mary's. And Penn in that win, just need to keep winning races. That's the only thing they can really count on right now as they seem to be sailing away, seem to be sailing away right now from uh, the boats in Mark three as they we see them now just on our screens. One, boats number three and one around and 10, 11, 12 in hot pursuit. So we seen a couple of these one, two, six has broken up over the course of the day, Julia, but Julia, Gloria, <laughs> wow, <laughs> my bad. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but right now it looks like Penn is, Penn, <laughs> Penn is in a, uh, in a, in a pretty comfortable position. That would move a win here would be huge, putting them to seven and seven, even overall in the day with one race remaining in the round for them. Uh, they just need to keep winning for, might be out of their hands at this point, but they just need to keep winning races and uh, hope, you know, another team. Their huge race coming up next for them against Harvard 
And uh, those are two teams that could be on the outside looking in as we just saw Harvard squaring off against Boston College. Boston College sitting in fifth overall right now, nine and four. Yep, and it's uh, worthy to mention that actually we made a slight mistake earlier on. The Seahawks have won five of the team race national championships, and their last one happened to be in 2010, not just 2007. 20, that's right. They did win in. They did win in they Madison. Did, yep, that's right. So the last one was 2010. You know, so worth worth mentioning that. Thank you to Adam Warblow to correcting me on that. Yeah, one. I'll, I'll be sure to reprimand uh, our stats and research department. <laughs> But, yeah, it's looking a little bit tight here. Looks like 12 may or may not still have a chance at getting maybe a bit of about three UPenn. But even then, I'm not sure it'll bring them up the leaderboard as much as we'd love it to. Yeah, Penn just kind of setting up. It has gotten a little bit lighter, as Absolutely. we were saying, than it was, you know, about, about an hour or so ago. I I think the breeze might have clicked a little bit farther right based off of kind of what way the flags are attempting to blow. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but it looks like UPenn here might have a shot one, two. And the light stuff, I mean, it's it, it gets a lot harder to close these gaps, especially mm -hmm. on the upwinds. And UPenn looks like they're doing a pretty good job of keeping boat 12, the Sa furthest advanced St. Mary's boat, within their coverage zone. Let's see if we can't find uh, around the leeward mark. Check in on that Harvard Boston College race. Harvard in the four, five, six boats. Boston College in 13, 14, 15. We were we had our we were on them at the start of this race, at the start of their race. Excuse me, but curious to see how Harvard squares off against Boston College. Harvard again as we're coming down on the wire. One of those teams that just needs to keep win win now mode. And it looks like they're. Yeah, so it looks like an easy one, two there for Penn and uh, over St. Mary's. So checking in on this uh, Boston College Harvard race. Solid green boat. Solid green boat. Not Making their way downwind right now. Just give us a second here. We're just going to pan right on over to them. That was uh, that was Yale and Tufts chatting pre-race for them, but always nice to have a little bit of banter in yeah, between races. Keeps it keeps it simple. Here they are coming into our screen now. Boats there number four, five, six for Harvard. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Boston College. Trying Looks to like see what the combination is. Harvard might be a one, one three, three here. Maybe a one, one three, two. Four. Looks like uh, that Harvard boat five is coming up around the outside of this mark. So. We see a BC boat trying to put in a little bit of a gap here to slow down the race, give her teammates some time to catch up. But as of right now, it looks like Harvard's in a 1-3-4, which is pretty, pretty good combo here for them. Boat 13 made a big maneuver earlier to try to slow down 5, but she looked like she slowed down just a little bit. And she's owning the zone, not letting anybody get in there. This is a great shot, all six boats right here <laughs> within, within about four boat lengths of each other. Four is trying to slow her down just a little bit. If his teammates stayed in that 3-4, this would have advanced them into a 1-2. They could have been rounding Mark 4 in a 1-2-3. Yeah, but we, it just so light down there. We see some skippers sitting inside their boats, no crews on the rail as uh, 13 and 14. Or four is taking up boat number 13. 14 is kind of just hanging on there for, uh, for dear life. They are coming up to Mark 4, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's Mark 4 for sure. 4 doing everything they can to keep 13 up there while their teammates try to get a little more solid. They were rounding in, they ran in a 1-3-5, I believe. But they're they're going so far from the mark, I'm surprised that 13. <laughs> yeah, they got a the big got dial down. Out <laughs> yeah. so far out. I mean, I'm surprised that she didn't try to do something earlier to try and get out of there. Yeah, At that little, point, she might as well have tacked little, around. A little self-inflicted. I, I, yeah. I think I agree with you there. Then 14 now just has to try to stay alive to try to get a chunk of a boat, but boat number 5 flops over to tack on to 15. And, uh, Seeing a hail being protested here. I'm curious to see what it's for and who may be getting a flag. But great job to boat four from Harvard. I mean, they, they did everything they could. Their te he saw his teammates were in a 3-4, and he see, he all, all he had to do was play back on yeah. that one boat and just advance his teammates. Yeah, right. We're seeing two boats flop back over. That's boat number four, excuse me, boat number five and boat number 
14 for Harvard. Excuse me, Boston College. Again, Harvard in the single-digit boats, 4, 5, 6. Boston College in the double digits, 13, 14, 15. Right, we're just going to want, once again, it's it's uh, anybody's game on this final upwind. So long as Harvard keeps this 1-2 and balances it well enough, they should be able to clinch onto the win here. But keep in mind that it's going to get tough because if you're looking at it, it looks like BC splitting up the 1-2 here, taking them out to each side. So we'll see we'll see what happens. They might get one leverage out to one side more than the other. And so we're going to see... You know, this BC boat could be coming back on starboard and take that uh, Harvard, too. Yeah, just out of our frame is two two boats that are on starboard, one BC boat, one Harvard boat. Can't quite identify their sail numbers. Looks like 15 and 6 there. Just on the left, we're seeing boat number 14 either attempting to jibe out from that pin or a spin attempt, but it looks like they're just jibing out. And all of a sudden, those two boats, 15 and 6, that were kind of sailing up there on their own are just now cracking down and, and joining the uh, joining the party. That is for sure. And Harvard had a good, pretty good reaction there coming back down on that boat, even though they did jibe out. We're seeing a big slow here from 15 on to 6. Very tight on the main. You know, what tends to happen, though, sometimes in, in these, you know, four boat wrapped up two on two, just hurting each other, that boat, that pair that was deep and last, somehow springs free, gets unbalanced. Pels. We were talking about balancing earlier, and uh, all of a sudden these boats that you thought were an afterthought, uh, are certainly right back in the mix. We're seeing, let's look at boat number five, just trucking right along. They have the most boat speed right there out boat of anybody on the race course. Exactly. Boat four had a big duck there. It looks like they had contact. Yeah. Boat four is spinning now. So the, and it's it's going to be a tough spin here. It, they look like they're pretty dead stopped there. They're struggling to even get that one tack in. So that, that looks yes. like it's going to be a brutal, brutal spin. Yeah, it might be a two, three, four, four. The Eagles right now with boat number six is kind of the last, uh, Last shot, can't quite see how six is on boat 14. Tacking back, a little bit of a slow tack there by boat number six, and all of a sudden Boston College is two, three, four here. A little bit of an exhale there from, from Greg Wilkinson, and unless boat number five can pull some hero mode stuff, which they're trying to do, but it's not gonna be enough. Boat 15 skates across with the one, and it looks like a guaranteed one, three, four, if not a, one, a, one, a play one something for the Eagles. A right. big win for them. I believe that vaults them, confirmed clinching into the top eight, and all of a sudden Harvard, we said the T word earlier, a bit of a tailspin for them this afternoon. Their next race against Penn is going to be massive. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this may affect well, hold the hold 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 We did see boat number 15 spinning there for Boston College, and uh -oh. boat number 13 going back too. Hold on. <laughs> let's We're keep, surprised. Let's, let's keep our eyes on that finish line if we can. It looks like there's those, those two boats... Wow. Wow. I didn't see or hear any whistles, but Harvard That's might, might have won that race. <laughs> well, we will confirm that with you when we can. Once again, we have another surprise right there at the finish. <laughs> hearing, hearing some of the coaches' peanut gallery down, yep. <laughs> down the balcony from us, I think they're just as confused as we yes. are. But uh, we'll try to figure out what, what, what the deal <laughs> is when we can. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and take a look here. Let's update the standings and see if if the finish boat was even able to get that finish here. Nothing yet. They're just through the race that we just saw prior pen against St. Mary. So we will be refreshing, we'll be mashing that refresh button. I'm just excited as these coaches right now to see what just happened there from the scoring. Yeah, there's a lot of confusion here on shore. You can hear a lot of people saying, looks like it was, well, here we go. It yeah. was Harvard with a 1-3-4 beating the BC Eagles. They finished in a 2-5-6. Wow. So it looks like they had to go back and spin for something. I'm, I'm not wow. sure what it was, but... That was a – that's one of those where everybody crosses the finish line and next thing you know, a whistle is blown, a flag is thrown, and uh, people are going back. So how's this for a setup? That win was monu monumental for the Harvard Crimson. So they're now sitting at si 8 and 6. Penn, sitting right behind them in ninth on the outside looking in, is at 7 and 7. Their last race of the regatta, both is against each other head-to-head. -head. So the winner of that would own the tiebreaker – 
if Penn wins, they'll both be eight and seven, and Penn would win the tiebreaker. If Harvard wins, Penn is eliminated. So that is certainly a race that we're going to be uh, tuning into here. It's going to come up relatively quickly. Race 113 is that last race we saw the finish up was 107. So those teams are making their way back to the dock. Right, and, you know, and I don't know if you mentioned this. I might have just missed this, but Dartmouth still has a shot here as well. So Dartmouth is absolutely. six and seven. They've got Their next race is going to be against the Badgers. Against the Badgers, absolutely. And the finish here, that was Georgetown in seven, eight, nine. Roger Williams still undefeated at six in both 16, 17, 18. Amanda must be thrilled. I mean, they're putting in a nice little cushion for themselves going but into the But let's see here. Top. It looks like... Ro depending on how boat nine hangs on, the Hoyas might have a one-two right now. I can't quite see their third boat, and they are. It looks like the Hoyas are going to give a one-two, handing the Hawks their first loss of the event. Wow. I spoke way too well, soon. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Huge win there for the Hoyas, for my Callahan wow. squad. And uh, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the Hawks do not look as beatable as they once did. Wow. That evens things up. That brings them to 13-1. and one. Yale, Yale's at 12-1. and one. Stanford 11-3. And, and Georgetown at 11-3. and three. That's your top four av as a result of that race. You and know, as a, as a team that's been undefeated up until this exact point in time, you know, I'm, I can only imagine they're going to be pretty upset about this loss just now. Y yes and no. I, I, you know, you always want to be perfect. You want to win every race because it all carries over, and you want to give yourself as much room – uh, you know, as much cushion as possible as, right. as the regatta advances and only gets harder. Uh, but, um, but you know, it's so, sometimes it, it's nice to lose a race. It's like, hey guys, yeah, we're not we're not perfect. Yeah, exactly. You can't want you don't want to get too complacent. You you need, you know, splash the cold water on your face a little bit, both literally and figuratively, when it's 90 degrees and humid out there. And yeah. uh, that 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 you know, that's a big loss. That might it might come back to a tiebreak scenario down the line, and and you know it's it's a team you you hope you beat, you hope you win every race, but I, you know, I think it's all right. You don't. I think it's okay to lose like a race. Yeah, yeah, it's all right, but so long as you keep that mentality yes. right, you know. So that that's that's what I was going to bring it all back to is going undefeated. You know, you're you're going into every race feeling pretty damn good, you know, and you lose a race after going undefeated for so long. It's it's a matter of are you going to be able to brush this one off? Right. So right. One more race in the round for uh, for the Hawks against uh, – they got one more against Hobart. But uh, let's see. Checking in upwind, we have Dartmouth in 1, 2, 3. Yale – or excuse me, Wisconsin in boats 10, 11, 12. Dartmouth on the outside looking in. Wisco still over on the week so far. So might, might they be hungry? The Badgers might be hungry, scraping away for their first win. But a win here for Dartmouth would certainly make them happy as they're right at the chopping block right now, sitting at 6 and 7 on the outside looking in. But a win here would be uh, huge for them as their as their last race of the regatta of the of the round is going to be against Yale, and that will not be a cakewalk. But as we've seen, these these top four teams are obviously beatable. Right, absolutely. Yeah, I could not have said it better myself. I mean, we so. just we just saw Harvard knock off Boston College. We just saw Georgetown knock off Rogers. So it's it's all up in the air, and and this is the part of the day when teams can kind of find their rhythm and get hot. Dartmouth has been in a little bit of a slump since that last race that they lost to Tulane, but they're coming back strong. And and you know they, a big win here against Wisconsin could get their get all the good juju flowing and you know set it up nicely for them uh, against Yale. That's that's absolutely right. I've got to say, are any of these teams using some of this New Orleans voodoo to put oh, themselves in advance? I don't know, know about that. <laughs> There's plenty of that around <laughs> here. <laughs> Alrighty. So yeah, it looks like Dartmouth skates through easy with the one, two, three there against the Badgers. So big win, big momentum build potentially for the big green as they advance to seven and seven on the week. But there is certainly a clear cut line behind them at this point. Dartmouth is seven and seven. The next closest team is Santa Barbara sitting at four and nine. So uh any between between Navy at eight and five, Harvard at eight and six. Tulane at seven and six, Penn at seven and seven, and Dartmouth at now seven and seven as well. Um, that that's 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 your chopping block right there. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think the most exciting races are going to be, without a doubt, the people people in that red line. Mm -hmm. You know, the, those are the people we're looking out for now, and uh, these are going to be the most exciting races right there. I don't see any ties other than third and fourth for Georgetown and Stanford. Who are tied in third at the moment, but other than that, 
we're we're gonna see a few more ties after these next few races. Yeah, and it, it's gonna make all the difference. Dartmouth lost to Penn on that tiebreaker. They lost to Tulane on that tiebreaker. Right. And they lost to Harvard on that tiebreaker. So certainly, uh, you know, that's not that's not the, that's not what you're hoping for at all. But uh, let's take a look here. We've got Yale on the screen right now. Yeah, that's. They're in four, five, six against Tufts and 13, 14, 15. Yeah, Dartmouth had dropped their last three races prior to that win there against the Badgers. So, you know, just trying to scrap for what they can at this point and uh, just, you know, one more big race left against the uh, the Yale Bulldogs. Right, and it looks like Yale is winning this race in a 1-2 at the moment. So looking at the standings, that should, that should bring them tied with Roger Williams for first. Just like that. Roger, like Roger was running away with this thing undefeated, but just like that. The Bulldogs, they run fast. Can't hide. Am I hearing some drones flying yeah, there? I'm seeing a drone flying right Look now. Look at that. That's, that's either a large bug that we have not seen <laughs> yeah. in New Orleans yet, or that's a drone. I'm hoping you know. it's a drone. I hear the buzz kind of freak out a little bit, but uh, that is definitely a drone. I wouldn't even be surprised if it was a bug. That'd be terrifying. <laughs> I'd be on the next flight out of here. <laughs> so it looks like Yale is pretty comfortable right now against, against the Jumbos. That is correct. Let's take a look at the forecast right now. Why not? Right now, you know, it's see, it's definitely up and down. It's it's lightened up a little bit um, but from it, the breeze we had earlier, but it's 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 staying. It, it it's doesn't steady look like it's if going anywhere. It's steady and it's consistent across the race course. Based off where we're sitting, just looking out there, and it's it's you know, it's just there's no like you know, it doesn't look very obvious. Like there's not it's not patchy at all. It's just right. a consistent like one one color across the across the entire water. Exactly. It doesn't look like yeah. There's it doesn't look like there's many major puffs to look out for it doesn't even look like it's necessarily that shifty i feel like we would normally in in different different places like st mary's is pretty shifty the charles river and so on there's usually these huge major shifts that come in that completely change the race mm -hmm. but here we're seeing a lot more of just like <laughs> there's boat handling mistakes majorly happening that that are caught mm -hmm. like you know bringing some of these teams back, back in this, these races. Right, and we're seeing just off the starting line, uh, we have Navy in 7, 8, 9, and UCSB in 16, 17, 18. The Blue Boats, Santa Barbara just beat the Charleston Cougars uh, for their fourth win of the week, and Navy on the inside looking out, and I think a win here might just put them over the edge, but a loss, uh, the Gauchos certainly in a, in a position to play spoiler. Right for the for the defending national champions, but a win here for Navy would would uh, would protect them and keep them in with nine at nine and six. I think we could come at nine and five. Excuse me, I think we could comfortably say that they are that they would be through as their last race is against St. Mary's. St. Mary's could play spoiler there too if 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 Navy seems to drop this one. But right now off the line, uh, they seem to be in an okay position, a little bit vulnerable off to the left side. That boat number nine is unprotected, but. Uh, that's what that looks like. They got one pair at least right here. Yep, <laughs> Seventeen's yep. got a pin on seven. Yep, yep. But it looks like seven's kind of punching out right now. Obviously, we're too far away to tell. But you know, it's like we were saying earlier, the windward boat. That's that that can be a tough one in these light conditions, especially in a little bit of chop. Yeah. yeah I was saying earlier, Santa Barbara. This is kind of their this is kind of their bread and butter situation. Just light air, CFJ sailing. Oh and, yeah. And uh, this is this is what a lot of those sailors are used to. Southern California team, and uh, they could actually be excelling right now in in this sort of conditions. Right. And we're and we're actually kind of seeing that as seven is slowly poking through on boat seventeen. Absolutely. Excuse me, seventeen is Santa Barbara, single digits are Navy. So curious to see how seventeen tacked off first there on boat seven. If they're going to be a little bit punched out, maybe as uh, as they approach, as they approach the weather mark. Looks like Yale did get that one two six against Tufts. That finished in a three four five. So like you were saying, Saint, we've got St. Mary's versus Charleston coming up, and we've got a U Penn versus Harvard, which would be a crucial one for U Penn, mm -hmm. uh, Georgetown, and, and Harvard. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Georgetown v Tulane, 
Stanford v. Badgers, Roger Williams v. Hobart, Yale v. Dartmouth, Boston v. Santa Barbara, Navy versus Seahawks, and uh, Tufts versus Tulane. Yeah, so the, uh, the, the magnitude of these remaining races is, is palpable up here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I feel like maybe race 112, St. Mary's versus Charleston, two of our two alma mater. Uh, yeah. This we, two, <laughs> should are we placing a, bets? Make a, little, make a little wager or something? Yeah. I'm, I, hey, I'm, I'm here for it. We can I'm figure that out. Um, I, as you know, I have to go with the Seahawks. Always. I'd hope so. Always. <laughs> I'd be a little alarmed if you didn't. I, yeah, think, yeah, I, think, yeah. I think your former coaches down there would be a little upset with you yeah. if that was the case. Yeah. Let me ask Warblow if he wants to give me <laughs> money to wager. <laughs> See how much. Oh, come on, you have a you have a job. You can you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm trying to up the stakes here. You okay, see what I mean? Okay. Okay. <laughs> see a hand up from the Naval Academy boat nine. Curious to see where that flag's gonna go. Another one up from 16. Let's see an umpire call. Red flag from the umpires. I'm curious. Boat 16 uh, is doing boat 16, 720. for uh, 720 for boat 16 right now. Getting a little sloppy out there again. Oh, really brutal. light, lumpy stuff. It seems not super <laughs> lumpy, I guess, but but just ugh. That was that, that just was painful. Tough. Boat number eight, who was pretty deep in the six, is all of a sudden gonna vault themselves back into this race by just sailing on, and all of yep. a sudden a one two a one two five for the midshipmen. Gosh, and like just even watching these seven twenties right now. I mean, they they have moved back so much, yeah. and even the sails are just struggling to get filled here. This is this is painful. Not terrible distance here between, uh, and they're going for another spin. Maybe they hit. Maybe they hit the mark on their on their 720. That's 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 going to be a tough one to come back from. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Looks like Navy. Uh, they must have put in a little bit of a gap here because they look quite advanced here on the downwind. On the gauchos. Am I pronouncing that right? You're pronouncing the word gaucho correctly. Gaucho. That's an interesting one. Yeah, it's Spanish for cowboy. Ah, yes. Well, it's, I guess, upon upon further, it's like a it's like a Spanish. I don't know. It's like a. <laughs> Let's see. It's it's defined on Wikipedia as a gaucho is a skilled horseman reputed to be brave and unruly. The figure of the gaucho is a folk symbol in Argentina, Uruguay. Rio Grande do Sol in Brazil, in the south of the Chilean Patagonia. Wow! Never been to Pat. I've I've had a roommate of mine way back when did, did like a like a two week backpacking trip to Patagonia, and he said it was just gorgeous. I can imagine. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, that's definitely on uh, my bucket list of places to go. So, yeah, you ever been to St. Mary's? I, 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 I from a sailing capacity, I went a couple times, and then I went once on uh, on my own accord. Wow. Yeah. I, uh, was I have never my, heard of anybody doing my, that. My senior year, well, well, you've never met anybody as brave and me <laughs> as brave <laughs> as myself and, and my uh, at the time Charleston uh, teammates. We we decided it was uh, Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, and we we decided to ship it up there for for a weekend of. Uh, Everyone needs their f everyone needs a county experience, you know. One hundred percent. And that was ours, and, and we had some fun. It's unmatchable. It's unmatchable. I'll tell you that much. There's no place like the county. That's a good way to put it. There's literally no <laughs> place like it. <laughs> literally. <laughs> Quite unique. Looks like Navy might have secured this one two here. Might even have a one two three if I'm seeing this correctly. If eight has a piece of eighteen, which they do not, you might have a one. Two, four. You see the crews are vigorously yeah, bailing it's here. It's getting pretty light out there. You don't want that. In no, this I other race, I think we can see uh, St. Mary's v. Charleston. This is our race. Yeah, this is us. This is us. <laughs> Particularly just, I feel like at this point in the round two, you, there's, there's, what, six seven, eight more races that they need to finish to complete this round, and, and the PRO is, is must just be just wanting this breeze to hold on for just another <laughs> another 40 minutes or so, however long, maybe, maybe a little more than that. But, uh, you know, they just they just really want to finish this round, Robin, and then they can always, you know, reassess format and how it's all going to go from there. But it has been up and down. It's in a light phase right now, but there's no reason it couldn't just pick back up a tiny bit in the next uh, in the next hour or so. So looking at the St. Mary's Charleston race, looks like we yeah, 
Cougars are in 10, 11, 12. Yep. St. Mary's in 1, 2, 3. Looks like we have, looks like St. Mary's might have two pairs here. It's a little tough seeing on one if they have a piece of any of your players. We have uh, St. Mary's in boat three may be in f in the one in this race. If that's the case, I'm hoping we get a play four. Yeah, it looks like, I don't know, boat number 10, I mean, every boat looks down speed. They look, right yeah, that, there's no doubt about that. Ten's coming back right now, so curious to see how they converge with the rest of the fleet, getting across their two teammates in 11 and 12. I hope they get across their teammates in 11 and 12. It just yeah, looks so looks, this light looks out pretty there. Light. I'm seeing St. Mary's around Mark 1 here. Yeah, it looks like, Oof, it looks like it'll be a 2-3-4 for the Cougars around Mark 1. And, you know, I got to say, in this heat, it's so easy in the heat to get so quickly aggravated. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't know about you, but for me in particular, it's like when, I, when I'm getting hot, I'm getting heated, right? So it's going to be a total battle to see who's going to be able to maintain their cool this whole the rest of the regatta yeah let it, i mean we've been we've been we've been saying that all day that's kind of a narrative just like you know the mental aspect of team racing to everything that happens on the water you know you you know the plays you know all of that but how you compose yourself and how you bounce back from a tough loss or how you you know get into a heated situation that gets an umpire involved and, and, and just how you keep your cool about yourself yeah we're metaphorically and literally saying that yeah. it will be to your disadvantage to be a hot head yes. out here yes Cougars in a two, three, four around mark, around mark one, as the third St. Mary's boat in boat number one is just now getting their way around. Don't rub it in too much. All right, we I'm get not rubbing it. We get this it. Is a long you, race. You former Cougar. This is a, lo this is a <laughs> long race. <laughs> They're both relatively fast animals, you know. Seahawks can fly pretty, pretty fast, but hey, those Cougars can, they run can run too. They sure can. Coming in right now to the finish, these are our Navy boats in seven and nine. You can really just see how. <laughs> How light it is out there on the uh, on old Lake Poncher train. Yeah, skippers are sitting in. Crews are probably <laughs> maxed to, to leeward here. Certainly putting the distance on the Gauchos behind them, and that's going to be a big win for Navy, I believe, clinching themselves into that top eight gold round for the defending uh, national champions. Yep. Their last race is going to be against St. Mary's, but looking at their record, they're about to go 9-5. and five. And that is definitely clinching the record here. Let's see if that, uh, I don't, I think they're all, uh, looks like our Charleston St. Mary's race is the only active race on the race course right now. They're either gonna try to wait for some, some breeze or they're moving the course because we're, we're sitting on the next race, that Penn Harvard race, the next race off that starting line, that's gonna have a lot on the line. Again, reminding you on that one, if Harvard wins, they're in to the next round. Right. Well, not guaranteed, but they're all but in. Penn would fall to 7 and 8. Harvard would advance to 9 and 6. You know what's really hurting me right now is seeing these battens. For a little Ooh. bit, I saw the un inverted battens. I, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> oh, part of me is hurting a little bit. Yeah, that's yeah, a little on boats number 1 and boat number yeah. 10 there. Well, at least it's one of each of ours, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> so what, what, what would you say your best tip is? Or a uh, trick would be to making sure that these battens stay popped. I mean, I mean, when you're jiving, make sure you're jiving with authority and purpose. That's make true. sure that that mane's whipping across. Right. But when it's so light, I kind of un almost understand these skippers not wanting to like try and go try crazy. And try and shake. And if yeah. the umpires are watching for pumping or anything like that, you don't want anything to be construed as such. Absolutely. But uh, the Cougars just kind of oh boat number three. I, boat number three was not in the picture, so the Cougars are still. Two, three, four, unless, unless boat number one here is in front of 11. Which it may be so, and even if she even if she wasn't, she just jived in a pretty good spot to yeah. possibly be covering 11 here. Never seen boat number two kind of lurking there on boat number 11. Might almost be getting overlap. And you know, you g in this light air stuff, if somebody's covering you, this is going to be pretty pretty brutal. That's a great shot right there with the windsock. <laughs> <laughs> just to really <laughs> emphasize the... Uh, what the conditions are like out there <laughs> on the water. That's a little that's a little poetic. It's it's looking a little limp right so now. So there's boat number three for St. Mary's, slowing down, getting themselves back in the race, but are they gonna have an, an ability to get themselves back up to speed? Yeah, that's always a tough one. 
you can't do any crazy yeah. big maneuvers you in this light stuff because if you stop yourself, then you right. you take you, yourself you can, out of the race. You can over team race and do way too much when it's light like this. Let's see this roll. I mean, this this looks. I'm seeing mains kind of flapping yeah. back and forth. It's hard to even tell here what's going on. Let's see what happens. And did St. Mary's possibly pull this off? No, I think boat number <laughs> one still likes and looks like they're deep six, and boat number two is just, so still two I'm three four for up. the still two three four for the Cougs. Yeah, that's true. I I was hopeful a little uh, bit there. That's your optimism. I don't want to lose my money here in the wagers. <laughs> I'm seeing a hand up from one though. Was that an umpire protest or just the in the act of pulling in the main sheet? Sometimes your hand goes above your head. We're about to know. find out, I guess. Yeah. Let's see. I'm possibly seeing an umpire pulling flag. Boat number three is starting to do a little bit of wiggling to uh, slow their boat down, just to try to yeah, wreak, a, wreak a little havoc here. And it's tough because you're seeing them use the technique of over trimming their main, mm -hmm. but in this light stuff, look at that. That's you. <laughs> Like that's that's so tough because in the light stuff, over trimming your main like that absolutely kills your boat speed. Yeah. It kills your boat speed more than it kills the the other team's boat speeds. So it. I mean, one one. It looks Charleston like ten boat, just pumped out. Yeah, ten ten popped through, and it's just a question of. I mean, three. C I mean, they're certainly hurting eleven right now, but they don't seem to be doing too much in the terms of getting their teammates in boats number one and two out of right. uh, five six. And I hope that they keep their head looking forward on uh, boat ten as well, unless. I don't know if I'm seeing this right, unless they were ahead of ten this whole time. No, I think ten. I think ten was ahead. It's just a little hard to tell. We're gonna see a big maneuver. I, I think three. Oh. Ooh, a little jive on a starboard. <sighs> yeah, they're gonna jive behind boat number ten. They did not have room, right. so we'll see. Is twelve gonna try to? Oh man, this is Ooh, this is. Ooh, that was that was sloppy aggression. That looked like yeah. couldn't quite see what side what what board that boat number three was on. Maybe a little bit of contact there between teammates on the main sail. Oh, sorry, that was 11, not number one. But, Saint, I mean, we'll see what happens with 12 here. I'm curious if there are any protests hailed here. Now it seems like three might have. Ooh. Can't quite see what's happening there with boat number 12 and three. That's brutal. I mean, you can watch this boat and almost see. It looks like they're drifting backwards, possibly hit the mark I'm here. shocked that there was no contact there and between any of those boats in that situation. I'm just as surprised as you are. But if there wasn't, this could be yeah, in right. the favor but, of but St. Mary's. Totally, but then all of a sudden, if 11 can get their boats rolling, all of a sudden, remember Charleston snuck through, stole the one there, so yeah, you can see him in boat 10, and they could they could try to go play play one here if they can, but 100%. Oh man, it just looks so light out there. It does look quite brutal. Yeah, I mean, what we're going to be wanting to see from St. Mary's here is a, pl a playback. you got to make sure that boat two is ahead of 11 here. Because ele look, 11's now even coming back on starboard. Boat one's going to keep wanting to push 10 forward, but the other two Seahawks are going to want to make sure that they're they're actually ahead of Charleston. We could uh, we could work on our golf commentating voices and this really light stuff. Yes, of Gloria, course. Gloria, very light out there on the water on the race course as uh, competitors are approaching the finish line. You're just gonna want to roll tack really nice and easy. Just have to talk very very softly. Yep. Is there gonna be a hole in one? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the breeze is slightly picking up. They look. We got a little yeah. bit more skippers on the they're rails. They're moving a little bit, but boat 11 is. <laughs> stuck. They're stuck. They're so stuck. They're actually. They're bo that boat's actually stopped. Yeah. Boat yeah, number 11. That's <laughs> that's not ideal. A little bit brutal for a hot second there. I felt like I was doing some ASMR or something. Well, if I don't even know what boat number 11. I don't know, but that is so brutal to watch. Yeah. I'm sorry, Cougars. Yeah, not ideal as it looks like. Uh, well, they're still holding but on. The race, yeah, the race is not over. I'm seeing, Cougs you know. still have the one. They do. They do. Oh, you know what? That boat number 11 is, is an FJ. That's not a boat that's racing in our so race. Oh, gosh. Oh. Yeah, boat 11 is being crossed by boat number two right now. So it's that a 1-5-6 one, one for the Cougars at the moment. I you can understand our confusion, though, at home. Yeah. That looked really bad for a minute. 
Oh, yeah. That's that's good. All right. So boat 10 for the Cougars still in the one. Running out of room, they got about maybe, I don't know, 30 boat lengths to the finish at this point. It's all about I want to I wanna be seeing good, aggressive roll tacks out there because that can be – the biggest difference out there. Yeah, no sloppy tax. No, not at all. You cannot afford it out here. But and you'll watch you'll watch as some people that have a strong roll tack will actually propel forward. I mean yesterday when I watched a good roll tack out there, I watched a boat go from all the way leeward, essentially rolling a boat that mm -hmm. was far ahead of them and that was windward of them. So it, it's a matter of who the boat handling, the athleticism, it's all gonna show out here today. Right. right? It, like all the time that people put into the gym and how aggressive they're willing to get out there on the boat on a light air day today, it's going to show. Right, and and I don't know if any of these boats are even laying the pin right now. They're all pinching, but I can't quite tell that ley line. Boat 10 is still a tiny bit bow out, but... That could be brutal for two. Can't quite tell if they're, if they're laying the mark or not. It looks tight here. But that might it looks not like it matter. Might be. So one, might be a one, two, four St. Mary's. Assuming any of these boats are actually laying the finish line, Big Same shot up from boat number 10, and they're all through. That's a 1-2, I believe, for St. Mary's. If not, <laughs> three of the top four boats are St. Mary's. And Throttle depending down on how that, how they saw that, how that uh, bow go through for boat number 10. So that's a win for St. Mary's. So where's my money, I'll, Brooks? I'll, I'll, I'll owe you. I'll Venmo you. Yeah, yeah. It's a good race for the Hawks. It's a good way for them to kind of end up their day. They know that they weren't going to be up there moving on to the top eight, but – you know, it's all about finishing on a good note. They've got one more race to be had. It's going to be against the Naval Academy, but, you know, it's every race is a win, and especially with them missing one of their top players, this is a win for them, you know? Yeah, it looks like uh, the PRO is a little hard to find win right now. There's no other races going on on the race course. So let's see if we can't uh, in a minute here get the, uh, get, you, get the results up, the current standings to see where we are at the – just a couple second, just a couple races left in this first round, Robin. I got to shake her hand. Nice race. Hey, hey, put her there. <laughs> put her there. <laughs> All righty. Yeah, I do not see any races starting at the moment, but I am feeling a little bit of breeze yeah, on my I, face I, right I now. Yeah, I'm feeling more than we did about 15 minutes ago <laughs> yeah. when those Charleston boats and St. Mary's boats were, uh, for lack of a better word, limping up the final beat. Oof, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm s I'm feeling a little bit of something. So what was your favorite thing to do at Charleston other than sailing? That's too that's too that's too easy of an answer. That's a loaded question. Uh I don't know, just have you ever if you've ever been to Charleston you you'll know it is it is a fantastic slice of uh fantastic slice of the country. It's just a phenomenal city top to bottom, phenomenal foods, restaurants, bars, uh just uh just overall great experience. The beach is right there, so we'd shoot out there to old uh, Sullivan's Island sometimes folly beach and uh just hanging on the beach for the day isn't that lovely yeah that's pretty neat and then uh became a little fun after after i graduated i stayed there for a couple years uh lived with uh sammy stokes shout out sammy and Allie, who are getting married later this summer if you guys are Look listening at that. congratulations Look at uh that. we uh sammy and i lived together and just became a game of you know what, what are the fun fun good restaurants that the tourists don't know about so you know you avoid all the all the tourist trap type spots and just you know biking around town and finding your little spots that you enjoyed it's a really special spot yeah of course that'll do it yeah so bike would be your uh, best form of transportation around yes, those parts yes that checks out that checks out we got to say St. Mary's we were pretty lucky that we had such a nice boathouse mm -hmm. the moment it got over let's say 65 degrees all of campus is on the docks where all our boats are. Yeah, and right. Everybody's just out there with their swimsuits, their tubes, 
I had a great river raft tube my senior year. I mean, the whole school comes down there, right? The Pretty whole much? school. Yeah. The whole school. I had a double seater with a little cooler in the wow. middle. Wow. That's all you need on the there river. There you go. You know, and you're just sitting out there getting a nice tan on. There you go. And uh, when classes were on Zoom because <laughs> of COVID, you could do class at the docks. You, you really tested the uh, the bandwidth of the Wi-Fi oh, at, the, absolutely. at the boathouse? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, hearing some horns down there, they Doesn't might try matter. to might try to bang off the rest of this uh, this round robin. How many more races do we eight, have here? Eight races to go. The first one being this Penn Harvard race that we have been salivating over. Oh yeah, I, it's so close I can taste it. <laughs> I mean, let me uh, let's refresh the scores so we can just get the latest and greatest. So, coming into this race, this is this is the last race for Harvard. Penn will have. This is the last race for Penn too, so this is a must-win for Penn. That will if, that if, Penn, if Penn wins, that will certainly shake up what the uh, what this what this scoreboard might look like because a lot of tiebreakers will get involved and that could get that could get messy. There could be could potentially be a four-way tie just you based off right of how, how the records are shaken out between Dartmouth, Penn, Tulane, and Harvard. That is right. So I think we just heard some horns going off. So they're about just underway in their three-minute sequence. Penn is going to be in the orange four, five, six boats. Harvard is going to be in 13, 14, 15. And even the next race after the UPenn and Harvard is going to be a big one. Georgetown and Tulane. So got to keep our eyes open for that one. Dartmouth is also going to have a tough one against Yale. So we'll see how that one plays out to be. As you've seen, like everybody's got a shot at this. All the teams are strong. Still looks really light out there. Right? Yeah, <laughs> not, yeah. not envying any of these teams Absolutely out not. there, but but they're doing the best they can with what they can, and you need to you need to keep racing. And this is this is saleable. It's light, but it's definitely saleable. That's true. Even if you're sitting slightly more tucked into the boat, you're still moving. I'm just trying to think if we've seen anybody go uh, on a wing at all today. Maybe we, we saw a couple when it, that you know that brief. 30-minute period, it seemed, about a couple hours ago when the velocity was certainly up. But outside of that, I think it's kind of been a uh, bit of a reach fest downwind. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, there's a shot of our uh, of the flagpole to show it's uh, not a whole <laughs> lot we can work with right now. But there is boats moving on the water, and that's what, uh, you know, that's that's what you need. So, again, we have Penn and Harvard just underway here. Again, if Penn wins this race, that's going to throw this leaderboard upside down as they'll be tied with Harvard at 8 and 7. But Penn would lead that tiebreaker. And then there's Tulane getting involved at 7 and 6. Tulane has two races left, looming against big one against Georgetown and the last race of the round against Tufts. That is right. So Tulane has the most races to sail out of all these teams because that's how the, the round robin works. Teams have buys and flights off. Tulane has two races left to sail, whereas Harvard, Penn, and Dartmouth each only have one. So Tulane's kind of the wild card. Tulane could win their last two races here and uh, easily be, get in, or they could somehow force that potential four-way tie at eight and seven. Yeah, that, that is right. So I love seeing the Ivies going up against one another here, UPenn and Harvard. Yeah, right. That's always exhilarating to see. But it looks like UPenn got a pretty good start off the boat. They're, they're, they are shot forward, boat five, if I'm seeing this correctly. I believe the sequence, yep. it, they're, in, they're beyond sequence. The race has started. Yeah, the race is underway, looks, yeah. I don't know how they, they got a little miracle puff and just shot off that line. Everybody else looks like they're moving two times slower than that, that skipper and crew. Yeah, curious to see how they look when they come back, if they – kind of tacked out of necessity or if they just saw something and it looks like everyone else is tacking back so right Penn in the four five six boats Harvard in 13 14 15 the green boats is that a duck from you Penn here that brought them back a little bit in distance it looks like one of the you Penn boats is pretty pretty a little bit slow and a little bit far back boat four that's going to be, we'll see how they pan out to be. I'm not sure where that th third Harvard boat, oh, they're right, both to the right, 15 and 13. This feels to be a little uh, 
we were talking earlier sometimes just like let's fleet race to the weather mark and see what happens and yeah i think no one wants to get caught over team racing with their pants down and all of a sudden <laughs> you're you're just parked on the first beat playing catch up the rest of the way so I, I, th I think the mentality for all these boats out here right now is let's just get to the weather mark right as fast as we can and we can reassess from there right you know it does look a little bit lighter here off the seawall the closer they are to us on the left side of the race course yep that's like kind of the first real breeze Whoa. breeze differential on the race course that we've seen so far right but but th but that's what makes me even more intrigued is that all these boats are heading towards it right so what's the what's the agenda yeah boat 14 was the closest to us tacking off again 14 for harvard harvard in 13 14 15 and 10 in four five six looks like they didn't have the cross on six but they ended up tacking off with them they're definitely of advantage enough on boat four here boat four is looking pretty slow and far back here yeah four is four sailing deeper into that lull six 14 might be getting across six. That's a big duck, or they're just probably going to leave out here in this situation, and they and they will. Yeah, it's starting to look painfully slow yeah. for boat four. They're, they're definitely sailing away from the rest of the fleet, and it doesn't look like they're going into much more pressure there. Yeah, so I'm not I would not sure what the strategy is there. Yeah, they just flop back, and they're already sailing faster than they were on that other board. Exactly. So we're seeing a little bit of a tacking battle between five and 14, but... Looks like 14 is attempting to cross. That's always that's pretty close lee bow here from the looks of it. Yeah, so boat 15, though, for Harvard in the six. Looks like boat four, despite them going wow. super slow, is going to be across them as boat 15 tacks away now. That'll do it. Yeah, it looks like 15 is pretty shot back here now as well. It's anybody's game here. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty condensed mark rounding. I mean, after... That one boat five was pretty shot off the line, but everything right. kind of comes back. Water finds its level, and yep. all of a sudden everything back here, it's going to be a congested mark rounding at mark one. And 14 and five. Let's see if 14 is going to be able to make the mark even after that duck. They're not even going around it. Let's see what move they're going to try to make here to try and advance their teammates. And they seem to be around that mark. And they seem to be comfortable enough with their boat speed and their momentum to fully left their sails yeah. and get around it there. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. I didn't even think they were going to make it. Yeah. Boat 4 and 15, I'm seeing protest hailed here. Yeah, 15 sneaking in there. Looks like they're both on starboard. Maybe 15 might have been taking that's some mark tough. room they were not entitled to. Boat 4 looks absolutely parked. Yeah, you know, and, and that's a tough thing. You, you, you watched him focus completely on hailing that protest and kind of just lost all... Mm -hmm all of his boat speed in doing so. So that just goes to show, you know, you can't get too sidetracked side here. You want to make sure that you're keeping your speed up. All right, boat five, six, four, pen. Looks like boat five is attempting to do a slowdown here. You want to be careful when you're luffing head to win there like that. Slow down tremendously. I'm seeing hails for protests. Either protesting on <laughs> you gotta love it when both both teams are protesting someone. I don't know if it's mark room that they felt that they were entitled to, or fourteen maybe not keeping clear of boat six at the moment. Heard a whistle. Would love to see that flag. Even if one of them has to spin, I'm not sure what they're gonna do it right now. They're probably gonna see it. 14 rounding the mark. Doesn't look like they're rolling into a 720. Or are oh. they? Oh. Tough break for boat 14 at 720, having to spin two penalty circles in this light, light, light stuff. Yeah, this is On brutal. top of having to get out of the way of the entire rest of the fleet. That is not what you wanted to happen there around mark two. So all of a sudden, Harvard, in a keeping it pretty condensed, is now in a one the mm. two three s maybe two three six but m might not even be that yeah but that six is going to turn deep real quick <laughs> as oh they yeah. still have another half of their 720 to do right this is one of those moments where you're kind of hoping for a, a hail mary puff or something yeah this is going to be a tough tough race for them to get their six out of that six yeah 14 is just just now bearing away finishing their 720 they might have one more jibe they have to do actually right uh, no, they started. They started on that board, so they they've completed their 720. But uh, those Harvard boats are going to need to put all their effort into slowing down this race right yeah. now. Like 
their goal is to get these other boats to absolutely park themselves. Yeah. And that's that's all they can do right now. So we're seeing 15 playing back on four. Unfortunately, we're watching 13 sailing ahead here. I'm not sure if they're fishing for that first place, but not sure that's the right strategy. Yeah, here you we go. We got a drone it. shot coming to you now. That's great. That's wow. a that's a great picture to you know really get a feel for what the what the temperature is like out there on the race course and the and the breeze. I'm just not sure about that strategy from the Harvard boat. Look there, that's a sandwich. Big luff from boat number three is the seemingly like the crew is going to put their head or hand through <laughs> through yeah. the jib of the of the pen boat and boat number six. Right, thirteen's going to want to majorly slow here if possible. I mean, but if you're pen, you have the one. You're you're thinking that you might try to pick your teammate there on that side and see if you can't make something happen. Just right. There's the whole pair out left. Boat number. Uh, whatever boat number that was that was deep six is all of a sudden not that they're still in the six but it's much closer and more reasonable than it was about two minutes ago boat right. number 14 13 struggling to get their sail filled there i'm not sure what call that would be just because it looks like they really just kind of threw their main yeah. over i'm not sure that filled in completely so i'm curious to see what the umpire's call is going to be there yeah if that if if that's a red flag for that boat this might be yeah. a really yeah, tough one nails, for Harvard. Nails and coffin. Here's yeah. a with this drone shot, you can really get a good feel for how close they are to the mark and and how they're just navigating these boats in these tight tight quarters as everything just condenses here as they're almost inside the two boat length circle. Again, Penn. If you're just joining us, Penn is in four, five, six. Harvard is in thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. The double digit boats against the single digit boats, and uh, setting the scene. If Penn wins here, that's going to create uh, a little bit of little bit of havoc on the leaderboard. And looks like the final place Harvard boat was able to catch up. They're actually inside yeah, of boat four. If there I'm you seeing go. You yeah, right. you're right. They're ahead of a boat now. That's 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 the that's mentality huge. thing. You don't give up. We're seeing a protest hail from several parties on board. Looks like two pen boats. Boat oh. number fourteen once again spinning. <laughs> oh but they oh might have no. they might have learned their lesson about getting the umpires involved. So that's right. going to be a self inflicted three sixty turn. But I'm still seeing a hand up from boat four here. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, this this is going to be a tight one without a doubt. 13 might be able to punch out on six here, but if four does the right thing and possibly slows down 13, or, but I mean, they, 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 they have a few options. They, don't, they could go play one they here. Could go no play one. Yeah, Penn should be trying to go play one here. Right. So they, they I or, mean, or just play four. Right. So You have enough of a gap behind you. They have options. Yes. Options are good. But here we see 15 slowing aggressively on four. And six just bone their main Oof. super tight just four is falling back hard yeah. here but, but that's but that's okay like we said they right. they could go play four here they have a comfortable gap on the six behind them exactly but look at boat one. boat one is not in this race no. <laughs> <laughs> let's see what happens here i'm not sure if that other harvard boat is pretty far down here and that's where four is going yeah i think we're going to see these harvard boats really just pick a fight here on boat number four <laughs> The poor, <laughs> poor soul just getting double teamed by two boats on oh starboard man. around the lured, around Mark Four. So that's going to be a one, a potentially a one five six, around this lured Mark Four let's ten. Where, yeah, let's see where fourteen ends up though. Six does still have Mark room, so it looks like that wasn't just just not enough of a bump to get fourteen through six. So still a one four five for Penn, but certainly uh, thirteen and fifteen can make four absolutely have to earn it. Right. We're going to need to see some really good roll tax here. And we'll see how good of a job Penn does here to try and pin out 15. Looks like we're going to have a we're going to have a sandwich between these four teammates possibly unless four is sliding back here. Yeah, these pass backs are not going to take a while. This and it's, ooh, this is getting tricky with that Georgetown two lane race coming down wind two. That's for gonna sure. Going to create some wind shadows and just uh, port starboard regular racing rules apply when two races meet. So, uh. <laughs> as we said earlier, being out here by the coaches' yes. peanut gallery, <laughs> so it's just a real treat hearing a lot of stuff. But I'm trying to see where that other U Penn boat. I think the U Penn boat is, or is that Harvard? Let's see how six six is going to get across. So they're, are they going to get across boat number thirteen? If they get across, Penn might have a one two here, if I'm not mistaken. Thirteen tacked off here. 
Okay. Yeah, they're, they're outside. The pin has the one. They're outside of our shot right now. Boat number five. They've there. They are right there, comfortably, right. comfortably there. So if six is going to ooch their, sorry, excuse me, not ooch, but ooze, ooze their way across <laughs> those boats, just ever so lightly. Um, that's that's right. Wow, that's that going to be, be a, one that's two, an easy here. one two for 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 pen. Let's think about what that would do for them. That would do a lot for them. That would put them at eight and seven, tied with. A lot of other teams at Actually, eight seven. That would tie them with the Harvard team. That would tie them with the Harvard, and they would win the tiebreaker because it goes head to head. Right, and so uh, right now Tulane is racing against Georgetown, and uh, that would put yeah, I mean it's <laughs> that would tie them with the Harvard and UPenn, and then Tulane would have that one. Yeah, let's stick with let's race. stick with this Tulane this Tulane excuse me Harvard Penn race to the finish here. Just well, it looks Just like Penn case. might be comfortable, but we've seen some races get really wacky and funky at the finish. But right now it looks like a one, two, four pen. But it's, gosh, it's light down there. Yeah, that four, having their teammate in boat number four super deep does not, not bode well for pen. But boat number six, if they're laying right now, Which they're going to get a big like luff from boat number 15, just stuffing it up super tight. Boat five kind of luffing just to keep it tight. Tacking to get through. So that's going to be a one for pen and boat number six just needs to step on the gas a little bit here to get their boat rumbling they just oh look at that boat number four comes out of the left corner wow just don't foul don't do anything ridiculous and that's going to be a one three four a one four five or something something for pen but that looks really good if you're a pen fan yeah that looks like pen might have gotten that unless we seen a couple seen a couple late flag thrown uh umpire hails and we've seen some wackiness after the finish right. on that front but that looks as far as we're concerned pretty clean so that's going to be a massive win for Penn and let's see what that does to the leaderboard after uh, after these scores are all punched in that's a little bit of spice that's that's for sure and then meanwhile down when the race that was right behind them uh, that Georgetown two lane race Georgetown in 7 8 9 two lane in 16 17 18 two lane might have a 1 2 right now in the blue boats my goodness Yeah. So Tulane somehow we were, we were that we were following that pen race, so we so we unfortunately can't say how they how they did it. But right now, Penn looking very very comfortable. Excuse me, the Tulane needing needing a massive win here to vault themselves back into uh, that massive mix up for uh, for that top eight spot. This is exactly what we've been looking forward to, right? Is these yeah. middle boats that are all clinching on mm -hmm. to qualifying for the top eight? We're seeing a total mix up. Where's it like Georgetown's been in the total leader, very top. Georgetown, leading. Georgetown handed Roger Williams, who's leading their right, only loss. Right, you know? and These so and so now we're seeing Tulane winning this race against them. So it's it's a total toss up. Any it's anybody's game right now, is what it seems like. You have to wonder if this is you know. We were, you asked me earlier which team is least prepared for these conditions. Yeah, I think the inverse, which should be most prepared, and that obviously the home team having some sort of, uh, you know, this is this is their bread and butter. This is what they usually do. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, they're used to the heat. You know, they're used to the UV. You name it. It seems like they're they've been. This is this is their. You're right. Bread and butter. They've been training in it. They've been waiting to host these nationals for so long now. Right. Since they were supposed to be hosting in. If I'm not mistaken, 2020. Really? So this is this has been in the works for a while. Wow. <coughs> so two lanes skating through with a one-two against knocking off the Hoyas. We're trying to uh, trying to refresh tech score at the moment to see where that puts things. In this race, it's seven, eight, nine. Yep, that's that was a finish. One, two for two lane. Next race up is Stanford Cardinals. One, two, three versus the Badgers. Ten, eleven, twelve. And from our sight, from shore, it looks like the Stanford Cardinals are currently winning this race against the Badgers. Cardinal, Cardinal. singular. Cardinal. They're not the Cardinals. They're the Cardinal. Oh. Yeah, common common misconception. Oh well, th it sure did. Uh, it sure did fool me. And then another race to be looking out for. Roger Williams versus Hobart Williams-Smith. 
It's for Roger Williams in 4-5-6 with Hobart in 13-14-15. Here we're panned onto Stanford Cardinals in 1-2-3 against the Badgers. And right now it looks like they're coming into the finish with a pretty clear 1-2 here. Yeah, unfortunate. It looks like Wisco is going to Gonna gonna end this round. Robin Ofer couldn't couldn't quite pull one off, unfortunately. But you know you gotta love gotta love a team like Wisconsin that makes the effort to get down here and really um, you know just be be part of the college sailing tradition. Absolutely. So it looks like Stanford has definitely secured their way to the top eight. Yeah, so Stanford, no no doubt. Good for Stanford. Georgetown, you can see them right now on the screen. They're kind of skirting away. We've got a hand on the hip. We're talking about body yeah. language earlier. I mean, you you can tell there's they're feeling something after that that loss. Yeah, I, I can't imagine they were, that's a race that they were expecting to have to lose. But that's the thing. You got every no race here is easy. You got Tulane, exactly. who's hungry, desperate to try to claw their way. Anything they can do to get in that top eight. Right. Big win against the Hoyas there for for Tulane. And then, you know, inverse of that, how, how will the Hoyas shake that one off as they enter and prepare to race off in, in the round of eight, the gold right. round? So I'm sure that, uh, you know, Tulane must be celebrating right now. That's a good, that's a good step in the right direction yeah, for they, them. They still have one more, I believe, against St. Mary's. I think that's, uh, no, it's Navy against St. Mary's. That's right. Who, if, if, I don't have service right now, so I can't. Yeah, our, 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 our reception knocked out. At least mine did. Yep, so it looks like actually two lanes last race is going to be against it's the tough Jumbos. Perfect. So, um, I mean, that that could be definitely either or, mm -hmm. you know. And then we have Yale-Dartmouth coming up. That's a huge race for Dartmouth to try to, you know, mix the <laughs> get, get themselves in the conversation. Right. And then we have Navy versus the Seahawks as well. That's a Maryland rivals, Mesa as well. So we'll see how that pans out. We've got people coming in for rotations. We've got Harvard is actually d has no more races yeah, Harvard, for the rest Harvard, of this round. So they're going to Harvard's going to be sitting twiddling their thumbs just watching the chaos unfold yeah. and, and hope that they uh hope for the best. Yeah. That's the same thing actually for U Penn. So, you know, I'm sure we'll be seeing them talking to their coaches and trying to figure out what goes on from there and Definitely going to be important for them to be watching what's going on there. Once again, that race, UPenn had won that race against Harvard in a 1-3-4. If you look at the UPenn team, that's a really young team as well, actually. We've got uh, Jordan Bruce, class of 24, Christopher Sharpless, class of 23, Samuel Gavula, class of 24, and Javier Garcon, class of 25. So, you know, for considering how old they all are, I think that they're they're doing pretty pretty well here at the national championship. Yeah, don't have a pronunciation guide. I think it might be Garcon. Garcon. Oh. I, I don't have a pronunciation guide <laughs> in front of me, but but if I if I had to guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, considering you called me Julia earlier. Yeah, that was, no, that was just objectively <laughs> my brain. <laughs> As we've been laying into the making sure the competitors are staying hydrated <laughs> and talking about how important it is for them. Yeah, that reminds me, I'm going to take a good chug of water. I mean, hey, while well, they're the ones out there competing, we're the ones that are talking to microphones for the last three three hours and 50 minutes. So who's who's the real athlete here, you know? <laughs> Listen, yeah, I had to warm up my vocals for weeks prior oh as boy. if I don't talk enough, <laughs> you know? We'll see if my voice lasts till the end of this, but uh, you know it's funny. I uh, was taking some calls at work. I'm when I'm usually answering the phones, and I had missed one a, a call from client, and I got an email later on, and he was like, "Yeah, I talked to the gal with a rough voice." Oh, and I was like, "Wow, ouch!" The gal with the rough voice. I was like, "Ouch, that's tough." <laughs> Would you rather be called Julia or the gal with the rough voice? Yeah, <laughs> I'll take. You know what? That's such a fair point. I'll take Julia any day. I'll take there Julia any day. Yeah. That's, that's a way to put things in perspective, <laughs> it's all right? It's all relative. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the grass is greener on the other side, yeah. right? All righty. So it looks like we're going to be looking out for Roger Williams versus Hobart Williams Smith here. On the board here, we've got the Dartmouth-Yale race. That's actually... Got it. Actually, I'm hearing now that Roger Williams might have actually won that last race against Hobart. 
We'll keep you tuned on that, but let's keep an eye out on this race. This is going to be a big one for Dartmouth. We've got Dartmouth in 17, 18, 16, and Yale in 7, 8, 9. They're coming around Mark 3 here, or Mark 4, actually. So this is coming up to the final part of the race. Yale has a, a 2, 3, 4, but as we've seen in these other legs, nothing is permanent. So we'll see 18 is playing back on 8 here from Dartmouth. Looks like they did not have mark room here, so Yale's going to have a 2-3-4 going up this upwind so long as they're able to balance properly on this upwind. Yeah, 18 flops out right as they round, but they're being covered by that one Yale boat, boat number 9, so let's see if, you know, you kind of use them and boat 8 as the gauge. That's what they rounded behind, so that's, 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 your, that's your balancing act, if you will. Absolutely. And we'll see, it, it might be that, I'm not even sure if 17 is gonna have a cross here on boats seven and eight. And uh, I, that is correct, Roger Williams won that race against Hobart Williams Smith College. Roger Williams finished in a one, two, four against Hobart's three, five, six. So unfortunately for Hobart, that means that they, that's, that's their nail in the coffin as well. So it looks like they probably will not be, not probably, but they will not be moving up to the top eight. Yeah, I'm still trying to, <laughs> sorry, my, my reception just knocked off on, on my little hot spot here. So I'm trying to refresh the tech score in front of me, but I, but I can't. Let's see. So it looks like Yale somehow was able to get ahead of this Dartmouth boat, and they might be coming up to the finish. They've got a few more, a little bit left. They've got about two-thirds of this upwind, a uh, third of this upwind left, but it looks like they've they've shot out a bit on these Dartmouth boats. Going for a duck on his own teammate, boat eight. Seven's covering the left side of this final upwind. Boat eight is covering the right. They're doing a good job. Sev 17 is in sever seven's coverage zone. 16's in eight. And now both seven, eight, and eight are keeping them in their coverage zone. Seven has a little bit of leeway before they tack back. And there they go with boat 17. Yeah, Yale looks Se pretty comfortable. Yeah, 17's what 17's doing the best that they can. They're trying to just try. They're trying to pull back boat seven, mm -hmm. get them into attacking battle, slow them down as much as they can. And make but them make the mistake. Yep, but it looks like Yale is coming across the finish here in a one-two. Yeah, so let's see what that does as a scoreboard here with Dartmouth uh, losing, dropping that one to Yale. So that looks like that's going to put Dartmouth. Dar Dartmouth at 7 and 8, and uh, unfortunately on the outside looking in. So as of right now, it looks like as far as the uh, the teams that are knocking on the door, Tulane is currently in at 8 and 6. They have one more race left against Tufts. Penn is right behind them at 8 and 7. They had just defeated Harvard, and they are ahead of Harvard in ninth. And then Dartmouth falls to 7 and 8, and they are currently on the outside looking in, and I think that might be it for them. Uh, yep. since they have no more races. So it really boils down to uh, seeing what happens here between Tulane and, and Tufts. I, th I think, I think the, um, the hopes of, uh, of a lot of those teams kind of hinge on, on what Tulane does. If Tulane drops that, if Tulane loses that race, I mean, trying to get some math right here, they would fall to 8-7. and seven. Let's try to make some – let's see who won the head-to-head -head between Tulane, Harvard, and Penn. If we can get a little uh, – have to do some quick calculation here, run back the scoreboard. So Tulane won the race against Tulane Penn. Tulane beat Penn, and then Tulane beat, did Tulane defeat Harvard as well? Looks like Harvard beat Tulane. Interesting. So that would be, so that means Tulane beat Penn, Penn beat Harvard, and Harvard beat Tulane. So that's, that's fun. And then they might have, ah, gosh, might have to consult the ICSA uh, procedural rule book to see what the next <laughs> level of a hand uh, tie break might be. Right, so it, yeah. it might be points scored. It might be common opponent. Might be uh, just just don't know. <laughs> and look at look at this race. This is uh, Santa Barbara against BC. Santa Barbara is giving BC a fight here. There we go. They look in a. They look like they're in a one-two, possibly one-three. And uh, I'm not sure where that BC final BC boat is, but if I'm not mistaken, they're they've got a deep six. So. You know, I'm curious. I'm, I'm not sure this does anything for the top eight, but once again, we're talking about 
you know, these teams that weren't making into the top eight, they still can win these races. Yeah, we were saying the spoiler, and, and then, you know, for a team like BC who is coming into this, I mean, clearly already advanced to the next round, and hey, they had clinched that a little bit ago, but right. this is a race that could come back to bite them because the scores are all going to carry over, and if they're in a situation right. where they needed one more win or one more loss or one yeah. fewer loss, it's like, well... See where they can point the finger, and this race is far from over. It is very light, but right now UCSB is the Gauchos are finished putting a punctuation mark. It's one, two. A, a, a exclamation point right now on the end of their regatta, and let's see if they can't hang on here against the Eagles. So it looks like the Santa Barbara, their third boat is actually deep in the sixth. They've got a wee bit away to go t until they round mark three. Oh, there's boat number 10. You're right, for yep. Santa Barbara. So so they have to keep this yeah. one, two, or <laughs> yeah, one, they three. Just have to, they just have to run away at this point. Yep. All they can do is just sail as fast as possible and make sure, you know, they're balancing and not overdoing things. Right. That is a big issue that you see is, like, people tend to overdo it over team race, and that's how they end up dropping back. Totally. So boat three is going to want to get that boat tacking as much as possible and bringing things back to the middle especially. And so, it, you know, we'll see, we'll see what the BC Eagles can do here, but this is definitely – is definitely a good one. This is a good way for them to end the regatta on a good note. This is uh, the, you know, Santa Barbara. They could be going, you know, in looking at their standings right now, they're not going to make it to the top eight, but, heck, they could be finishing this regatta with a win, right? One race, that's a win. That's a win for them. Spot on. And, and, and for them, too, you know, the, the, their, their week is not over. They're not going back to beautiful Santa Barbara. They're hanging out. They're in the co-ed <laughs> qualifiers. They're in the women's, I believe. Yeah. And uh, so this is, just, this is just a couple more days they're going to have on the water, uh, knowing the venue, getting a little more comfortable with it. Right. And that, that, that could come back to help them out as, uh, as the fleet racing portion of, of the week starts. You know, that's a great point is that even – all these teams that are here for the team race, they definitely have a little bit of an upper hand for the fleet race because they're getting to know these conditions right. 100%. I remember, I, I feel like uh, back back before they flopped how the schedule worked, when uh, women's when the women's fleet racing was the first was the first part of, uh, we'll call it championship week, you'd find a lot of coaches would start their, their, their uh, women's skippers in the semifinal type stuff because they was like, hey, I've already been sailing here for two or three days. Like, we know the deal, so right. let's just... It's let's keep uh, keep the hot hand. Yep, I, I could not agree more. So who do we have sailing in here? Looks like boat three is giving eleven, 11 a little bit of a fight. Yeah. But remember, all that Santa Barbara has to do right now is if they can't clinch the one two, they need the one three. Yeah. Here's eleven coming back, and let's see a three big lee bow here from boat number three. And looking at it though, there's quite a bit of a gap between that. Four and five. Yeah, we're seeing a huge luff up from boat number three, and Boston College is not going gently into that night. So UCSB doing all they can to hang on, and, it, it, you know, Boston College doing the Lord's work right now, but it seems <laughs> as though it might be too little too late, but hang on, boat number two for Boston College coming in. Can 12 get three out of 12 needs to get three out of there. 11 needs right. to figure out what to do. They, they're they scared to tack because they don't want to get pinned right. by boat number three. They yeah. just need that, keep that speed going. If I were 11, I'd put my bow down a little bit and just send it. Yeah. Just go as fast as possible. Well, here's boat number two, Lee Bowing. So they're going to be able to oh. get a big stuff up there from boat number two on boat number 11. But, but is boat number three on the to weather the committee boat? No, they're not. Who tacking from boat number 12. They're going to have to tack right back to avoid a port starboard situation. One. Boat number three. This is where all the action happens yeah, right I here can't, at the finishes. I, it's hard to see right down that line. 12 might have been bow out on three, but who's to say? And if, if they were. That looks like they might have finished in 2, 3, 4 because 11 looks Yeah, 11 looks deep back. and 10 right here. So that could have been a 1, 5, 6. Wow, just like that if Boston College did manage to hang on and somehow snatch snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. <laughs> that's that's my favorite line. Yeah, That's the best one right there. Yeah, it looks like that might have been a win for BC there. Now we'll, we will await official confirmation. Once again, right there at the final, like, 30 seconds of a race. 30. That was the last, like, 15 seconds yeah. of that race. <laughs> you, watch, you watch huge plays being made. I don't even know if sometimes they're plays. Sometimes it's just like a let's do whatever we can. Yeah, let's go, let's go hero sometimes, mode. Yeah, yeah, hero mode is the best part, best thing to call it because sometimes people just don't even think what they're doing. They just right. do it and hope for the best. Right. And that's sometimes all you can do. So let's go ahead and refresh, see what's going on. We're coming close here. I see that they've already posted the rotations for the top eight. 
have they? The rotation, the teams are not yet. Oh, entered, oh yeah, but we've that, got the that, rotations yes, of the boats. Yes, we know, we'll know which colors will be sailing which, exactly, and which seeds will be sailing which. But right. uh, but we see that we we're still have, we're still a ways away from figuring out which team is going to go where. That is correct. I think we can say the top three because Rogers fourteen and one, Yale's fourteen and one. Roger won that head to head. Stanford sitting in third at twelve and three. Georgetown eleven and four. Boston College at potentially ten and five assuming that they did indeed win that race. But then the two looming races left in this round, the last two races of the round of 16, we got Navy versus St. Mary's uh, underway. I think I hear horns down there. And the final race is going to be Tufts versus Tulane, and that race is going to be very, very interesting uh, because if Tulane wins... We're going to have a three-way tie. If Tulane wins, Harvard is out of the top eight. If Tulane loses, Tulane, Penn, and Harvard would all be tied at eight and seven. Tulane beat Penn, Penn beat Harvard, but Harvard beat Tulane. Now, I'm not sure. I will need to refresh myself on the ICSA procedural rule book, or uh, we can get some clarification on that to see who the actual, um, you know, <laughs> what the next step of tiebreaker is, how far how far down the list of A, B, C, D in, in the appendix we need to, we need to go. But certainly, uh, uh, so it's, it's always great when you have to dust off a page of the rule book for, for a national championship. There's no doubt about that. Receiving word that is uh, 5, 25C, appendix, or 25C1 is the is the rule. Uh, it's a sail-off first, then races one, then total points. So it looks like they, there might be potential then for a three-way square-off between these three teams. Very nice. So maybe that's why they're holding off on uh, sending any other boats out there to see how the dust settles. All of this, of course, could be avoided if Tulane just wins this race against uh, against Tufts. But Tufts could absolutely, it's, you know, it's their last race. They're not making that top eight. But we were talking about playing spoiler and how fun that can be to, uh, you know, just, just if, you're, if you're not, if I'm not going to get to play later on, I'm going to make your life, I'm going to make your life miserable. Exactly. going to make you earn it. And, you know, and it's always good to end on a win as well. So, you know, Although they may not be making it onto the top eight, who doesn't want to finish their regatta on a win? Right? Oh, yeah. So I feel like Tufts is probably just as hungry here, right? Let's take a look here. Go ahead and check. So... We will have the Naval Academy in boats 4, 5, 6 in orange versus 13, 14, 15 St. Mary's Seahawks in the green. And this looks like a pretty good start for the Seahawks, if I'm not mistaken. Unless an orange boat, no, we've got an orange boat advanced here. But this doesn't look like a terrible start for them. And so just uh, checking and confirming Boston College did indeed pull that off against Santa Barbara somehow. Uh, so they're sitting at 10 and 5 and they're clearly in. So Navy right now playing to avoid uh, uh, just a, a loss, trying to keep some momentum. And they would also tie Boston College at 10 and 5 if, they're win, if they win. St. Mary's is, you know, they're at 3 and 11 on, on the week, on the round. So they're not going to advance to the top 8. But Navy right now just playing for, uh, for seeding and just to avoid any potential havoc down the uh, down the line with with whatever whatever chaos is going to come with these potential tiebreakers. Right. So St. Mary's this is their last race of the day, and so you know we're going to watch them. They're they're hungry for for a win to end the regatta on a win, and it, once again it's a young team, and you know the Naval Academy here they've got they've got a majority senior skipper team, and so this is this is a Maryland rivalry right here. So you know the St. Mary's sailing team practices quite often with the Naval Academy. I know that we have done multiple spring breaks together and so on, and so th they see each other quite often. And, you know, Naval Academy hosts a lot of regattas as the St. Mary's. So, you know, these are two teams that are very familiar with each other, know each other quite well, so I'm curious to see how this one's going to pan out. Yeah, the defending national champions uh, in Navy just hoping to keep some momentum coming in, going into that gold round. Absolutely. Again, Navy in four, five, six, St. Mary's in 13, 14, 15, the uh, double digit boats. And Navy looking pretty comfy right here with boats number four and six uh, kind of cruising right along as both of them are tacking as they're approaching the ley line for that first turning mark. 
can't tell if boat five out there is spinning or just. I think uh, they are spinning. That was the spin. So this is going to be possibly one of those one, two, s deep six scenarios. Um, but Navy has clearly proven themselves as a very spat or very fast team. So, you know, it's it's going to be a matter of can the Seahawks catch up here? Yeah, I think I think that was against uh, Santa Barbara that we saw Navy really, you know, they showed off some boat speed in this light stuff. Absolutely. Coming back, I think they were trailing that one around mark four, but then on that last beat just made it happen. Yeah, we're just now hearing horns uh, for the start of that other race, Tufts Tulane. Again, this race has a lot of weight, a lot of magnitude for how this top eight will shake off. If Tulane wins, I believe we will avoid a three-way tie sail off. But if they lose, they'll be tied with Penn and Harvard at eight and seven. So a win here for Tulane would uh, certainly solidify things. And as far as... Um, All righty, so we're going to pan on over to the Tufts Tulane race. We know that this one's going to be a big game changer here. So I, we're going to try and follow it all the way throughout. I, I, and I think for the sake of the regatta, just keeping <laughs> keeping the race course, the race is moving along and, you know, a three-way sail off, that'll, that'll certainly take a chunk out of the day. But to advance the next round, if that's what we need to do, that's what we need to do. But I feel like secretly uh, some folks are hoping just to you not have to, you know, some teams that are already – some teams are going to have to wait on the uh, on land for quite some time if that's the case. Right. But uh, you know, I think I think everyone kind of wants the regatta to keep moving along. But you know, a, a sail off for one shot to get into the um, excuse me for two teams to get into the knockout round is always always some scintillating stuff. But checking in, Tufts is in seven eight nine, two lane in the 17. blue boats sixteen seventeen eighteen. Yep. And so it looks pretty. Yeah, even, I guess, off the right, start. Right, Curious to see boat number 16 coming across. Do we think they're going to cross? I, that's <laughs> we're going to find out in just <laughs> a second here. But boat 18 hanging on for what they can on boat number 7. I think boat 16 is going to – oh, Looks like they might have that. You know, I, I think it's interesting that 7 kind of luffed up a little bit there. Mm -hmm. They kind of slowed themselves down. Mm -hmm. I feel like had they kept, the, uh, kept their speed going – then 16 would have had a less chance of possibly yeah, crossing there. Yeah, we're already you know? seeing boat 18 very much more bow out than they were about eight seconds ago and right. really kind of showing off the boat speed there, two lane and boat number 18. Uh, so all of a sudden, what looked to be a pretty even race as they approach mark one, but hold on, boat number eight. Uh, looks might be coming across here. Might be coming across. I think they're d definitely going to cross 17. 18 is going to be marginal. Excuse me, 16. That'll be pretty impressive if they do. And I'm curious where that last Tufts boat is, or the last two-lane boat is. 17 looks, they're out They're out to the left side with boat nine, but once again, they're the windward boat, so here they are, they're tacking out. They see they're not holding their lane, so they know to get out of there. The earlier they get out of there, the better off they are. So hopefully if they get some speed and they're a little bit bow out on boat nine here, they might be able to get some advantage on them. Yeah, so boat eight is gonna round in first. Again, that's Tufts in 7, 8, 9, Tulane in 16, 17, 18. Trying to think that Tulane is just trying to figure out what, what play they are. But if they don't have the one, I have to think they're they're trying to go play two. Yep. So it's looking a little bit light here. We even see the skipper of 16, Thad, is sitting in the boat. Let's see, 17 and 18 got clear around this mark. We're looking at a play two so far. So 9 and 7, the best they're going to be able to do here is on this downwind. They're just going to want to be covering the two-lane team as much as possible. But if we're reaching on these downwinds, it's the coverage zone changes up a little bit. So that's going to be a little bit harder for them to be covering if they're not advanced. Take a look here. Boat 8 is starting to move a little bit far forward. I, if I were him, I'd be staying a little bit closer right now, seeing mm -hmm. that my teammates are in the 5 and mm -hmm. 6. You know, that's uh, we've seen it all day. These people that are in one five six, the ones just tend to sail way too far away and don't make something happen right. early enough. Right. And I feel like the breeze, it, it's not as light as it was, you know, 15, 20 minutes ago. But right. it's certainly still light, but it's not by any means just like remote, full-on drift 
sketchy conditions. So you can get a little bit, you can get away with doing a little bit more team racing in this in this velocity. Right. So let's talk about how great these crews look right now. You can see they're all out as far as possible on these reaches. You know, have like we were saying earlier, having a strong crew for team racing makes all the difference. Yes. So you know. Tell me a little bit about what you think like a good crew entails. I mean, back back when I was uh, back when I was crewing in college, I was more of a heavy, so I <laughs> I seldom saw uh, velocities like this. But but you always you want to develop a trust with your skipper, and they can just trust your eyes. Your their the, your eyes are their eyes. What you're telling them is 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 the gospel. Like you know what you're seeing as far as pairs go, who's winning, what's our situation, who's bow out, what's their velocity, are we faster, are they faster, are we higher, are they higher. Absolutely. So just constantly feeding them communication and knowing where your teammates are and just communicating that effectively to them so they don't have to, you know, they're not always head on a swivel. They can focus on keeping the boat moving fast through the water and that your job is to, I always found the most success when, when I was just, I was the one essentially, you know, not driving the boat. I didn't have the best boat speed in the back of the boat, but I like to think that I, I understood team racing <laughs> pretty well, so I, I could uh, I could communicate that effectively. Right, right, yeah, you know, and as for me, when I was driving, it's I think it's so imperative to have a good crew that communicates with you, right? Mm -hmm. Telling you where the marks are. It's so easy as a skipper to get in your head during these races and just constantly be th looking at the boat right next to you where, you know, you might lose track of where the next mark is, right? right. Next thing you know, you're sailing completely away from it, right? And and you got to come back and you might have lost somebody on the other team just because you sailed too far away from and, it. And we've seen a couple times, you know, a, a player would get distracted out there trying to get the umpire's attention or, or get a little heated. And sometimes as the crew, if you need to reach back and maybe give them a smack on the knee yeah. and tell them to focus up, yep, exactly. that's always appreciated too. So at the finish line, we just saw we'll stay on this race, Tufts Tulane. But uh, it looks like the U.S. Naval Academy did in fact beat St. Mary's for their last race of the round. But checking back in, Tulane holding on to what looks like a 2-3-4 or a 2-3-5 at the moment. I'm seeing a, a hand yep. held for a protest yep. here, 7 and 17. This could be the race crucial. Right. This, could be the, this could be the race right here, depending on how right. they judge. Is, I think 7 is trying to say that maybe 17 didn't take didn't keep clear, and maybe 17 saying 7 did not have uh, any, any right to do that. Right. Let's see what their hail is going to be. This could be make or break. We're seeing a lot of action here, 8 taking an, their time yeah, rounding that mark. Absolutely. No one has mark room on them, so eight is going to pinwheel to the outside. Wow. Just make it super, super slow for everybody involved, doing a tremendous it's job rounding job. that mark. Look at that. That is just a cluster. <sighs> you know, it's it's not looking so – that mark rounding's not looking so great for no. Tulane there. Really great job on eight. He totally slowed down the Tulane team. Yeah, there. absolutely. Brilliant puts job by boat number eight and puts their teammate in boat seven in a great position to uh, – Really try to hurt more as we're going to see 18 crack down on seven to try to give them bad air. 17 needs to get their boat going. Right. They got to cover nine, but all of a sudden seven's coming back, and I don't even know if 17's going to be able to cross seven now. Yep, but you know, 17 being as down speed as they were, I I would just focus on getting my boat going fast right now. I would have one of my teammates go back on boat nine right now because if you're so down speed and he, you know, he tacked off with that boat, I would have just kept trying to go on and it looks like that's working for him right now 17 has built up his mm -hmm. speed and he looks like he's punched out a bit on seven yeah definitely 18 you have to think is affecting boat number seven just a tiny bit as we're seeing right. them crack off luffing their jib a little bit maybe over trimming that main slightly just to put the put the punctuation mark on this uh on this pass back and 18's peeling off so 17 says i'm all good brother you can tack off and get out of here and let's uh let's hang on to this two three four Let's see, good boat handling is going to be imperative here, and they just want to keep balancing here. This is going to be huge communication from the teammates, yeah. right? You don't want to do anything drastic, and you just want to keep talking to one another. Yeah, talking back to, like, the crew communication, what makes a good crew is, is you know, you're fo everyone's focused on the two boats that you're covering. Someone's got to keep an eye on boat number eight in, in the one. All of a sudden, right, you can't get carried away. You can't, you can't lose track of where that, where that boat is. Could not agree more. So eight's, eight's doing, a, you know, th this is what we were talking about earlier. The one wants to stay close. And, you know, he recognizes he his teammates are not in a strong place right. right now. So he's not just sailing off to the finish in that one. He's actually going back, and mm -hmm. he's trying to make something happen right. here. And he's now clamping down on boat number 16 to try to give them some bad air. Tacking back now, trying to see if they'll still have a piece of 17. 17's in a sketchy spot because it's awfully tempting to want to take that one, but that would that blows up your play. You don't want that. Right. 
Well, I want to see some action being done on the nine here just in case they are in a 1-4-5. They're one, going to want to make sure that they definitely have the ace here. And so seven's tacking now. Luff up there by boat number 18. This is a tough spot for them to tack out here. Yeah, simultaneous tacking. Boat. We're, I'm thinking we're going to have some hails for protest here. I'd be shocked if we didn't. 17 is now, I guess, taking the one maybe against uh, their bet. <laughs> seven, seven is spinning. 18 is, 18 is spinning. 17 spinning. 18 is spinning. Or I'm 17 might, seven yeah. might have just been jibing out. Boat 17 for Tulane is. Tulane might have a one three here. If not a one two. So. If this result holds, Tulane will have a 1-3, and by our calculation, will advance to the round of eight. That's great news for the home team. Yeah, wow. Our hosts, they really battled for that one. They did. I mean, let's let's try to see if we can take a look at, at how their last couple, uh, how the last couple races went for Tulane. Let's see. Tulane won their last. Oh my goodness, Tulane won their last six races. That is that. talking about momentum and yeah. getting hot at the right time. That is that is a team that I do not want to start facing right now. <laughs> if any of these teams are in the gold round, seeing Tulane right now ripping through six straight wins, that's that's very impressive for this squad. Roll wave, roll wave, baby. Talk about that. That is the heat they brought brought on that heat. You know, I, I feel like that another thing that must be contributing to that is today's a long day. It's a very long Let's day. Let's not forget, yesterday they didn't get that many races off, so they actually had an earlier report time today than they had originally scheduled. That way they'd be able to get as many races as possible in today. Yeah, they were here, uh, I think first start was at 8.30 this morning. 8.30, right. So, you know, it's about it's about who can make it through the entire day, not get tired. And we're talking not just tired, like, physically, but mentally and, you know, we're talking who's been hitting the gym the most and has the most stamina throughout this entire day, right? And who has the mental capacity to be able to last the, ho last the whole day and who's been hydrating and properly fueling their bodies throughout this whole day. And Tulane is definitely proving that they have been doing a good job of training for that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the final standings here. It looks like... It looks like we have Roger Williams in first place, Yale in second, both tied for first, Stanford in third, Georgetown in fourth, BC in fifth, Navy in sixth, Tulane clinch that is now in seventh, yeah. and UPenn beats the tiebreaker with UPenn here. With Harvard. Or with Harvard, rather. And here's a look at the updated results. This is the final go. through the round of 16. Uh, I mean, we're saying, we've been saying all day that it, it's – Oh, is that seven through ten? That's that's the that's do or die time. That's when you see, you know, that that that's where these tiebreakers come into effect. That's what happens. That's when you see that every single race out here counts. And uh, just like that, there you have it. Penn squeaking in over Harvard just after their this was their <laughs> their the 113th race of the of the event of 120 in that round. That was the race that propelled Penn over Harvard in the head-to-head -head tie. And and you know, it's like we were saying, it's a long day. They did whatever the math, 120 minus 47 races is today. Uh, so far, it seems as though there's intention to absolutely roll into the stage, the second stage of the top eight gold round for those teams that we're seeing here on our scoreboard right now. And we, we I don't know if there's an official cutoff time or what the race committee PRO is intending on doing, but uh, if it's anything, if, if the racing is anything like that, we just saw towards the end of that last round. I think we're in for a treat here later this afternoon, Gloria. Absolutely. I'm seeing that the wind feels like it's kind of picking up a little bit as well. And so, you know, I, I say <laughs> it might be brutal for the sailors, but I say we just crank them I all mean, out. Yeah, why not? We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we definitely want to leave some action tomorrow before we go <laughs> so we can <laughs> – we can have a little bit more, a uh, little bit more show to give you yeah, all. We want fine folks at home. Yeah, we've got some more banter left for you guys, without a doubt. Yeah, so I think uh, while they figure out the rotation, uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a moment to thank some of our sponsors that we have out here, uh, just keeping all of us going on. And uh, yeah, so we got uh, we'd like to shout out West Coast Sailing. Uh, this is the start. This year starts the, marks the start of West Coast Sailing's five-year sponsorship with ICSA in coordination with Zim Sailing and Dwyer Mass and Rigging. The official suppliers of College Sailing, they're dedicated to supporting and giving back to collegiate sailing. West Coast Sailing was founded in 2005 by former college sailor George Ulos, 
His, passion, his team of passionate sailors has made it a priority to lead North America and support the dinghy racing and small keelboat market. Based in Portland, Oregon, they stock the best dinghy sailing necessities with a focus on parts, boats, parts, apparel, line, and accessories. They really lean into their expertise and knowledge of serving the industry for the last 17 years. Since many of their staff came up through youth and collegiate sailing, supporting ICSA is an honor and remains true to their roots. For all gear, boat, or part-related questions, their team can be reached via their web store at westcoastsailing.net. Zim Sailing was established in 2008 by Steve Perry in Bristol, Rhode Island. The Zim team quickly established itself as the leading supplier of collegiate and institutional boats, focusing on moving dinghy sailing forward. Today, Zim Sailing is the largest manufacturer and distributor of small sailboats in North America and is the exclusive manufacturer of the 420E sailboat. Furthermore, they charter small sailboats at most major regattas around the country and support events with their trailers full of gear and parts. Their sponsorship of College Sailing is a natural step in helping to move dinghy sailing forward and grow the sport. For all gear, boats, or part-related questions, their team can be reached via their web store at zimsailing.com. All right, so while I think they're uh, figuring out the rest of this format and uh, getting all the teams back into their boats for this stage two gold, uh, this gold round, this top eight that we just saw with an exciting finish after that round of 16 we're going to step away drink some water while the race committee sorts itself out and they take breaks themselves but do not go anywhere we if will you're, be uh, if you're if you're either watching at home or uh, maybe at work you're staying late at work on a tuesday <laughs> this might now be a good time to start your commute and you can uh, tune in on your phones and uh we'll be right back with you as soon as racing commences underway again here at the 2022 icsa college sailing team racing national championship for brooks clark and gloria Kevlick Kevlick Cutie. Kevlick Cutie. I, am, I need to write that on a card and like tape it to my to my computer. I'm sorry, Gloria, for both of us Wow. and our entire wow. team. We will be back with you in just a little bit here as the boats make their way back out onto the race course. Stay hydrated. I'm Gloria and I'm here with Quinn Keenan from Tulane Sailing. Hi there. All right, so you guys were supposed to host College Sailing Nationals in 2020. This is three years in the making to host. So tell me, are you excited to finally have your chance to host? Oh yeah, so it's been a lot to look forward to. You know, I glad knowing that one day we'll be hosting Nationals. Been excited since the first day I got here. Been pushed back quite some time, so today's finally here and we're super pumped to be hosting. Awesome. So in this heat, this humidity, we've been seeing some really light air conditions. Do you have some local knowledge for us? Yeah, for sure. So today uh, we got a lot of clouds behind us, but should clear up um, around two and that's when the breeze should probably shut off. But uh, that's unfortunate because this whole winter we've had a super breezy time and uh, you know, not something we're looking forward to, but uh, we'll see what we can get in. Awesome. So, you know, hosting a national championship is no easy feat. So tell me a little bit about how your very, very large team has been handling this. Give me some details on what your onshore crew is doing, your on-the-water crew, and so on. All right, so it is quite the operation. We've been preparing quite a bit for it, but we're glad <laughs> that it's finally here. So we got Mark set, finished boat, start boat. We got a great crew out on the water and maybe an even better crew running breakdowns, sanitation crews, you know, filling up waters. We even got Tulane trainers here. We got it all. Um, awesome. We got all bases covered and can be more proud of the team. Absolutely, awesome. So you're here on the live stream. Do you have anybody you'd like to give a nice shout out to? Yeah, first off, my whole team. You guys are the best, got, got through a hell of a season. Keep on going strong, roll wave. And I'd also like to give a shout out to my mom. Love you.
Hey guys, it's Gloria again. We're here with Colin McGilvery and he's from the Naval Academy. So you guys had a very strong presence at all three nationals last year. Mm -hmm. You guys are back for more, right? Go Nats. Go we're Nats. here for all three again and we're currently here at Team Race Nationals. So as the champions from last year, tell me what the mentality was going into this one, how mm -hmm. things are going and tell me a little bit more about your team. Yeah, no, the Nads are psyched to be here. I think the mentality this year is the exact same as was last year. Just go race by race, see what we can do, and just try to do the small things right. Awesome. Like, just trust that the big picture will come together if we do the, the little things right. Absolutely. Um, super psyched again to be here at all three national champions. Um, got our team race team out there right now. Uh, our open team is going to look a lot like the one we have right now. And our women's team is going to be completely different and super psyched to see them uh, here in New Orleans later on. Um, awesome. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit more about the conditions, how your team's been doing, and so just a little bit more about that. Yeah. No, the conditions are tough. Um, very up and down. Uh, we had some current in play yesterday. You know, it was basically like, you know, riding momentum from maneuvers, and it was tough. So that's kind of a little bit of the puzzle we're trying to figure out right now. Um, but, you know, we seem to be doing it. I'm going to be doing a little bit better on the scorecard in a little while, but uh, yeah, we're excited and just trying to figure this place out. It's it's tough for everybody, so. Yep. It's really hot. What are you doing to battle the heat here? Um, drinking a lot of water. We're just, you know, forcing water down our I'm sailors' sure. throats, basically. We're uh, trying to keep everybody <laughs> hydrated. Awesome. Um, trying to stay out of the heat as much as we can, but we make exceptions for, you know, interviews like this, so. Right. <laughs> you know, otherwise. And uh, tell me a little bit more about yourself. You're a Newport local. I live in Newport now, so tell me how the sailing kind of differs from here to Newport. Uh, night and day, I'd say. You know, sailing the capital of the world, Newport, Rhode Island. There's a reason for that. You know, you get some pretty consistent breeze, but you know, it's a fun location. We were here in spring break. Um, and we think it's paying off a little bit. Got to see some some of the conditions, but um, you know, it's tough, inconsistent breeze. It's just kind of going to be whichever team can adapt the quickest and the best is gonna is gonna prevail so awesome we're gonna hope it's us but again just race by race so there you go and uh lastly do you have any shout outs to give to anybody uh shout out to the nads of course go nads um and everybody back home in rhode island um we'll see you soon
Well, we hope you didn't get too far away, folks. This is Brooks Clark alongside Gloria Kevlicute, and we are uh, still about to, <laughs> it's been a long day so far, but we have a little bit more team racing for you. A little bit of uh, drama off off the water going into that. I, I substantially misspoke. Uh, we did have a, the first race you're gonna see starting in about four minutes here is a sail off between Penn and Harvard, who are both sitting at eight and seven, as you see on our scoreboard. Uh, that's gonna have a sail off. So. I was under the impression, incorrectly, that it was just who won head-to-head, -head, uh, who won the head-to-head -head record. However, ICSA Procedural Rule 25C1 states, a sail-off, if conditions permit, and after, after prescribed sailing hours, if necessary, of no more than a single race between each tied team based on their overall win-loss records. Races sailed from an incomplete round robin or series where the tied teams met shall be used as sail off races. Sail off wins and losses shall not affect a team's overall record. So, as we can see on the graphic in front of us on our screen, Penn versus Harvard right here for the final eight for the last spot, the eighth seed in the final eight spot. So, uh, quite literally all on the line here. And prior to that, there was a uh, potential redress situation between Dartmouth, hoping to get a hoping to get a resale against Penn, but that was disallowed. So that would have potentially forced a three-way tie between between those teams. So uh, certainly no shortage of drama here at the ICSA Team Racing National Championship in beautiful New Orleans hosted by Tulane University. We're coming to you live from the second deck at Southern Yacht Club, looking out over the crystal blue waters of Lake Pontchartrain. And we are moments away. We were told by uh, PRO and race committee that they will be underway here at 520 local time. So that is about three minutes until we are underway in sequence for that Penn versus Harvard sail-off race. Gloria, what, we've seen a lot of racing today. We've seen over over 80 races, it seems like. What, what, have we, what have we been seeing in those 80 races? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, this race, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be a big determining factor here. And the wind is slightly lightening up here. And, it, you know, it's been up and down all day long, right? So it's a matter of who has been mentally and physically strong enough to persevere through this heat, humidity, and tough sailing conditions, without a doubt. So, you know, we're going to be looking for which team is going to roll this boat harder. Who is hungrier for that eighth spot, right? So I'm sure that there were plenty of pep talks happening on land. I'm sure, you know, the coaches were <laughs> trying their best to get them in the right mindset. You know, it's right now it's looking slightly painfully light out there and so it's it's going to be a matter of who can get that boat going faster and who wants it more yeah boat speed is a premium for sure in this last race it's very light this might be the lightest that it's been all day and what scares me gloria is looking out over the waters of lake ponchard train it's starting to glass off farther away up there up by the bridge you know maybe less than half a mile offshore so i'm not I'm not super familiar with how, how the breeze wants to hold here, but we're hoping that being close to the shore has its advantage right now and just enough to at least get this sail off underway in a, in a fair race so both of these teams at least have a have a fair shot to, to qualify and make that top eight. That is right. And so, uh, it, you know, the hopes are is right now I would love to get that sail off done. And what happens after that, we've got all day tomorrow. But... I would love to see this race ha go off, and you know this is this is going to be a big one. Yeah, and all the coaches are watching, and you know, unfortunately, a lot of the teams that that did not make it onto the final eight have already left. We see a few of them playing spike ball down here, some some playing some polo, and uh, if that's not polo, that's uh, I think they call it croquet. Croquet, croquet. I'm unfamiliar, but you know. We just want to see the sail off. This this is going to be a very crucial one, and and this is going to be a make or break moment for Harvard and UPenn. So, yeah, and, and the the intention of the race committee, it sounded like, obviously, this is all breeze pending, but they will attempt to at least get the first flight underway uh, of those first couple races in the gold round. So, a couple teams that have made their way out to the race course as well. We have Georgetown, Boston College coming up after the sail off race. We have. Uh, Stanford and Navy, and then Tulane and Yale. And in theory, obviously, again, this is all breeze pending, nothing official, but it sounded like uh, if the race committee got those races under their belt, they would they would be pretty confident in, uh, in uh, sufficient getting this round underway so we could uh, maybe put a pin on the day for there. But again, nothing official until, until, until word comes from up on high. Right. You mentioned... There were some of the teams that did uh, that did not make it to this next round. I've already gone home. We were talking with uh, Dartmouth Dartmouth head coach Justin Assad 
who, as we said, uh, you know, didn't get that redress granted, so they were unable to continue sailing, uh, potentially force more of this sail off. They're going to spend a nice whole day tomorrow. Maybe they'll come down to the venue, check it out, see see the see the team race we're going to have tomorrow. But they also have a day off. Right. That's a really great point that you make, and uh, I think that. In a sense, with, 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 with the weather that we have for this event, I think that having that day off could actually be a benefit for them for the future events. So, you know, staying out of the sun is going to be a big one. And a lot of these teams, you know, I mean, they could take the day off, go check out the French Quarter and so on. But quite honestly, I think the best thing to do with this day off is stay in the AC, take a breather, relax and just get yourself ready for the next ones. Yeah, I, and I think, though, there's something to be said about just having a fun day off. You know, as we were saying, this is just a great town, a lot of fun activities to do. How rare is it that you get to actually, you know, <laughs> explore the town and have time out to, to check out, you know, a good restaurant or, or a cool museum or something or just really get the vibe of a city that you, that you don't get to go to too much on a sailing event? I think it's pretty uncommon. That's why, you know, you're talking earlier about Charleston. I loved it there because I got to enjoy it. And then when you know, my friends from other teams would come, and it's like, oh, well, you guys want to come out? You know, we're, you know, we're doing dinner, we're doing this deal. It's like, oh, we can't. We're, you know, confined to the hotel room and trying to stay focused on, on that. But uh, certainly a day off. A lot of these teams might be disappointed in their result that they didn't make that gold round uh, of the top eight and uh, maybe not the result they were hoping for, but a day just to not so much blow off some steam, but just like, you know, kind of reset the battery. I think Ted Lasso says be a goldfish and just uh, forget what just happened. And you got true. two, at least one, potentially two regattas for some of these competitors right. uh, coming down. I mean, this is what, 11, 12 straight days of racing in right. this heat, in this light breeze. It's right. it's not easy. Yeah, no, it's definitely, you got to take the day to reset. And it, people have different ways to reset, right? So I totally agree. Go Go to a museum if that helps you reset. Or, you know, if you're in the hotel room and you just want to spend the day to just lie down and relax after some gruesome, you know, gruesome weather, th that works too. I but mean, some, some of these schools, I, I don't know, I'm not familiar with every school's uh, academic calendar, but some of these kids could be in finals right now or this have finals true. coming up in a couple of weeks. So, yeah, that's true. you know, one more day you can hit the books and just, you know, remember the, the student, I was always told the student athlete, the student comes first for a reason. This is true. Yeah, I mean, you think about the California schools, Stanford, Santa Barbara, they're both out on the West Coast, and they're in quarterly systems. So if I'm not mistaken, I believe that they aren't, aren't even close to finals. I think they're, they're probably like halfway, if not towards the end of their final or of their actual quarter system. So, you know, they, they've still got a lot more school to go. Yeah, definitely. I, I think not quite sure we were told that 520 would be the attempted start time, but maybe the PRO is waiting for one more last gust of breeze. Uh, some boats that are coming out right now, as we were saying, uh, Stanford and Navy were making their way out as we were thinking that they would get their way into the into the next round. But uh, those boats are just now being called back to the dock. So, you know, it, again, nothing official, an official cutoff time or a final race. But uh, I think the most important part is they want to get the sail off underway again between Penn and Harvard, both tied at eight and seven for that last spot. I, I misspoke. I apologize for you. You viewers at home, I misspoke. I thought it was a head-to-head -head tiebreaker, but it is coming down to a single sail-off between these two teams to who will advance the top eight gold round. Right, and it's tough looking at the footage right now. You can see that the boats that are out there are pretty much drifting backwards. So I'm hoping that something does fill in. But like you were saying, you look out there in the distance, and <laughs> I'm starting to see some glass, fill glass out there. So it looks like that's probably going to come down here, and that's not what we want to see right now. So... Um, we can only be hopeful that we get some sort of breeze just to hold out for at least that one race. Yeah, but again, looking out there, it's looking not so little, great. Little glassy. Yeah. Such, but I gotta say, it's pretty beautiful view. So, it's definitely the venue looks great. We've got a nice big green patch of area for all the sailors to hang out on. We've got great lawn chairs. Somebody brought the croquet. Not sure yeah. who, but I think that's brilliant. A yeah, croquet, spike ball. It's they've got quite sailing. the setup. Here. Yeah, yeah. So we're seeing a few tents over at the brick wall out there. See, somebody's dissembling. There's probably a good call, considering how hot it's been out there all day. But uh, definitely, biggest kudos to our umpires. They've been out there pretty yeah, much geez. until this break. They were out there all day long. Yeah, I, I didn't even. I saw some tired. I saw some tired faces for sure. Just getting soaking in every last inch of uh, 
of <laughs> air conditioning that they could in yep. inside. Yep. I was, I was saying, you know, I think they got to go suns out, guns out, and right? We, we have actually just received word from Danielle Richards, the ICSA rep here, that they are actually canceling racing for the day. Our PRO has determined that these conditions would not be fair or suitable uh, for sailing, particularly the sail off. So, wow, just like that. We were expecting <laughs> a couple more races, but, you know, that's the tricky part about sailing. If, if I could control the wind, I'd be the best sailor in the world. But that's just not how the sport works. And unfortunately, uh, they're pulling all the marks. All of our competitors are coming in, and racing is done for the day. So maybe, uh, you know, we can, we can chat a little bit about what we saw today and then maybe take one more look at just the standing so, so we can have folks at home can have an idea of what, uh, what time, what, where we're at. Let me see if I can't get an official start time for tomorrow so we can say when to tune in tomorrow. Stand by one moment. You can talk, though. Yeah. <laughs> Feel free to talk, though. I'm going to go do some recon. Yeah, and so let's just talk about today. I think, you know, the breeze was up and down. Once again, team racing is no easy feat. You know, it's, it's a huge mental game, and these teams that got knocked out, some of them are senior, majority senior teams. Some of them are really young teams, and so they've got they've got their whole uh, they've got a few more years under their belt and so they, it's all about you can take this year you can dwell on it or you can take this year if you didn't make it to the top 10 and you can use it as fuel for the fire to come back and do even better yeah i, I think we were touching on that earlier just a lot of it's just experience this whole new revamp format this regatta is in theory harder than it's ever been before better team racing top to bottom best teams the 16 best teams than ever before you know it, it's some of those some of those smaller districts like in the northwest some teams that would normally get an auto bid you don't see them this year but that it's unfortunate for that district but it does get one more one or two more teams i mean there's six i think they counted six nisa squads uh in there if which not, which is if not seven yeah if not if not seven I, I can't even remember at this point but um yeah, no, it's certainly just a lot of these teams, even those that, that didn't advance, uh, should just be stoked to be here at the big dance. And a lot of these squads we were saying all day, um, definitely younger teams, but I, I think a lot of them should be, you know, even if they're not advancing to the next round, should go home with their heads held high. It, you know, won a lot of great races. Like there was some teams knocking off teams that shouldn't have been beating those teams. And we saw UCSB right. mixing it up against, what was it, uh, Georgetown, or was it Yale? And then one other squad, they were mixing up with those top teams. And there's just no easy races, no easy outs. Absolutely. Yeah, and so I think I think it's a great call that we're going to be ending a little bit earlier today. I think it'll give all the sailors some time to Abs recuperate. Definitely. I'm sure that everybody's dying to take a shower. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> myself included. But I did receive word that tomorrow's racing the first race, the sail-off, will be starting at 9 a.m. local time. So that's 9 central. What's that, 10 eastern or uh, 7 pacific or 4 a.m. Hawaii time, if we have any viewers yeah. tuning in over there from the Hawaiian Islands. So uh, it's going to be an early morning, but certainly the breeze was up at that hour today. We had some breeze at this point, at that point this morning, so hoping for a similar result tomorrow. Um, and I think might want to take one more look, if we can, at the results. Just to remind everybody what we have at stake again, this Penn Harvard race is going to be the first race tomorrow. Um, going to go out there. It's going to have to shake the rust off for those two squads, but it's the first race. And then uh, could be a, it's going to be a very, very short day for, <laughs> for one of those one squads, of those unfortunately. But we have a whole day of great racing tomorrow, a, t a top eight round robin, and then a final four to determine who will be hoisting the Walter C. Wood Team Racing National Championship trophy at the end of the day tomorrow. Um, so for Brooks Clark and Gloria Kevlicu, we are signing off for the day. Thanks again for all of you joining in. Got a lot of texts. Both of us did on uh, <laughs> a lot of love from all you guys at home. So we appreciate that. We see them. We, we don't acknowledge all of them on air, but we do get all <laughs> of them. And you guys are all great. So we appreciate you all tuning in. Uh, College Sailing fans, uh, oh, Gloria, if you don't have any more. Yeah, I mean, yeah, seriously, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And I can't, I'm, I'm very excited to see how this is going to pan out tomorrow. Like we said, this is anybody's, this could be anybody's game. Yeah, absolutely. So for all of us up here and the entire team, thank you so much for tuning in. And we will be with you tomorrow morning. Again, that first race is going to start at 9 a.m. Central Time. And we'll hope to be with you live there right at that moment. So thanks again for tuning in. And you all enjoy the rest of your Tuesday afternoon or evening. <laughs>